Hello, hello, and welcome back to Skep Talk, uh, the show where you, I'm your host, Forrest Valkai, and I'm uh, joined again by Erica, the Gutsick Gibbon. How are you doing today? That's me. I'm doing well. I'm doing really great. You know, my, uh, my, my mother is in town, so that has been awesome. It's been real great. Right <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's a little, she's great. She just keeps me on my toes, you know? That's excellent. That's excellent. I I just got back into town. I've been out of town for friggin' ever. Do and do it. We we just went down and visited a bunch of in laws and rented a cabin down in the bottom half of the state. Uh, we went to a place called Broken Bow, um, which is like right on the bottom border. And we brought like all of of my wife's family down there. Uh, weird fact about Oklahoma: if if you're a, a person who doesn't have to suffer through this place, um, Broken yeah. Bow is on the very bottom of the state. I grew up in a town called Broken Arrow. That's my hometown. And it is on the opposite goddamn side of the state. It's about three and a half hours away from Broken Bow. Um, <laughs> super damn weird, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah. so I, I I just got back like today. I haven't like shaved. I look like a mess. Uh, and I was like, I got to go to the show. And so I just like quickly like just cleaned myself and like put on a fresh shirt and just got here. So if I'm a little frantic, a little distracted, a little bit strange, uh, that's a stranger than usual. Uh, that is why. That's why I've been up to. Oh, hey, dude, how's the weather? I was at my, uh... Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, how was the weather? How was the weather? Here, yeah, right oh, now. The... Uh, here in, in Tulsa? Yeah, it's just terrible here right now, and I'm hot and annoyed, and so that's it's the only reason It's charming here. In. It's nice. It's It's been drizzling, I hear, up in this side of the state, but down where we were, it was about 103 the whole week, uh, and it's been hmm. just super nice. Um, but yeah, like I'm checking, <laughs> checking the weather at this moment. It's 84 degrees outside where I am right oh, now. I'm very jealous. Very it's, nice. it's like 105 and humid as hell. Did you say it was, it's been 103. So really nice. Is that, were those the words that came out of your mouth? I enjoy it. I enjoy the heat. Weird. I don't want to live anywhere where it gets below 50 degrees for any reason. You know what I mean? See, I, Dude, I'm. I'm against that. I'm a big, I'm a Midwest native, right? So like I'm used to the four solid seasons. So when it gets into like the nineties, I'm like, yeah, this is, um, this is a monument to man's arrogance. People shouldn't live here. It's too hot. I don't like it. <laughs> so I, you know, it's no. been, it's actually where I live, right? I was a fellow, fellow conservative Southern state dweller here. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it's been like 103 for the past several weeks. And then yesterday, or actually this morning, the heat broke and it's been like 80 and I was like outside and yeah, I was yeah. like, what's going on? I'm, I'm not sweating. I'm, I'm like sweating. excited that tomorrow is our first day under a hundred degrees in, in, I think 40 days. I think since it's nice. been over a hundred for over 40 days, which is a new record for Austin. Mm. And the funny thing that's like oh. alarming, it's not funny at all. Actually, it's just alarming. The alarming thing is every night you go outside and in Austin, when you go outside at night and I don't actually live in Austin, I live like in the rural towns near Austin. I live in the farmlands. Uh, and when you go outside uh, every night, you hear like this symphony of, of animals and bugs and frogs, especially frogs and crickets. And it's a super loud, like it, it, it reads louder than human conversation on a decibel reader uh, book by quite a bit, especially if you're close to like water. Anyway, well for the last 40 days, every night it just gets quieter and quieter and quieter till now where there's just no sounds. It all died. They, they just killed it's, everything. They're all dead. It's so scary. It's so scary. Dude, so we, I went to, I went to Florida with my relatives. Like we got back from Kenya. I got back from Kenya and immediately like a week later, my mom was like family vacation. We're going to Florida. And I was like, great. Awesome. Let's do it. And it was a lovely trip, but Oh my God. It was in, we were in um, Panama City Beach, PCB, and we like went into the water and the water was warm. The ocean water was warm. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> nothing That's can live cool. here for much longer. This is going to be really bad. The water's lot, not supposed to be yeah. warm. I know a lot of meteorologists <laughs> are like, thank goodness this other weather thing that breaks things up is happening because we might all be just having super hurricanes this year yeah. were it not for El Nino. Uh, break yeah, there's a, uh, um, there's a massive chlor uh, coral bleaching event going on right now off the coast of Florida because of that shit, because it's just like how insanely hot 
just the ocean as a whole is at this point. And like, not enough people know why that's fucking scary. So like, go watch my video on coral reef restoration to learn about why ocean temperatures affect coral and why coral affects you. It's really yeah. important. That's uh, actually huge. So, I've, been re- I've been reading about so- that. I hope I hope we actually, as things continue to get um, more closer and closer to eventual collapse, I hope we get more <laughs> climate change related calls into Skep Talk. But I will tell you to to brighten everybody's spirits a bit. My brother in law is a lineman. He he fixes power lines, and so every year around you know hurricane season, which it used to be like a couple of weeks of the year that they were constantly like on storm, but these days it's just like an entire multi month block that you are consistently on storm. Like just, and he was like, yeah. He's like, I work almost exclusively with conservatives, um, people who you would, you know, are most likely to, to be a climate change denier. And he's like, but yeah, you you talk with some of these guys and they're like, yeah, there is absolutely zero doubt. The storms have been getting more and more intense progressively. It's been getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Something is very wrong. <laughs> like, and now it's like leaps yeah. and bounds. It's yeah. Yeah. It, it, and they're just all like, this is, this is weird. Like this is messed up. Something wrong is happening here. Forrest, since summer's almost over, we've only got this last month of it. We should ask, uh, we should see if Hazel wants to come back before September's over for a show just called yeah. like, this summer was fucked or some shit like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I'll ask, I'll ask if she's into it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, She'd see. be great about what, that. What, uh, oh what's God. the Simpsons quote? It's like, it's, it's the hottest summer of my life. And it's like, this is the coldest summer of your life. <laughs> so far, exactly, yeah. like, all this summer so far, oh. like, it's only going to get worse. Like, yeah, it's not so good, bad. not good. And in fact, yeah. here's a great tie-in because we're here dunking on creationism. If any creationists are bold enough to come in, which they never are, but if they are, that would be really fun. Right. Um, Answers in Genesis just released a six minute video that is titled, should be, we, should we be worried about fossil fuel use, right? Like what the Bible says, no. uh, and you will be shocked to learn that the answer is don't worry. We don't need to be worried about climate change because God is in control and told us that we can use the earth as we see fit, which I was talking to my husband about this. And I was like, okay, holy crap, right? For an organization that is so focused on Genesis, like the second thing in Genesis, God's like, go be fruitful and multiply. And then he's like, and be a good steward of the planet. Like these MFs should yeah. be the world's greatest environmentalists. And they're not, which should let you know, which should clue you in, I guess, into how political and culture war-esque all of the creationist mm-hmm. messaging is becoming. Um, yeah. Are you doing a sucks. video on that video? <laughs> Are you doing a response thing to that or anything? I want to, um, because, you know, I, I was, again, I was talking to, if you do, I, I, I was say, I was like, man, that sounds like something I'd like to roast. It, it okay. needs to be done because I was, I was talking though. And I was like, you know, I'm not an expert on climate change. And then I watched it and I was like, but I'm expert enough to talk about this because you know what, there's a, there's a verbatim <laughs> line in there that says, after all, fossil fuels are good, period. CO2 is good, period. And I was like, this this is straight out of idiocracy, right? It's what plants crave. Like, you might as well just, mm-hmm. just start to making crap up, right? I mean, like, yeah, plants require CO2, but, like, the problem isn't the fact that the world is warming. It's a warming way too damn fast for anything to adapt. Nothing can survive yeah. the speed at which this is happening. It's, it's, a, it's a borderline mass extinction event uh, level procession here it's it's super scary and i'll tell you guys you know because i get a lot of people who are like oh erica don't get political whatever like you're just here to dunk on young earth creation it's not not talk about political right. things like climate change. and it's like okay but guys like I, my master's was in primatology and like everybody i know is talking about who's in primatology still like specifically in primatology and not like paleoprimatology is talking about how their study species is experiencing like a massive ecosystem turnover because the climate is changing all across the planet. It's like, yeah. this is not an intangible thing. And I right. don't know. It's, it's, it's you can have a degree in every anything and not want to fucking die. Cause people are selfish That's, dicks. Yeah, well, exactly. I can't handle and people who are like, I, I can't handle the people who are like, don't talk, you know, don't get political about this. It. Like is it, this, is, you live on this planet that's part of it. Like it's, it's not, this shouldn't be political for you. If this is political for you, you need to remember where you live. <laughs> Your house burning down is not a political issue. It's an existential issue that you need to take care of right away. Right. And like, that's exactly where we are. And like these people, Oh my God, I still get comments all the time 
about like freaking uh, uh well you know, the climate change is naturally all the time like you bitches need to learn what a milankovitch cycle is you need to learn about milankovitch cycle is and shut the fuck up like that's, that's i can't i can't help you dude i don't uh, understand the it, don't make things political when it's like what should be political we as a we have a society and so politics should be set up to address the things that we as a society need to do together. Like that's what being political would be. And so I, I, the one that always pisses me off the most is it's like, uh, don't make children being slaughtered in mass by guns political. And it's like, so you're saying we as a society shouldn't solve that? Because that's what political means. Shouldn't talk about it. Should we as a society solve X issue? That's political baseline period. So, uh, so your position is let's not as a society solve child massacres. Cool. Cool. You, you don't, uh, don't position that you got there, buddy. <laughs> so fucking stupid, dude. Everything well, so sucks. Like, uh. and, and here's, the, here's the thing too, like just to, to tie this into like, okay, you know, for those of you out there who are like, you know, maybe I don't care about these far flung ecosystems and the minutia of them. And like, I would say that really sucks and, and you're missing out on a, a huge part of the wonder of being alive on the planet if you don't care about these ecosystems, but let's tie it into humanity, right? The, the trajectory currently, as I understand it, and again, I'm not a climatologist or anything like that, is that we're headed towards like a, a, a Miocene type climate, which, hey, that's the time period that I study. So I can tell you for a fact that the sea levels during the Miocene, if we go back to that, are going to displace potentially billions with a B people, where are they going to go, right? And not only that, but they're, the places where they used to live are gonna be uninhabitable, at least not without major revisions to their infrastructure, because it's gonna be you know, in quite a bit of water. So like, what's going to happen to the industry of these places? It's, it's, there's a huge human impact here that is, is being neglected. All the farm zones are gonna shift, like the, the zones of planting certain crops are gonna shift northwards. That's gonna be a huge adjustment. Like all of this is going to impact humanity in a major way. So as much as I, for instance, and Forrest and, and, and Jimmy care about, for instance, the, the the lemurs of Madagascar and how this massive change is going to impact, you know, their their local ecosystems. There's also a massive impact on on humans, um, and and it is alarming to say the least. <laughs> Not good. It's scary as shit. And like that's, I keep trying to remember, like I keep trying to remind people, like that this is this is a choice we need to make while it is a choice to make because it's very quickly not becoming a choice anymore. It's very quickly becoming something that we're scrambling to fix the ramifications of while also still having the same goddamn problem. However, there is some good news. I believe it was in Montana uh, that a group of teenagers just sued the state uh, for failing to protect their rights to a clean and healthy environment and protecting their future by investing in more and more in fossil fuels. And they fucking won. They won their lawsuit. Um, and so like... They there's there is precedent to be made here uh, or to the be Montana set here Supreme about Court. like how we can actually don't 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 yeah. find hope and think the Montana Supreme Court is not going to uphold that shit. That shit's going to go the down. Yeah, but hard. What I'm saying is Montana is a very conservative place. And if that yeah. even got some sort of traction, yeah. that could happen maybe at a national level. And that maybe would be really, really maybe cool a, a federal because, judge. Not was it even a federal? It was a state judge, live, a state judge. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, we, I just sit here going really, like really stupid world that people care about things like you know stamps yeah. and documents and signatures and shit more than they care about like air <laughs> and so like if we get if we get the appropriate stamps then maybe we won't all die weirdly that's I, what i'm saying like, i we're have on no the track hope to get you, stamps. it's so nice talking to people like you and i'm glad other people have people like you besides me to listen to and get some hope from because i sit here and go look at how dramatic and direct the effects of covid were and we haven't reached that level of individual understanding of impact the, as the, and the climate is a much bigger problem, which means we are still far yeah. from the, like the window of, of meaningful action happening, especially since we started to do meaningful action on COVID and then went, nah, fuck it. Forget it. I don't give a shit. Even people who were right. super pro pro science back then, you start asking around people now and, and you're like, so you get in the booster this year and they're like, Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So anyway, the whole thing yeah. sucks. We're all going to die. And I just think of that, like that dog in the house, the cartoon dog in the house and the house is on fire. Um, and instead of saying, this is like, fine, this is he fine. just says like, at least we won that Montana lawsuit as he's still burning to death. <laughs> it's like, 
I, I don't know, man. It's it's and then even some of the stuff where it's like basically we at, at this point, the greatest hope is that scientists figure out how to technologically save us because we will. Capitalism is not going to let us fix the problem in a meaningful way. And so now it's going to be like, OK, we figured out a way through giant robot machines to save us. But we will be destroying the ecosystems of most of the other species. But luckily, we have lab-grown meat. Fuck your lemurs. <laughs> That's you what's follow, coming. There's, a, uh, there's this account called Public Citizen, uh, and they, they post a thing recently. It was a screenshot of an article that came out in, like, fucking the Washington Post, something like that. And it's like the picture they used was, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze uh, and it was like uh, the 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 Navy is developing a real life freeze ray with the, to help with this new thing that we're gonna and they they post that screenshot and they're like we just want healthcare we just want healthcare <laughs> we just want, and like I see that same thing whenever I see like all of this fucking easy minutes about this insane shit it's like oh what bathroom can somebody use or what you know, who has rights to say this that or the other like, or it's are people are white Christians being oppressed or like fucking what books are allowed in Alabama? Or and I'm just like, we're all the planet is dying, y'all. The planet is on fire. Where's the the shit is on fire right now, and we're not and we can't get and the healthcare problem too. We can't get the healthcare from the fire that we started. Like it's, like, it's just uh, this is fine. Man. All right, I'm gonna go AF, yes. there is, AFM uh, away from Mike. I'm gonna switch to my other station. Okay. But y'all take calls and have fun and. I'll be back when it matters. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. It's going to be okay, you guys. It's going to be okay. Maybe. Asterisk. There, we'll see. There, we'll see what happens. There is, there is evidence to suggest that uh, uh, climate doomism, as it's called, just, just only talking about the bad things, uh, uh, only leads people to become uh, more uh, apathetic and not try to fix it and not do the things. Uh, so remember... Not everything is completely terrible yet, and there's still a lot of hope, uh, but holy shit, we need to do something. It's it, well, Again, while it's still a choice, vote. Vote, y'all. Y'all, yeah. vote. Look into the people at every level, not just that you look at the executive branch and you're like, this motherfucker will do everything, but you have like this whole goddamn Congress that's doing the things. This motherfucker up here signs things. Don't like pay attention to that, but put like probably like 50 to 60% of the attention you're giving to that and to all these motherfuckers down here and vote for them if and only if they're going to do something about anthropogenic climate change and they have a real goddamn plan and they know how science works. That's and then at the local level, go to the local level and. Am I the only one left? Was that Forrest or was that me? Chat, am I still here? Or am I not? Oh no. I, I can't tell. I just to tell you that you're still here. Oh my god, okay, thank you, thank you. I was looking at that and I was like, well crap, I just got booted. And then it was like, no, I'm the survivor. I'm the one that's here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he knows hey, he froze. Everybody. It's just me now. Forrest is gone. He's been taken by anthropogenic climate change, unfortunately. We, we tried to save him, but the only way you can save Forrest is to make sure you're registered to vote. That's the only way to bring him back. So keep that in mind as you sit there and watch me drink my water. <laughs> they're, they're about to make us do Biden versus Trump again. We're going to vote our I way do. out of this. Come on, yeah, Forrest. Dude, I I can't even with that, man. I, my, my thinking is I... And believe you guys are going to, you know, hopefully I'll be given awards and accolades for this, but I'm active at my local level. So my local area is doing quite well with with our, our ecosystem restoration and protecting uh, our various <laughs> our various there wetlands. Right. Kind of. We're doing better than we, we were previously. So look at me. This is this is a test run. I'm Erica Gutsa Gibbon, your your sole host. I've usurped forest. Um, Let's turn the camera wrong. down now. We need to fill this frame better. There's so oh, much oh, negative space. Yeah, we got to balance this oh. out some. Maybe split Hold the on. difference. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure it's not like right at my crotch, you know? That feels Correct. a little Correct, yeah. Not that's ideal. a different okay, website. Okay, how about that?
That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different website. I'm going to, exactly. I'm going to leave you with the audience by yourself and I'm going to oh, call man. Forrest and see if I can help well, resolve tonight's weekend. issue. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what should I talk about? Anything? Am I allowed uh, to talk about anything? Are, did, did the trip that you went on, is that of public knowledge? Oh. Yeah. 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 I can talk about that. Tell, yeah, tell okay, some stories yeah, while I see. I can talk about that, you guys. Okay. I'll, I'll pull up the chat so I can answer questions as they, as they come in. Cause I know they're going to be pressed. <laughs> yeah. You guys. So those of you who don't, I guess, follow my channel or like know what I, what I do. Uh, I'm a PhD student in biological anthropology. So over the summer I spent a month in Kenya, the first probably week I spent in the museum taking measurements and scans of Miocene ape teeth, because that's what I study. So I study Miocene apes as a, as a group of hominoids. So that's gibbons, great apes, and humans. Humans are, of course, great apes, but to simplify, we'll talk about it that way. Um, and I talk about, I study rather, that, that period of time right before all of those different ape groups diversify from about 20 million years ago to about give or take five-ish million years ago. So what I did this summer is I went on my way to to um, from Nairobi to Koru, which is this location in West Kenya near Lake Victoria. And I went with a group um, of researchers who are part of the REACH team. So R-E-A-C-H-E -E, um, under Karen McNulty and the like. And we looked for Miocene ape fossils. And there were also people there doing geology and other Miocene fauna, which is of course less interesting and not as cool. Um, but it was a fantastic trip. As I said on Twitter, I myself found uh, quite a few things. I have like five Miocene ape teeth that are now in the KM, the Kenya National Museums, which I think is pretty sweet. I also did quite a bit of work with finding other fossils that are unrelated to the Miocene apes, but that's just because the way that this works is like you go out to a site and then everybody gets in a line and walks forward and you surface collect before you do any excavation or sieving or anything like that. Uh, but it was pretty epic. We, we were in an area that was like pretty tropical weirdly so i was told by one of the members of the site of a, uh, um, a herpetologist who works at cambridge i think i can probably say this because i think he's officially on the reef team so jason he was uh, our local herpetologist he's done a lot of work with like titanoboa the one of the biggest snakes that ever lived and he was like yeah he's like tropical paleontology is pretty different from regular paleontology and i was kind of like oh what does that mean that sounds very ominous and day one when we're out here, you know, me and some of the other graduate students, because our, our team consisted of like 30 people, um, 20 Kenyans, so people who are native to Kenya and work at the museum or PhD students and things of that nature there in Kenya, as well as like 10 Westerners, um, including some of the students of the professors who were there. And so we're all sitting around like minding our business under the dining tent because the way that this works is we went out there and all pitched our tents around um, like on a, on a sugarcane plantation. So the owner of the sugarcane plantation gave us permission. Force is back. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank God. Hi. I was just rambling and I know that I can, no, it's cool. can be a little bit with that. Anyways, we were camping on a sugarcane plantation and a big storm came through and almost knocked everything over and it sucked and everybody's tent flooded. So I'll be talking about it more later. <laughs> Nice. I wanted to hear all this anyway, so that's great. Yeah, no, I uh, uh, my internet just stopped, completely stopped, um, like to the point where my computer didn't even find a network anymore, uh, and like everything just crashed. And I called my ISP, and they were like, "Our wait times are significantly longer than usual right now." And it's like, okay, so it's a complete outage in this area. Uh, but it came back, so like, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Weird that it happened when I was telling people to vote. Go vote, y'all. Yeah. How I how was, sus? How strange? Right. Hmm. I was I was I don't know how much of that got through, but I was saying don't pay all of your attention to the presidential election. Do pay attention to that, but that's yeah. like that dude signs things. Look at all the other people who make the laws as well, and vote for them, and only vote for them if they know what fucking climate change is, and they're gonna do something about it. Uh, and also local elections as well. Vote for your your, your state uh, representatives and state senators. Vote for your city councilors. Vote for your mayors. Vote for your school boards. Pay attention to what's going on around you and fucking vote, y'all. That's our only way out of it. Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to get across. Mm, mm, mm. What, are you, what are you saying? Vote for the 2.5% of candidates that aren't voting on behalf of rich companies. Yeah, we have this thing in America. Um, it's called corruption. Uh, and it's it's a it's a real bad time where any 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 millionaire or billionaire or company or whatever can uh, just just buy just buy a politician 
Uh, so, you know, look for that. Look for those issues. Ask who's funding who. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a shitty, shitty place. It's it's rough out here, you guys. It's rough out here. But you know what? When you lose, and I'm I'm gonna rage against the machine here. If you if you don't fight against it, right? If you don't fight against the doomerism and the despair, uh, then you're doing exactly what they want, and you're giving up. So you know, uh, uh, spite spite the man and keep on keeping on, and um, find beauty in the 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 wonders of the world around you, and and fight for its yep. right to continue to exist, right? And you know what? Well if when all is said and done, eventually humans are going to go extinct, whether it's in the near future or the far future, and then cool, new, wonderful forms of life will take our place and hopefully not make the same mistakes as we do. So we, we have that yeah. to kind of, kind of, uh, symbolically look forward to. <laughs> we won't be here, but someone will, someone will pick up where we left off. I for Anger one am really hoping that the rodents take over. I, I think the rodents would do an excellent job. Yeah. Like the, 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 what are they called? The Skaven? That's what it is. That's what we'll have. Uh, yeah. Fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anger's a gift. Rodents with Use the mollusks, it. Maybe. I would rather it have mollusk cool. people than rodent people, if I'm honest. Like, it's, it just, it's either dens or slime, and me personally, I'm into eye stalks and slime. You know what I mean? I think it's you fun. know, Forrest, there, there are so many implications of that. <laughs> there are just so many implications there. I'm just gonna yeah. let that hang. In the air. It is what it is. <laughs> Whatever you think I mean by it, that is what I mean by it. That's I promise means. you. That's what he means. You know, you could just, that's what he means. So <laughs> terrible. Uh, yeah, it, it's been, it's a, we're fucking, uh, so you got back from Kenya. Um, good, good, hooray. I'm fucking thrilled to have you back. You were telling me a little bit about it for the show. I caught a little bit of what you were saying. I was here for a few, like a, 15 or 20 seconds before my face came back on the screen. Fucking exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I just started a second master's by the way, uh, in biomedical sciences, um, with a focus on human anatomy and vertebrate paleontology because OSU doesn't have a full ass paleontology department. They weave it into the biomed program. So I've spent the past week in a cadaver lab uh, again, which I have you know significant experience in because I've done it a few times during undergrad in a, a couple of different ways. Uh, and I am the only grad student there. And so we've got this massive lab uh, full of medical students and each cadaver has about 10 to 12 people working on it. And I have one, all of my onesies, I'm doing the work of all those 10 people and all the medical students come over to me uh, to, to ask me what I'm doing. And I have to act like I know what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy, man. It's like, it's just- uh, Dude, that is life. sweet. No, I'm I'm gonna be with you in um in in solidarity there. I'm taking gross anatomy this semester, and it's nice. built to be like a medical student gross anatomy. It's a similar situation, right? So we're yeah. working with cadavers a lot, and uh, I'm ready at long last to learn truly all of the bumps and ridges on all of the bones because the, my my bumps and ridges knowledge is woefully incomplete at present, and I want to be able to tell people what every single minutia of, you know, the, the approximate mm -hmm. of the femur is. So hopefully that's, that's going to yes. be fun and great. And I'm super excited for, it. I even here, you guys can, you guys can make fun of me for this. I even have my notebook already. I picked pink because it's the color of viscera, right? Isn't that great? It's going to be nice. sweet. I got new, all new highlighters and it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited for it, but you know, we'll, that's fucking great, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I've heard it's hard. <laughs> It's so much fun though. And like, that's exactly how I feel. Like I, I, I can give you a brief rundown of what muscles are where and do what I want to be a fucking encyclopedia up here. I want to be able to look at like, so it's like, just, just tell you if I, if I poke you here, how many things am I poking? You know what I mean? I want to like get a real detail and because I'm not doing any clinical shit, like I can just get real into functionality and evolution with it. And this uh, program has an evolutionary physiology course, which I'm excited about. They also have a molecular epigenetics yeah. course, which I'm really fucking excited about. Um, and uh, it, it just, I already went out with these guys, uh, the the director of the program and the, the, the dean of this particular part of the college, um, he runs a cool organization called Native Explorers, which if you are Native American and you're interested in medicine or science and you live around the Oklahoma area, look up Native Explorers. It's a fantastic organization uh, where real goddamn paleontologists and biologists and shit 
uh, and, and doctors and whatnot, will you go camping together and you dig up fossils and you learn about Native American culture, traditions and things. Um, and I went with them this, uh, this summer uh, just to kind of get to know everybody because this is the department that I'd be working with. And also I thought it was fucking cool. Uh, and we dug up camel and horse bones in Western Oklahoma uh, uh, from yeah. just because just that's where they evolved. Um, yeah. And we uh, we dug up all these fossils and then we would spend the nights chilling around the campfire, meeting with the 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 official storyteller of this tribe or that tribe who had explained yeah. to us their histories and whatnot. Uh, fucking amazing program. So freaking cool. So look that up, y'all. And that'll be another part he was telling me that uh, as a part of this, I need more paleontological field experience. And he was like, go camping with us again. Do it longer this time. Come out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Let's dig up some shit. And we'll, we'll count that as some credit hours for you. Like, hell yeah. Dude, and and I'm sure you know, right? Like, because this, this summer was also my first field work experience with paleontology, at least. Like, I've done primatology stuff, but this is my first time actually going out and collecting. And like, oh my God, it's so fun but it is also so hard. Like it is exhausting. I've never drank so much water in a three week period in my life. Yes. Like I was chugging yes. so much water. And this, this is like, this is like rain collected, lukewarm, kind of minerally, kind of sedimenty water. And I was like, you know, that feeling, there's like a meme about it where it's like you wake up at 3am and like you, you, you're truly like a slut for water. Like you're just like drinking so yeah. much water and it's like coming, like coming out of the, out of the cup, like getting all over you because you're so thirsty. It's like that 24 like seven, you're so parched all the time. Mm -hmm. Dude, <laughs> it was awesome. We were with this last dig, we were hiking like fucking just miles and miles a day. And it was like all over weird ass, bumpy Western Ugh, Oklahoma. Yeah. And it's fucking freezing outside half the time. It was, it was, it was so Ooh. cold and it was like drizzling and weird and everything. And there was this one point where like uh, the, the, the guy that I'm working with is Dr. Smith. And he was, he just pulls over his truck and he's like, let's have lunch. And we're in the middle of this fucking light. There's just nothing for fucking a thousand miles all around us. It's freezing cold, cloudy, pissing rain. And he just, it wind like crazy. And he just drops the tail, the, 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 the tailgate on his truck and just has some sandwich stuff. And so we're just out there, just like, just shivering, just eating some ham, just trying to make do. <laughs> it's yep, so freaking yep. worth it. It's so good. No, dude. What it's, is that on the it's, screen? Um, Are you reminding us that this is a show? Fuck you. We're doing oh, this sorry. thing now. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. No, Let's no. We're talk talking about stuff. People. It's fine. <laughs> we can. We can talk to some other people. No, I was fixing we, uh... stuff. Why two spaces? <laughs> he... <laughs> yeah, what I would say so. I should we, say so. What is, what is our job? Hmm. <laughs> we are science uh, communicators. We communicate the science. That's what it's all about. Oh man, the uh, yeah, dude. Um, the the I put out a TikTok uh, and and an Instagram reel encouraging people to call in because I had a a video go viral recently where I was talking about why aren't other apes turning into humans too. Um, and I had a million comments on that thing, but like, no evolution is wrong. And Jesus is Jesus and blah, blah, blah. And like, I was like, y'all let's talk, call in, come on. So hopefully we'll get somebody today. I'm excited for like somebody to call in and like try. So I'm, I'm still, um, a, a foolish idiot moron and I'm still on Twitter or whatever it is we're calling it these days. And I was absolutely, um, uh, despondent the other day when there was a there was a viral video that came, I think it was actually from uh, the American Natural History Museum, right? And it was the cetacean mm -hmm. evolution, right? And it was it was okay. you know topical, right? Because um, Perus, I think it's Perusitis, Perusitis, the uh, uh, Perusitis colossus, the big cetacean that they just found that's like heavier than a blue whale. Really cool cetacean evolution news. Wow. Anyways, it's like an animation of like uh, Indohias as it goes through. Um, a Pachycetus and Ambulocetus and Dorodon, or rather Rhodocetus and Dorodon and Basilosaurus. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is such a cute video. What if I checked out the comments section? And then it was just like the, 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 the Wojak that's like <laughs> withered away. It was just so depressing mm -hmm. to see. Uh, people, people don't understand evolution a lot of the time. A lot of people don't who, who rail against it so much. 
And uh, that's what we're here to hopefully uh, kind of fix and fight against. So if you have questions about evolution, we're not mean unless you are first. So call in. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have only start. I only use Twitter now for a, a couple of messages. I have like two people that only message me there, and that's the only time that I use it. And I uh, I opened the uh, uh, notifications for the first time in like several weeks. It's a oh my god, it's a nightmare. I oh my god, <laughs> it is. Ew. It's a bad time. It's, not it's a bad time over it's there. I don't try. I don't, it's not a. I don't recommend it's not it. Fun. It's not good. Yeah. And you know, I we were actually when I was in the field, we were talking um, a lot about social media and like the efficacy of of social media. Like a lot of the professors who were there were talking about how awesome it is for academia as far as like getting out opportunities and scholarships and you know yeah. things of that nature. Um, it helps people gain ground pretty quickly on that. And then we were like, mm -hmm. yeah, but it really is awful for your mental health. Like that whole time, pretty much cost? that I was there, I was off my phone and I was so happy. I was so happy, dude. I was like, oh, this is this is what being well-rounded feels like. I, I, yeah. I am not on my phone all the time and I'm talking with my friends and we're spending all day outside and you know, we're eating three square meals a day that aren't full of, of sugar. It's It was amazing. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was yep. still there. Yes. That's dude. That's the whole thing, man. Is like it's it's. I I I was just starting to get into it. Like I just started it right before uh, Musk took it over, and uh, I was like starting to kind of get into it, and then it just went so downhill. And I was depressed about it at first. I was like, man, I want to. You know, it sucks that this is the one platform that I'm getting like that, that I get this much hate and I get this much pushback, and I can't get any traction on a post that actually matters. And like I'm having a weird time growing, and it's difficult. And it kind of hit me. I'm like, but this is exactly why you don't post anything on Truth Social. It's the exact same reason. Like, it's just, I, you know what I mean? Why would I do it? Why am I here? Fuck that shit. And then they made cisgender a curse, a slur. And I'll like, all right, fuck it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with that. Fuck this. Yeah, dude. I I forgot they even did that. I mean, what 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 goofiness hasn't gone down on Twitter? It, it, I can't believe he that guy keeps one upping himself, right? Like, I don't. I can't it's believe wild. that Musk still manages to look dumber every single time a change comes around. It's like, oh, okay, this is just another way to make the site even worse. How did you pause? Okay, yeah. fine, Jimmy. Fine, fine. We'll take the first call. <laughs> fine. I, I know when I, I know when meme. the comically large pain is pulling us off the stage. I know when that happens. <laughs> I love the meme where it's like uh, <laughs> Elon Musk slams his dick in a car door, and a million nerds are like, "Masterful gambit, sir." <laughs> <That's good. laughs> All right, we we have six people on hold, uh, as I hear. Um, and uh, we have people who've been waiting for a little while, and I want to jump into the calls. It's my choice. Um, as always, we prioritize calls from theists, so we will do that. If you are a theist, or if you are a creationist, or if you don't believe in evolution, or you don't believe in climate change, or you don't believe that sex and gender are different things, or you don't believe that people should have human rights for whatever reason, or if you don't believe that uh, uh, we are apes, or if you don't believe that um, uh, 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 Dragon Age was an objectively good series, then call in, um, and we'll talk about all of those things. We will argue with you in a polite and cheerful and chipper way. Um, until we get bored of doing that. It'll be a great time, so call us on in. Uh, and be like these cool people that have done exactly that. So we'll go with... Uh, Winifred. Pronouns they, them, calling in from, I'm assuming that's Denmark, or maybe Delaware, um, uh, asking, is there room for maintaining cultural mythology without promoting the supernatural? And is there community for that? Uh, and, and has all sorts of cool questions. Uh, Winifred, you are all on the line. How are you doing today? Hello. Oh no, I'm having issues with my sound. No. I'm hearing things now. after all this time. <laughs> you calling all the way in from Delamark and we want to hear your question. Oh no. I tell you what, what if you. if you can hear us we are gonna we're gonna return you to the queue for just a minute. We're not hanging up on you. 
I'm just going to put you back in the queue, and I will come back to you here in a second so you have time to fix your sound. Until then, we're going to go with James, pronoun he, him in Canada, waiting for the least amount of time, but the only other theist caller. Um, uh, we once talk about the difference between spirits and souls and ghosts and all sorts of things. James, you are on the line. How are you doing today? Hello? Hello. Are you there? Might James. be our fault. Let me see if I can fix it. Hi. See, I, this is this is a cosmic signal to me. We should keep talking about the things somebody. that we like. <laughs> I, I think oh, James I hear hears me, but not you. <clears throat> Just a second, James. Oh, okay. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, James, say something. Hello, how are you doing? Now, Forrest, say mm -hmm. something. James, Pardon can me? you hear us? Oh, that was all I had. James, we're going to put you back in the queue. We'll pull you up in a second when I've got the audio fixed. <laughs> God oh, damn. Okay, then. Yeah, all cool. right. It's not your fault. I can hear James, and I heard Winifred, too, yeah. just for the record. I heard Winifred as well, yes. Winifred, if you're still there and you can hear us, we have you back in the queue. I well, promise Winifred we'll come back to you. Well, Winifred can't hear you. Winifred can hear me. Winifred, we'll get you back. We'll get you back in a while. <laughs> So know. as we were talking about about biomed and stuff uh, for the past forty five minutes, um, I I so so this is something that I've talked about before, uh, and and I I rarely have a time to talk about it, but like I am super good at skinning uh, cadavers. I can skin people Ooh. like so fast, and I never have a chance to brag about it except for with other biologists or maybe like to get out of a bar fight. Like that would be handy to brag yeah. about in that time. But like uh, fucking y'all. You would have been well employed as like a um, an early Middle Ages dungeon keeper, right? That's like what I'm have, saying. You would have been That's what I'm quite well employed. It's something it's that like that we, your back yeah, it's 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 an underutilized okay, skill on a societal level. Okay, wait, it's fixed. Okay, it's we're fixed. gonna go back let's, to Winifred. Let's, let's try. All right, we're bringing back Winifred. Winifred pronouns they them calling in from uh, 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 Delamark. Uh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Yes! All right. Wonderful. Thank that you so much for waiting. perfectly from the onset is what I'm saying for someone who watches the clip at a later time. <laughs> well, this is great. This call of production is perfect. I'm going to go have a great. fucking popsicle. It's too goddamn hot. Thanks, Winifred. It's, it's okay. The, the, the scuff is real. It happens. I've done streaming myself. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your question, Winifred? Uh, so... I left Catholicism when I was a kid, and after that, I ended up following more into uh, Celtic pagan uh, beliefs and everything like that. Okay. I already deconstructed that gods probably don't exist, regardless of where they're from. Right. And, well, today, I ended up getting banned from a pagan subreddit because I was the wrong sort of pagan. <laughs> and my nice. question is, if, is there any place that you have found where people can talk about the culture, cultural importance and significance of those uh, older and ancient beliefs without it turning into just this mystical circle jerk anthropology department at your local university i was gonna anthropology say the same thing. Department. Yeah. <laughs> i yeah. was gonna say cultural specifically but yeah i mean i've walked into rooms and cultural anthropologists are talking about stuff like that and then i leave and go do my thing for like three hours and i come back and they're still mm -hmm. talking about that stuff like they they can go on and on and on and it's it's fascinating if a bit above my head because that's not my specialty. But yeah, you you would be right at home in a cultural anthropology department for sure, or archaeology, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, so I would I would look up like rather than going to a paganism Reddit if you're into Reddit, I would go to archaeology Reddit or or cultural anthropology Reddit if that's a thing. Um, if you can find an arc theory group that can talk about you know post processual archaeological oh, yeah. theory and, and and different sets of beliefs that that you can stack up with that. Um, yeah, that would be dope for you, I would imagine. All right, thank you much. <laughs> thank you so much for waiting for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Is there anything else we can do for you? It says you're a theist. Would you like to talk about that? I find it funny that it says I'm a theist. I mean, 
I accept the possibility that they might exist, but until actual evidence is put forward that they do exist, I'm basically operating under the possibility that they don't. Right on. I don't know why it says Sweet. that then. It must have just been a, mist of a type or something. All right, cool. Well, have an awesome day, Winifred. I really appreciate you Thank waiting you, and, and, and talking to us. Awesome. Good luck on everything cool. in the future. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Love like, that. I don't know what Reddit is. I don't use it, but I hear it's a utility for people who can stand it as as like a community of weirdos. You know what I mean? Do you really not use Reddit at all, Forrest? Is that true? No. Yeah, I, I literally, yeah. I've never, I never have an account. Yeah. I've never done it. I, I know it used to be the shit from what I understand, but then like every time I hear anybody talk about it, it's always in the negative. So I'm just kind of like, I, yeah. I, I treat it a lot like how I used to treat Twitter. It's like, why would I, yeah. I don't understand the point of it. I don't understand how to use it. And I've never heard anybody say anything nice about it. So like, I don't know, man. It's they they pretty much just did like a, a complete overhaul of like mods and stuff like that and removed third party apps and did like a they, they're they're a horrible platform to be honest but i also use reddit all the time so it's a similar problem right to on. twitter for me it's like junk food like i know it's bad for me i know that there is literally nothing good that comes out of using it except i i did get my start on like the creationism evolution conversation on reddit so i do owe it that and i met many okay. wonderful people through it so there are positives if you know where to look <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent uh we have um we're gonna go back to where's our the theist caller didn't we have another theist caller that was in here for a we second did at some point yes james yeah uh we no longer have james Damn. James, no. Well, I'm sorry, James. No. We we tried. We really tried. Um, we only have one other theist caller. What is what is this? Console. That's my editing notes. What? Why do I have this as a call? So weird. Um, okay, we're instead gonna go over here to Wes from Georgia, a theist who has a a gotcha in the Bible that will show God put something that only God would know, a medical fact not known at the time that it was written. That's what this says. Now, before I take this call really quickly, I'm pretty sure I know who this is. Um, I'm 99% sure that this is Wesley, who Jimmy like frequently won't allow on the show um, because for, for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to double check to see if that's who this is. And if it is, we'll see where we go from there. Um, but I'm interested to talk to this person for just a second. Uh, and we'll see how well it goes. Wes, you're on the line with Forrest and Erica. How are you doing today? I'm good. I have no idea who that other, other Wesley is. That's not me. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so you've never called the show before, I, I, or are you just, just you? No, I, no I, have, I have called a couple times, but every time I call, they're like, are you that jerk Wes that was banned um, <laughs> like a month ago? Really? So, no, oh, I, no. I'm, I'm, I have no yeah, idea who that there, is. There's, there's more than one there's Wes. A, <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the problem is this guy is like a persistent caller for a long time. And mm -hmm. like, I want to talk to him. Uh -huh. I want to get him on the show really bad. Jimmy refuses to have this dude on. Um, and basically, he believes that like everybody who says that they don't believe in God is lying, that they that we all heard ah. God's voice on one particular day, uh, like back in. Yeah, life. yeah. The guy. Yeah. The guy, who, he, he believes that like oh. back in like the early 2000s, God spoke in all of our mouths and said some words that we could all hear. And if you say you didn't hear it, you're a liar. <laughs> and that there's only like 400 real Christians in the world, including him. Uh, and they're all like these perfect magical children and then him, but he's allowed to sin because God chose him to be his special person. It's crazy shit. And I want to talk to that guy so damn bad. Sorry, that's that's a whole thing. Uh, that, yeah. that was a different dude. Wes was banned well, for being a transphobe, Jimmy says. Why isn't Jimmy? Jimmy, use the goddamn microphone. What's going on with you? I can't keep he's stopping to read these. Yeah, yeah, he's communicating in in an odd in an odd mechanism tonight. Jimmy, very strange. Just 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 in and yell at us. He says he's downstairs. Okay, that makes <laughs> sense. Okay, sure, sure. okay, God Wes. Damn. New Wes, how are you today? What would you like to talk to us about? <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, I have just been uh, watching the line for about a month or so. I've called in a couple times, and uh, y'all, this show tonight has been a lot of fun to watch. I appreciate it. And I wouldn't call this like a gotcha. It's just there is something I was reading in the Bible, and I've heard y'all say on the show, um, so different people say on the show, 
mm-hmm. why wouldn't God put something in the Bible that only he knew or that no one else could have known at the time that it was written? Right. Okay. And you, I mean, do you know what I'm talking about there? Like something that the people yeah. who are writing it could not have known was a thing. Like yeah. equals in squared I, or some, something along those lines. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard people say things like that. Um, I'm kind of leery about that kind of line of thinking because the Bible is still something that's being actively interpreted all the time. So like, there's a uh, lot of stuff that gets added or tweaked or whatever like that through the years that like makes it fit the understanding of the time a little bit better. Or people will look back at uh, it and say like, oh, well, when it says, you know, uh, uh, this, what it really means is that and, you know, it was like if, if I think there's one part of the Bible where it says something like that, that everything's made of small things or something like that. I don't remember what exactly it is. Um, but like I've heard yeah, people say that like that's talking one, about by, by him, all things consist. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 like they're like, well, they're talking about atoms here, and that's and and I was like, yeah, no, they're fucking not. That's clearly not what it says. You're saying that, you know what I mean? But anyway, like, so I'm leery about it, yeah. but I'm open to the idea. If somebody wants to present it, like, we can take it as what it is and and see if it makes any sense to us. So, like, by all means, if you have something yeah. that you think makes sense, like, let's hear it. I heard similarly someone say that when when the Bible says that God stretches out stretches out the universe that it has to do with the expansion of space. Yes, so that's yes. not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah. So okay, so just a very very odd one. I, so there's a, a passage that I, I that is definitely not like reading back into it, and it's def, it's definitely not um, there's. They absolutely, it hasn't been changed over the years. And as a matter of fact, you've probably read it and thought like, what does this mean? This is weird. It's not, it doesn't even make sense. It's kind of, it kind of makes, it actually makes Jesus look not as good. And a lot of atheists will make fun of the passage because it actually, it's, 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 there's, it's, it's odd, right? So Mm -hmm. here's the thing. We have only learned recently um, in the past, I think 50 or a hundred years that when someone gets the cataracts taken off of their eyes, that it takes a while for them to actually be able to focus, right? Okay. I don't know and that. So I, sure, I, wanted to call sure. in, I wanted to call in and tell this to y'all because y'all are both, you know, like uh, biologists and things like that, right? Uh, how long is, is this something that is said in the Bible that somebody had their cataracts removed and took a long time to be able to see again? So, yeah. So Mark chapter eight, the really strange passage in the Bible where the only place where a blind man was asked, what do you see right after he was healed? Like a lot of, a lot of different blind men healed in the Bible, all those things like that. There's one place where after the blind man is healed, Jesus looks at him immediately and says, what, tell us what you see. And he says, I see, and he said, and he said, he describes like men like trees walking. And then Jesus touches him again and heals him a second time. And he's able to see clearly. So in the passage, there's a blind man who's asked what he saw right after he was healed. And he says the exact same thing that blind people today who are healed say that they see immediately after surgery. It, it, and, and we know this agnosia, agnosia thing, right? Where, where the cataracts fall off your eyes, but it's not just your, your eyes that actually see right there's it actually is turned into images in your brain and your brain has to take those images and and turn them into something that you can understand there's a difference between what you see and what you understand to see right right so yeah. i'm looking mark it up chapter right now eight. to kind of okay yeah mark mark chapter okay. 8 verse 24 um okay yeah it's you know tw- verse 23 verse 24 verse 25 I've heard atheists talk about this and they're like, you know, Jesus wasn't strong enough to heal him all at once. Why did he, t- why did he have to touch him again? You know, he had to get like a double dose or whatever. And so, yeah. So what actually, so I was reading it after I had heard someone say, why doesn't God put something in the Bible that only he would know? 
And the plain fact is mm -hmm. no one would have thought like if, so this document, this, this, this document was written at least, even if you don't think it was written 2000 years ago, let's say it was written 1500 years ago and edited and edited, edited. No one would have known that that is what a blind man would say right after he was given his vision back. Okay, so I'm reading the chapter, uh, the, the the thing right now, and Jesus mm -hmm. spits in this man's eyes and then touches yeah. him, and then he's a, he says he sees trees walking, and then he touches him again, and he sees his eyes restored. So we have a couple of possible explanations here. Um, either mm -hmm. what you said, this is a, a real event that happened, and it was fucking crazy, and and he saw a little bit better, and then saw a lot better, or we have a more interesting story because it wasn't just a one and done miracle. And there's lots of stories like this where things take a couple of tries to get right, where the magic isn't quite magic in the right way. Or maybe this is an apocryphal story where this is the third version of it. And that, that's the one that was actually put in the Bible, that this was a story that was passed down orally for a little while. And only after a little while of adding in weird shit, did it actually get written down and put into the Bible and made into Canon. Um, there's a few different things we can add to this. The question that I would have for you is, like, let, let's say for sure that this is some crazy shit that these people got just, they, they got right. For whatever reason, they happen to get it right. The rest of it, though, doesn't make, like, a lick of sense. So, like, how <laughs> likely is it in a book that makes, like, 50,000 different claims about the, super, about the natural world that one of them might perchance be right... I'd say there's a pretty high chance. Whatever the reasoning for it is, we can say, okay, even if I agree with you, this is actually like describing really how a blind man would see again. Sure, I can I can see your understanding of that. But like, if they threw this many claims at the wall about the fact that stars can fall out of the sky and land on Earth, that there was a flood that covered the entire world and two of every animal reproduced and made all the things on the planet, that... that life started in this garden and that we spread out from there and that we all are related to only two people. And then also only a handful of people after Noah, like there was this tower, then that's where all of our languages come from. Cause God mixed up all of our languages when we tried to build a tower in China. Like it, as you have like these, all of these claims, one half of a passage here describes that this person's sight got, uh, this person's sight got better incrementally. I'm wondering why that one weighs so heavily for you and all the other ones that are wrong aren't proof that this isn't real. You know what I mean? Why is well, this one being so kind of right, being saying this real, and all the wrong ones aren't saying this clearly doesn't make any sense? To your Eric, point, I see Forrest, also something like, else. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say to your point, right? Like uh, turn it on its head. What about all the times that you know Christ healed people in the Bible and they didn't heal in the way that we understand them to heal today? So like when he heals people mm -hmm. who can't walk, right? We understand today that when someone is bedridden for a long period of time, and then their whatever is causing them to be bedridden is healed, it takes them a while to relearn how to walk, one, because they've got so much atrophied muscle on, on their legs themselves, but also just because it's, it's that muscle memory is, is kind of withered away, um, neurologically speaking, right? So like, it takes mm -hmm. them a while to relearn that skill, but Christ heals people in the Bible who've been, you know, unable to walk their entire life, who then just stand up and instantly walk. Like, that's not how we understand people to, to heal when they, when they're born and, and don't have the ability to, to, to use their legs. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I suppose it can go both ways and then sort of on a secondary note, right. So if I'm looking at the Bible and I'm I'm wanting it to give me some kind of unknown knowledge, right? I want God to reveal himself in a way that in the future will be understood. I don't think I'm going to pick cataract surgery, right? As as the best way to kind of reveal that you truly know, that you truly are a, a book written by the God of the universe, right? Like I would pick something more substantial, like you know, like the, the expansion of the cosmos or, you know, biological evolution or genetic information or any of those things or, or something perhaps even on the realm of like chemistry and physics or whatever. I think it's just odd that it's like, that's, that's how God reveals himself, right? A cataract surgery. Yeah. Um, so that's my, that's my gripe. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah does that make I, any complete, sense to you, I completely get that. I am, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that I would believe the Bible because of that. I'm definitely not saying that that's like the, uh, the thing. All I'm saying is it's a very interesting thing that there's just a random passage put in there 
that um, the only time where he specifically says, what is it that you see? And he, like, he doesn't, there, there's no, there's no reason for him to say that. Like there, if you look through uh, commentaries and all this stuff, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. I've read all kinds of commentaries and things. No one has any idea why he said it. Like there's no, there's, there's no reason why he said it. And it's, everybody has these weird like, guesses. Like, well, maybe it means, you, you know, reason. you have to get this or that. It's just a random I, thing that's put in there. I can give you a reason. This man couldn't see, and he spat in his eyes and said, do you see anything? And then he says, I see people. They look like trees walking around. And then he did it again, and then his eyes were open and the sight was restored, it says. So, like, he asked, did it work? Do you see anything? <laughs> like that, It sounds to me like that. that's what I would do. If I could, if I actually did surgery on somebody's eyes, my first question would be, how are you seeing? Are you seeing anything? What do you see? Because I want to make sure that it went properly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> oh, oh, I don't think yeah. that's well, a mystery that, here. Well, to that point, Forrest, right? When, mm -hmm. when you're healing something like walking, right? It's evident to everybody else the second it's healed. You get up and you walk. You that's don't say, true. can you walk? The person tries to walk and then they walk. With, with eyesight, though, if you run into someone who's blind, you might not know that they're blind, right? It's yeah. there. You only know they're blind because they tell you they can't see. So that might be the purpose of Christ saying, Hey, can you see? Did you see anything? And then he's like, kind yeah. of, and then he touches them and he's like, Oh yeah, I do see things. I, so it I, might be the nature. I, I have a question. Deaf, right? I have a question. This is no, burning now in you me. come back to the microphone. I know. Cause I just, I'm dying <laughs> to know the answer to this question. And I, and I think you're, you since it sounds like you're kind of wrapping up the high vision one, Wes, how did you determine that cataracts was the cause of blindness? of the person here and not anything else. Cause it, it, it almost sounds like you think that no one had ever had temporary blindness or temporary eye injuries that at first healed to a point of blurriness and then healed to a point of, uh, uh, being fine. So one, I, I mean, we, as far as writing about it, cause we don't have actual proof that the event itself happened. So how do you have, what is it that makes you think it was cataracts? And that no one would understand that eye injuries heal progressively 2,000 years ago. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, um, I don't think that there's anything that, that would lead me to believe that no one's ever had like something healed progressively or something, you know. I don't think that I, – I, here's the thing. I don't think that if – they were trying to, if, if there was someone who was writing a story trying to prove that Jesus was the Christ and had done a miracle, they wouldn't put in there the way that everyone always healed on their own progressively. Like that doesn't, that's not proof of a miracle. Like this, like this, this reads like just a random story that was right. written okay. down. But answer and no the cataract question. Why answer answer the cataract because it's their call. So I don't want to take away. I just think that was a really kind of funny response to me. Like, I don't know if you were trying to write that Jesus was a miracle worker. I, the Christian, am calling in to say he actually sucked at it first time. He put up the optometrist glasses and was like, which one looks better? Miracle one or miracle two? Miracle three or miracle four? So I just wanted to know where you got that this was cataract healings. And that was that's all I should do. It's not right. Well, well, there's actually all kinds of different healings that that happens. It's called it's called visual agnosia. It's not because I mean, I just looked it up. It's called visual agnosia. Anyone who is blind who has any type of um, blindness that is healable, whether it's cataract or something else, but who has been blind for a long time, it takes a long time for their brain to, to do pattern recognition again. Sure. The reason and, why I'm asking you, Wes, is, until, Wes, the reason I'm asking you what, is you're saying in the last 50 to 100 years, we cured cataracts and people who have had cataracts cured have the experience of first being met with blurred vision and then their eyes focus in. Uh, usually you don't have to yeah. spit in their eyes between the two. You don't have to like rub it off or shoe shine it or anything. So the yeah, question is just, thousands of dollars the, the question is just, why do you think that was the blindness? If you accept the event happened with specifically cataract thing. And I assume you now wanted to retract your statement that no one was aware that when you heal from something like this, uh, you know, sun injuries have existed on eyes for, for a long time. So, for example, you would have to keep your eyes covered with like a blindfold for some amount of time. And then you would unblindfold yourself like shit like that has existed for thousands of years and people have been healing it. But anyway, 
What, how did you? Oh, what, I, I'm I'm already doing it. I'm sorry, you two. I'm I'm gonna stop making this my call. All I want to know is how did you determine it was a cataract healing, which so much of your argument is dependent on. Okay, so I appreciate that. I, I did not mean that it that this is a cataract healing. What I meant was we know because of cataract surgery that when people get healed from a blindness that they've had for a very, very long time, they've had the blindness for so long that they lose pattern recognition, which takes a long time. It takes longer than if you just get an eye injury and it slowly heals. It, yeah, it takes, so you, I mean, you have to be blind for many, many an years for you to lose. Pattern. Right. And, and so I, I'm going to just let it go and move on because I'm not sufficiently answered. It. The direction I would want to go from here is, okay, then how do you know that when he's saying trees, that he's not saying he's having failed pattern recognition, just that his eyes are blurry, still pretty blurry. Like that's anyway, you two take it back. I'll go back away from the it's microphone. Just, this is why earlier you were complaining. I wasn't at the mic. See what happens when I come back. I'm it's go better ahead. than having to read everything you're saying. I've got a microphone bar or the camera bar here right in front of where the text on the bottom of the screen is. So you're typing things. and I'm trying to read it like a lunatic. I sent some funny stuff. You missed the good things. It's fine. It's fine. I'm in, in, in Jimmy's in Jimmy's defense, I have tried to call in three times and not been able to, um, and and had to hang up before to try to call, talk to Jimmy. So Jimmy, I've been trying to talk to you for a yeah. while. So call me Wednesday. I'll be filling in for Matt. On. I might be there too. Who knows? <laughs> oh, actually, I'm going to keep talking because somebody in the chat said I don't watch the shows when he's here. So now I'm just continuing to talk just to piss you off. <laughs> Fuck you, Timothy. <laughs> I, it's my channel. I'll do this shit whenever the fuck I want. Suck it. Not literally. Well, that's a, that's an that's an antiquated insult. But go fuck yourself. That one's still good. <laughs> I I, and I also have another question just about this. And this this is not to do with because I think I think we've we've sufficiently explained why we're not buying the 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 fact that this was a reason to believe in sure, the Bible. And sure, we course. can keep talking about that if you like. We can continue talking about that if you'd like because that is the point of your call. I have a different question that's completely irrelevant. It may be not be one that you're prepared to answer or have any interest in answering. I just am curious. At the end of that story in chapter in verse 26, um, in 25 and 26, he heals the guy's eyes. His eyes are open. His sight's restored. He saw everything clearly. And then Jesus sent him home saying, don't go into the village. So they, they, they when he comes to Beth, uh, uh, Bethsaida, um, out of the village, they no, he's in the village of Bethsaida. And they bring this man and beg Jesus to touch him. He takes the blind man by the hand and leads him out of the village, heals his eyes, and then says, don't go back in the village. Why do you think that was the case? I'm just genuinely curious about that passage. I'm not trying to be a dick. I, like, I'm not trying to like no, do a no, different that's thing. Fine. I, just, I just read I, that I and that makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, uh, no, no, yeah, I, no, that's, I, I'm glad to say theologically, um, in Romans 11, it says that uh, God used the the uh, rejection of some of the Israelites to bring the gospel to the rest of the world. And if Israel had accepted, then it's possible that the gospel would not have gone out to the rest to the rest of the world. That's the, that's the theological explanation of that. So there were certain things that he was revealing. I'm sorry for the plane in the background here. There were certain things that he was revealing to certain people and not revealing to other people. So he cured this man's sight and was like, don't tell anybody about the cool miracle that I did, but do write it down so that people 2000 years ago can hear it. Yes. Yes. He don't tell anybody right now. And uh, uh, because he was revealing it progressively and then uh, not, but not, re not revealing it totally, which uh, kind of goes along with the passage a little bit too. Anyway, so I, I want to, I, I also want to say thank you to you guys for what you do, because when I first was a Christian, um, I was a, I was an old earth creationist and mm. I was teaching a Sunday school class. And one of the teenagers in the class said, can you please teach us about evolution? And so I went to study evolution to, to prove it wrong. And I like took a, took a, actually a college level course in evolution and I came nice. away believing in evolution and, you That's know, along awesome. with older creationism. Um, and it's because of right. people like you that are, that are doing that. So I, I, even though I don't agree obviously with the atheism part, I appreciate the, um, the work trying to get the science out because I believe that we all need to and believe the science, I, whether we're Christians I or not. 
I appreciate you for for genuinely searching it out. You know, I mean, you you were like, hey, I don't I don't know very much about this subject, so I'm going to look into it and and see if I find it compelling. And you did that. So, man, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Not very Seriously. few people do that, actually. Well, I guess I shouldn't say very few people, but not enough. The 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 enough yeah. number would be all of them. <laughs> But so thank you, thank you for doing that. I, I hope you had fun. I mean, I think that that's like the coolest stuff in the world to study. So I, I hope you really enjoyed it. I have really, really enjoyed it. It's really opened my eyes to a lot of different things. I'm, and it's, it's really cool. helped me a lot. I grew up on Bill Nye and you guys are like the successors of, uh, of Bill Nye. So I, so I love it. I think Hell it's awesome. yeah. Well, thank awesome. you. That really That's so a lot. And, and I think what I think what Bill Nye did to Ken Ham was was amazing as well. I loved. It. I watched it three times. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so it, was it was a massacre. It was a massacre. Yeah, massacre. So I just, massacre. I, yeah. I want to know then. It's so like you you're uh, really quickly before before we move on. Like I yeah want to go up one thing that we talked about and, and and it was one of the explanations that that we initially gave and we we're saying this is why I don't believe in this path. And I said that you know why don't you believe in all the other things that are wrong. Um, or why don't you take the other things that are wrong as evidence that the Bible is wrong? I'd like to touch on that for a second. There's a lot of scientific inaccuracies about the Bible that you are now probably more familiar with since you've been studying science. Do those weigh on you at all? Like, do you worry about, like, do you think about those? Like, how does that fit into your theology? Well, I believe that the, that Genesis, Genesis, the book of Genesis was written as a Genesis of the people of Israel. I think that Adam and Eve was a, a story of, a, was a local story of a local judgment and a local recreation. And the flood was a local flood, just like we've seen that all over the place. So that, to me, um, the first, you know, the first 11 chapters, 12 chapters of Genesis are local stories um, in the genesis of a local tribe, uh, which is, I think, what y'all believe, that it's a, that it's a, local, that's a local story of local tribe, right? So, so, so I, wanna, I don't know I anything else this. that's a problem scientifically. I, I actually agree with you, Wes. Like, you know, I, I was a, a theistic evolutionist for quite some time, um, and I I, ha I really had no issue with with melding the two together. I mean, for for me, the reason of I'm no longer a theist is you know, for for completely different reasons. But um, there are other what I would call scientific inaccuracies um, elsewhere in the Old Testament outside of the what I would consider a proper hermeneutical reading of Genesis uh, one through eleven, right? As like a, a cosmic temple or as an origin story for people, local stuff, things like that. Um, like the, the yeah, if you the, give me a, give me a few of them, I will I will absolutely study it out. Yeah, um, I mean, my favorite one is pi equaling three. I don't know about you, Forrest. That's the one I yeah. like. Uh, that was actually one that I was going to bring mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Okay, you you bring that up because I got a piece real quick and also get another white cloth. So okay. um, tell, tell Wes that and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's it's in Kings. Um, I actually I was looking it up as she was speaking. It's weird that we were on the same brain wave there, but. It's in Kings uh, chapter 7, verse 23 through 26, it looks like. First Kings. It's in First Kings. Um, and let me make sure I'm getting it in my copy here because I don't want to just read it off the internet because they, they might have it weird. Um, so Kings chapter 23, they're talking about a cauldron, I guess it is. They say a molten sea. Um, yeah. And they say that it's 10 cubits from one brim to the other. So the diameter is 10 cubits and it was round all about. And it says height was five cubits, which is irrelevant and a line of 30 cubits encompassed around it. That's what's important. So we have the circumference and the diameter of this circle here. Um, and the circumference is 30 and the diameter is 10, which 30 divided by 10 would be three, which would mean that pi equals three, not 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. And so like, this is fun one because like for a lot of people, like if, if you asked me, I would say, yeah, well, they didn't have a fucking accurate measuring tape at the time and they wrote it down whenever it was. But for people like Answers in Genesis or whoever that say that every word in this document is absolutely completely correct, it's a problem. And so like, I wonder what your take on that is. Is this something that you could just say they measured it with a rope and they, they marked the real you know, whatever. They didn't have a laser to, to guide exactly the perfect measurement. Or would you say that for somebody who, reads this text literally i really wish that that said like something that that put the, the formula for pi in there i, I think it would be, be fucking would dope be if it did really it would be really easy for um it would, it would be really easy for people like you to believe the bible a lot a lot clearer a lot without without as much you know problems if that was in there right. I, I don't know Just i've heard people say it has to do with pie. the width of the inside versus the width of the brim 
but I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm really not, a, a, I, don't, I don't know if that actually works or not. Have you ever heard anybody say that's the width of the inside versus, versus the width of the brim? I have not, but that's an interesting argument. There's, there's another one too, Wes, that um, the one that sticks out for me, and I'm sure Forrest knows this one too. He probably knows the verses better than I do. But um, to get stripe, to get striped calves, you shake a stick at um, at the striped adults when they're mating, right? Or non-striped adult. I can't yep. remember. It's like a genetics thing. You remember the one I'm talking about? I'm Forrest? looking that up. I haven't. No, I've never heard of that. Yeah. One. I'm looking it up right now. Do yeah, you, okay, Wes, great do you know the story in Genesis. Um, yeah, it has yeah. to do with Jacob and Laban. Um, right. if you can, okay, right. if you can find where that's at, I'll, 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 you know, I'll look it up with you. It looks yeah, like that's, that's Genesis, about. Genesis 30, maybe they made it in front of the, the, the flocks bred in front of branches and sticks. And so the flock brought forth stripes speckled and spotted. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. So in that passage, it, there is uh, uh, Jacob is trying to manipulate the um, you know what what cows he gets because he was promised that if he got like striped ones then he he gets to keep all the striped ones so he tries to put like a uh, rods in there in order to get them to breed in striped ways I guess or something like that right so there's a yeah, verse I though I think it's in the next chapter where it says. Um, oh, oh, look in, look in chapter, look in the next chapter, 31. Mm -hmm. And hard it says in hard, verse hard, number hard, nine. Hard, hard, hard. Did I lose you? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no I'm here. still here. I'm waiting. I'm oh, waiting okay, my sorry. I thought, I thought you said, hold on. Okay, so in chapter 30, Jacob tries to get them to breed the proper way um, by putting by his own like weird way that he thought would work. And then in chapter 31, uh, verse nine, it says, God has taken away the cattle of your father. And it came to pass verse 10. At the, the time the cattle conceived, I lifted my eyes and saw a dream. The rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight. And the angel of God spake unto him in a dream. So even though Jacob thought that the 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 rods were what did it god showed him in a dream that it was the mating that did not the rods okay so so the argument from your perspective would be that it's like it it, it was it was human folly that is being that's proposing that idea but in actuality the things are working as they should yeah in chapter 30 jacob tries it his own way and in chapter 31 god shows him a dream of how he actually got the how he actually got it to happen he's like they were, they, you know, I, he did it through genetics. If I was an right. apologist, I would totally make that out to be a uh, natural selection. That if they were like living it is around natural these selection. reeds, it's one hundred percent. If they were reading around these reeds for a long yeah. time, then they would eventually develop stripes as a camouflage, huh? and that this is just summarizing it into one. You know what I mean? That's how I would yeah. just spin it if yeah. I was evil. No, this is, and there's another thing. I mean, in the in in Genesis thirty one, there's there's genetics in Genesis thirty one. Boom. <laughs> I'm about to joke. I'm kidding. Yeah, right, right. No, that's, <laughs> no, no, that's that. I actually like that as an explanation. I've not heard that before. I mean, I think I think that there is there are quite a few things that I I tend to see a a lot of apologists do where like if the Bible is incorrect about something, then then that portion is simply you know human error or that portion is mistranslation things like that. Kind of what Force was alluding to earlier, but. You know, I mean, I think what you what you said for that verse is reasonable. What 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 did we conclude with pi equaling three? Uh, just that oh, he you could. There's a few few explanations that it could have been an inaccurate or that they could have been measuring the inner diameter of the thing versus the outer mm -hmm. diameter of the thing, things like that. I see. I see. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess the long and short of it for me is that it's like there are a lot of places. Um, or at least, you know, a handful of places, as we've discussed here, where things could be interpreted as being like, okay, you know, brutally incorrect, or like, whether that's because of humans, or or because of something, you know, because it's, it's written by people, whatever. Um, but there are also like, like we mentioned earlier, like a lot of opportunities that you that you could include something that was like, truly quite profound for, for the time period. Yeah. Um, 
as a message for future people, I guess, if that was the idea. But like, you know, from, from my perspective, it it's all seems quite anthropological, right? Like it, the language that's being used is the language that people at that time would understand. And I've heard apologists sort of spin that in a way that it's like that was done intentionally. But I feel like if the message is supposed to be uh, timeless, as it were, then then it would be it would it would be a good move to include some hints here and there that would be uh, elucidating even to, to future audiences. And like, right. I don't understand. I'm not claiming to understand the mind of God or whatever, but like, you know, I don't know why that wouldn't have been in why that wouldn't have been a good move. I guess if you're if the goal is to bring as many people as possible into the flock then there were a lot of ways that I think could, could make it more convincing to people like me in a forest. Right. I, I like, that's I, the thing, yeah, man. As I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I'm having fun with this. Cause I genuinely want to know, like I, I could sit here for five hours and pick out every little inaccuracy and try to grill you over it. And like, it'd be, it'd make it would make yeah. a better clip for sure. But like, I want to know like actually how you're justifying these things, because like, to me, it, it seems like, you know, we're having to find these workarounds all the time. And like, I was going to ask you next about the firmament. I wanted to know about that. We don't have to, if you know, it's yeah. we'll just waste time. But like, yeah. that's, that's kind of where I'm what's at. The, I want to know the like, firmament? Uh, that, uh, maybe I can take it and, in, like, and in, study it off offline or something. In Genesis one, it's in chapter six through or verses six through eight, eight about it most, but like you can look up people about supposedly like an actual earth that like it, it's, it says, let there be a firmament between the midst of the waters and it divided the waters from the waters, and God made the firmament, which divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven in the big day, day and blah blah blah. Um, and so, like, I flat earthers use to explain actual physical. Disappear. I've heard uh, people who are flood believe say that this is was the water held above the firmament in the sky. That's where this water came down. Uh, came down. Uh, you know, cross all these, um, like that. It's, it's be a solid object. So, so like, so really quick to interrupt your force. You're you're cutting out a lot. So, um, double double it. check your internet. I don't know, like an internet thing. But but I know what you're where you're going with this. So I'll, I'll pick up in the meantime, right? So the the idea of the firmament, right? Like I don't know if you know this, Wes. I mean, you probably do if you've read Genesis. But but Force is, is exactly right. So there's like a Hebrew cosmology that was understood by the people at the time, um, and it was like pretty typical for you know uh, the the ancient Near East uh, cosmology, where it's like okay, so you've got you've got the ancient waters, which are like these primordial cosmic waters that you also find in in various sort of mythologies of that location, Babylon and Assyrians and stuff like that. Um, and then God separates the waters of the of the um, the oceans from the waters of the heavens, right? And then it's in between those two waters that the firmament is placed. And as Four said, it's like this big dome. And the the word for it, uh, for the consistency of the firmament itself, like the Hebrew word for it, is rakia, which is also used to describe things like metal, right, and glass. So it's considered to be like a hard, actual, real substance, at least in its original context. So the idea is that. If the Bible is completely accurate, why are we talking about this firmament and the firmament is set upon the pillars of the earth and Sheol is down below. And so you've got like this Hebrew cosmology that's kind of circulating around this flat earth and the waters of the sky and the waters of the deep and a big glass dome over where everybody lives. Now, like what what I've heard to kind of play devil's advocate for against forest here is right. Like what I've heard before is that that too is a way of like relating to humans, that, that that's God being like, oh, I'll talk to you on a level that you can understand. But like, again, I would push back on that sort of against US and say, okay, well, you know, if we're appealing to humans on a level they can understand using like ancient Near East cosmology, like, why wouldn't we just elucidate them to the reality of things? Like, why, why would we not just say, hey, like, you know, you hear so often that that the ancient Israelites were unique because of their monolatry, because of their monotheism, right? So why not also be unique in God coming down and being like, hey, also, by the way, uh, the firmament isn't a thing. And actually the heavens are endless as far as we can tell. And the earth is round. And that would have been something that people could have understood even at that time without needing a bunch of additional information that that would have been, I think, quite compelling to people 2,000 years later. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I will, um, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll study it out. I have always read that as being, you know, the local understanding. So if you're, st but, but I, I don't right, want to, exactly, right. like, 
I, I, I don't like apologists. I don't like people who just like, you know, excuse after excuse after excuse. I, I'd rather study it out and see what, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't want to do that to you and like, and like try to fake some type of answer. I don't, I don't know why it would say that. And I wish it would say something yeah. like, Hey, let me tell you something about the universe that no one here knows. Um, let me I can tell you exactly how old it is and tell you all these things. Um, I don't well, personally yeah. believe that the Bible was written that way. I don't, I, I believe that it was written by some curses, which means that they, like only the people that were there that were, ex- where they were talking about what they knew about God. And it wasn't like God dictating something to them. Um, but that's that, that not all Christians believe that. And I, I called and talked to Matt, yeah. um, a few weeks ago and he called me a bad Christian for believing that. <laughs> so so I, I think that, I think that I, I'll, I'll not try to put that on y'all or as an, as an explanation, I'll just study it out and try to try to see, you know, I, I appreciate it. That's, well, that's, uh, that's helpful. Well, I, I appreciate that from you, man. I mean, that's, that's all you can do is try to figure more, more about it, you know, and different people are going to come to different conclusions. Like for me, I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, the reason isn't because God's trying to relate to, to people here. The reason is because this is the classic, humanity this is classic cultural anthropology right like people live around each other they have similar understandings of the world uh we see this constantly when you look at different cultural clusters through space and time and it's like the the hebrews had just gotten out of babylonian captivity right so their whole thing was like it's cool that you think that your that your god did this but actually our god did this but it's still like the same root mythology if you will right like that's that's my understanding of it um Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, re- regardless, if, if you study up on it and you, you can, you suss it out, let us know. <laughs> Call us back. Let us know. Yeah, most definitely. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. thanks. Have a day, man. Thanks so much for calling us. Very good talking to you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. See you, Wes. Later. Force, Bye. how is your internet? It's supposedly fine. Like, I, I yeah. showed us. A- and like it's was this saying now your signal is still choppy i don't know yeah. like i'll refresh i'll be right back i'll refresh okay again okay forced is out he's leaving me again in the trenches dealing with 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 you guys the lot of you is alone you? is that good Do is that open is that, that better yes no that seems better to okay me. sick you haven't you haven't, okay. we'll just hope. you haven't done a choppy yet <laughs> we'll we'll hope that that works. Uh, yeah, a friggin' I I showed a speed test on the the screen, and someone yeah. was like, "Did he just dox himself?" You see yeah, that I, I live around that Tulsa. I said, oh my god! I don't think right. anything on. They're coming after yeah, you. Who knows? I'm pretty sure my address is at least old addresses are out there. Who knows? Was hmm? oops, it shit again. Damn you! Just keep refreshing periodically until it quits. Yeah, keep doing it over and over. I assume that this is Jimmy's fault um, because the one that runs and there, everything that could possibly go wrong is his fault. No, I'm on Wi-Fi, Jimmy, because I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, the good people over at the Atheist Community of Tulsa uh, or oh, the <laughs> Atheist Community of Austin um, bought me a very nice uh, hardline. And it is exactly one foot too short. Uh, and so, like, wow. trying to work with that, it's like 50 fucking feet out to my uh, the living room out there. So, like, wow. who knows? Who knows? Um, okay, so I'll, I guess, reset again. Uh, Erica, you well, got, you want to start on the next call while I'm gone? I mean, you're, you're doing great right now is the thing, right? Like, <clears throat> it it comes and goes. Like you seem fine right now too. But Jimmy is saying reset everything. He's he's being he's saying it would be better to try and have a good rest 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 of the uh-huh. show. Jimmy, why don't you just come in? <laughs> I feel like I'm reading a Ouija board. <laughs> leave leave me with the collar forest it's fine i can handle this on my own i've got this this is this is my uh this is my trial by fire to show that i could if necessary host this show by myself so leave me with it go reset your stuff and and pick a call that i can ramble on though pick something that i can talk about 
All right, I'm going to leave you with, uh, because we prioritized the as callers, we've got James, uh, who was the guy who called in earlier and that we, we weren't able to do the call. I uh, want to talk about the difference between soul and a spirit and has a case for reference. So I'm going to leave you with this person, and then I'm going to come in guns blazing in like 10 minutes or like five minutes after I've got all this shit fixed uh, and start asking a bunch of questions that you've already asked. It's going to be great. Dude, do not bail for 10 minutes, man. Don't leave me for 10 minutes. <laughs> we'll see okay. what happens. I'm on the line Hello. and I'm, I'm right. going away. Hello. Hello. Hello, goodbye. Hi. Sorry, James. You're going to you be can't... stuck with me, Erica. What is your question? Oh, hi, Erica. I just w I just been working with um, uh, some parapsychologists on uh, a yeah. few new terms that uh, we've come up with. Um, there's a very famous case. Um, the na lady's name is Doris Bither. Uh, you, you spell her name last name B I T H E R. Um, it's it's a very fascinating case, and I I believe it all has to do with what came out of her uh, human consciousness, and if it gets out of control, uh, she not she not only thought she was repeatedly plagued by three poltergeists that raped her on several occasions. I All right, I'm jumping in. I'm hey, not, hey, I, James, 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 this is Jimmy. Are you calling to promote something and tell stories? Are you calling a show that's about... Oh, no, a, hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you calling to bring... This is Skep Talk. You bring yes. beliefs here and they get challenged. The yes. way you started your call, it sounded like you were here to introduce and promote parapsychology, right? No, I said I've been studying with some people and we've come up with some new terms to believe what this lady was going through. So are you calling to share a story that a lady was going through and tell you what, tell us what your conclusions were, or are you calling to share your beliefs and have them challenged is what I'm asking. A uh, little bit of both, I guess. Okay. So, uh, so get rid of point a and let's yes. just stick with point B. If it still okay. has overlap, that's fine. If you okay. have a, I believe in this paranormal thing or this, whatever, this isn't yeah. a monologue show. It's not an open mic or anything like that. It's, it's just a, this is Skeptalk. We put skeptics on okay. as hosts. You call in with your beliefs. We challenge them. Okay. So Do Doris Bider, um, is a very famous case where she, she, she was witnessed actually by several doctoral researchers from the university of California where they saw Doris attacked by invisible forces that punched and slapped her, threw her against the wall as if phantom hands were grabbing her. So they come up with this term called psychoautokinesis, which is based on the phenomenon where humans, humans who suffer from a uh, specific physical form respect what we would call possession, uh, physically injure themselves as a result of their own mental powers. Um, are you familiar so with the you, Sally House? The Sally House? Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 I know the yeah. Sally House. So, so your idea is basically like, how how can we have an explanation for these these poltergeist activities where people are being uh, physically interacted with, you know, from beyond this mortal coil, if you will, uh, by like ghosts yeah. and and spirits and demons and things like that? Like, is there an explanation for that? Is your question? Yeah, I I believe that uh, she caused it through her own mental state. And we come up with a term with that, which is called psychoautokinesis, which is based on a phenomenon where humans who suffer from, I guess, a specific physical form respectfully. Uh, respectfully you're pretty much ignoring the notes I gave you, and you're, right. and you're really here to monologue, but we need to start oh, getting no, into the so, woods no, of it. No, no. Well, I have to just so, state what, like, you know, I'm studying. Yeah, and now, but now I you're repeating. You're, now you're repeating it, right? Most poltergeist activity can be explained as psychotelekinesis when people move things uh, with their own mind without even knowing it. Okay, so, so let's okay, start there. Easy, let's start there. Why don't you and Erica explore yeah. that you believe in psychotelekinesis? Is that accurate? You believe that people move things with their mind? Yeah, uh, yeah. kinesis is when people actually I, move we're things. Fine. We're fine. We're fine. Yes, okay, great. Psychotelekinesis great, now we're on, now we're on, the, now we're on, the, now we're on the belief. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it there and Nobody we're going to actually prove this in a controlled situation. Nobody has. Oh my God. Okay. So go talk about that with Erica. Talk about that belief. 
uh, talk okay. about the proof you think that exists that people can move things with their minds. There you go. Oh, we've so, actually proved we've got, we ha actually had 12 people sitting around in a table. Allow Erica to ask her questions. And, and, uh, we had people, 12 that's not, people that's sitting around in the Jesus table. Christ, James, we, James, we James, same, James, 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 yes. allow Erica to ask her questions. Cause every oh, time I'm, she's trying I'm to talk sorry. to you, you talk over. I'm sorry. So, I didn't James, hear you. I, I apologize. No, no, about it's, that. It's, it's all good. So, so my understanding is like, you know, you're, you're proposing that we've had this, this experimental support for kinesis and things of that nature, anything like psychokinesis, telekinesis, whatever. Um, my yeah. question for that would be like, all right, this is, this is something, you know, we're in the modern era. Everybody's got phones. We record everything, especially in science, especially in controlled experiments, right? Because we want to get yeah. as much documentation of something as possible. So like my first question would be for like, oh, there's experimental evidence for psychokinesis would be, where is it? Oh, we have it. It's about to be released in the documentary. Um, okay. Which, which what documentary? I to do, what we did, if I can might be allowed to say so, is that we got 12 people No, you can't together. actually. You need to just answer Erica's questions because this is the problem. Okay. You, keep, sorry, you have a narrative that you really want to tell. You have a story you want to tell. This is not your platform. Okay. So Erica just asked a question and you just ignored the question. You um, heard her. Oh, I, I, no, stop, I'm James. Sorry, I know you heard her because you stopped and then started saying the thing you wanted to say anyway. Uh, so okay. right. I'll listen. You need I'll to, listen. you need to understand that this is not the place for you to monologue and to tell the stories. You said a documentary. Okay. She said, yeah. what documentary only answer that question and then go silent. Okay. So she can ask her follow-up question. Good. Oh, okay. Great. I'm good. So which, okay. which documentary it, when, when is it coming out? What is it called? Uh, it's going to be called the power of the mind. Okay. And it's supposed to come out when? Uh, it will probably be showcasing uh, either in the film festival here in Northern Ontario or down in the Toronto Film Festival, which they call TIFF. So my challenge for that, thank you. I'm glad you're back, Forrest. I'm glad you're back because we're, we're, um, we're talking psychokinesis here. So my question for that oh, would well. be like, all right, so it's, it's taken all of these years, right, since, since the dawn of, of it actually being capable of recording experiments and methodology and things like that. And um, people have tried to get this stuff on camera in both in an amateur setting and in an experimental setting because, you know, back around the World War II era, we were trying a lot of different weird stuff. Their occultism was actually something that was taken weirdly seriously by science. And so people were, were testing a lot of stuff. But it's only now that we've managed to actually catch it on camera. That, that would be the argument that you're making here and that people are capable of moving things with their mind um like in a group it, setting it, it, and it, and why is it being created at a film festival rather than like written up and, and published on in, in you know some kind of neurology journal would be another question of mine because that's, yeah, I that's literally huge just got here i literally started. just got here but the first thing that i heard was that you said that your evidence was a documentary that has not even been released yet did you produce this documentary oh yes along with another person uh, who are parapsychologists? Documentary, and that's what you're citing as the evidence for the reason you. Forrest, you're breaking out still. It, it your, your your signal is yeah, terrible. Well, hang on, um, the, James. I'm, by the case I'm that hang on a wired second, James. in now. James, hang on. A I second. restarted my computer. I restarted my modem, and I got a hard wire. Like, What's it, your latency it's showing? Be an issue. I don't when you know speed test, means. check me that. Uh, do another. Uh, do another speed test, and just tell me what oh. your ping results are. So in the meantime, um, actually, I'll let you guys do this. I'll let you. I'm, I'm not trying to interfere. No, no, no. You, you're good, I'll Erica. Go ahead. Keep going with James. If worst case yeah, scenario, yeah, yeah. it might become the Erica show tonight. I don't want to go on camera, oh, but I'll go God. brush my hair just in case I got to host Erica. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So, James, what I was going to say is that it's like um, to, to that point, right? Like from the perspective of someone who's, who's whatever in academia and, and has to read a lot of papers and things like that, like the implications of what you're saying would be huge. Um, I'm simultaneously surprised that this kind of experiment hasn't been uh, shown to be successful previously, because no doubt this has actually been tried, right? There are, again, large implications for that, that 
would have been tested, but gosh, in the 40s, when people were actually investigating a lot of this kinetic stuff. Um, but moreover, I'm, I'm surprised that the, the source that you're presenting is an unreleased documentary, because like, to me, you're basically saying, hey, take this on, take my word for it, this is going to prove it. Oh, no, and from no, the perspective actually, of, there, there is actually proof from uh, Dr. Barry Taff. He was there in the early 70s and took photos of when these events took place, and there were orbs of light and streaks of light forming over Doris, which is uh, one of the best uh, cases I've ever seen. And so I don't you'll, know you'll how forgive me for this, James. You forgive that. me for this, I hope. But like, there are a lot of cases like that. There are a lot of situations where you've got like a, a weird piece of media or you know a, an, a, an unexplained, as it were, video um, where yeah. the 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 idea that it is presenting what the person says it's presenting isn't just far flung because of the the topic itself, but it's also because people have been trying to support these things, whether it's UFOs or Bigfoot or ghosts, for mm -hmm. over a century now. And the idea that of all of these different cases, only one of them has actually managed to present something real and true and tangible, I find that mm -hmm. very unlikely and i find it and I, I hate to say this i find it a bit suspicious right so like i in in the field of anthropology there's actually like believe it or not there's a guy who believes in bigfoot his name is jeff meldrum i believe he's out at idaho state maybe um but he's he's mm -hmm. like a biological anthropologist he's like a legit dude he, he believes in bigfoot i have his book on my shelf and i actually debated him quote unquote we had a discussion on it here on mm -hmm. online and you know mm -hmm. to me I find him to be otherwise like a super reasonable guy. He does some good science, whatever. But I also accept the fallibility of, of humans in our understanding. And I also accept the fact that humans, a lot of the time, um, in an effort to prove something that they feel in their heart and in their mind is true, are, are willing to go to some suspicious lengths. Um, so I, I accept that you feel that there is like video evidence for this. Um, I'm skeptical of it, being here on Skept Talk, primarily because if poltergeists are a legitimate thing and this parapsychology is a legitimate thing and, and people are capable of moving things with their mind in any capacity, um, why don't we see more of it? Why has it oh, not? Actually, um, there are itself? several, several um, cases that have been caught on camera for telekinesis. That's that's so, the only thing that I have to go by. But can I explain my our experiment and what we did? I'm Just fine to with get that. Through a little bit of it. I'm so fine. What, what we did, what we did was we got twelve people into a room and we all told them a scary story, right? And that okay. if we play when we place this cross in the middle. And if you ask this ghost to move this cross, it will. So they all focused on this cross, and the cross fell over. So we we re we measured uh, EMF spikes from all the people sitting around at the table, which tell us tell us that they were emitting some sort of mental ability. And so from, from a methodological perspective here, James, because like I feel like I feel like I have the gist of the experiment. From a methodological perspective, I see a couple of issues right off the bat. First, where is mm -hmm. the where is the methodological, experimental, empirical, whatever support for the idea that um that you can take these these you, you said it's like EMP signals, right? Is that what you said? Uh EMF, electromagnetic EMF. field. Electromagnetic yeah. field. So you're taking these. What what is the what is the support for the idea that these readings are actually associated with some kind of like gravitational anomaly? Because that's what it would have to be, right? To do this kind of telekinesis or par, you know, parapsychology kinesis, whatever, it's going to have to be a violation of what we understand and how we understand gravity to work. Right? Like it's going to have to be a violation of that. And you I need understand. to show that, this, that these EMSs are actually are actually tied 
two gravitational anomalies that you're proposing exist. Now, if you mm -hmm. really actually wanted to support something like this, I don't know why you also used a cross. Why Why would you use something that's flimsy and, and not very sturdy in the first place? Why not put like a like a dumbbell on there and say, okay, tell the well, scary actually, story. The if the dumbbell was actually on what's what we on a paper box and had. We thought if we put a cross on there, people would be more. Uh, open to something uh like in the world of spirituality or whatever and it would create more of a i don't know stronger signal from the people but what happened during the experiment was that it did fall over so we called that psychotelekinesis where people so are knowing move something. So let's and get some details else. here. So it's it's a cross sitting on a on a paper box, right? So you have a paper box with a cross yeah. sitting on top of it. Is the cross yeah. standing upright? What's it made of? Oh, it was just made out of like uh, popsicle sticks. Okay, so so to me, instantly from from a perspective of like you want this to be ambiguous, right? From your perspective, you're trying to show support for your hypothesis that parapsychokinesis is a thing why would you use a flimsy material on a on a on a paper stand that can actually be influenced by something as simple as a draft right why not use something like okay well, if it's me i want to design an experiment hold on just a second james I'll, I'll be quick about this if i want to design okay. an experiment to show beyond the shadow of a doubt that people can move things with their minds and and violate the laws of, of physics as we know them what I'm going to do Actually, is I'm going to talk several cases out there. That Stop were, were interrupting James. Jesus yes, Christ. Okay. So what, so what I would take Monty. is I would get like an iron. You can keep it across too. Because if the, if the point is to elicit some kind of spiritual connection to whatever, draw out this energy or whatever it is that you're, that you're um, trying to elicit in people, well, just make it super mm -hmm. heavy. Make it difficult to knock over. If the parapsychokinesis is legit, the material shouldn't matter, right? It should be no, capable of overcoming whatever it is. So why not an well, iron I'm cross? Just to, I'm just trying to explain what we did and what happened. And right, also, so, so I'm hearing um, you, James. I, I hear what you're saying happened. And like, to me, and I, I don't mean this in like a malicious way, right? But I'm already suspicious because this isn't a... This isn't a rock solid experiment, right? This experiment doesn't actually, um, it, it doesn't have equifinality. You're not capable of actually ruling out alternative explanations to the best of your ability, right? What if it is a draft? Yeah. You've got 10 people in the room. A popsicle stick cross on top of a paper box is, it, is going to be susceptible to things like the airflow in the room. Why not use something more solid, right? That's, that's well, my question. Because, Make it foolproof. We had we had this set up in the room where there's no draft sitting there for two days, according to the scientific method that we had set up, and nothing had moved. But when we sat there with the cameras rolling with these 12 people, and we told them the scary story, right, that this ghost will move that it, this particular cross if you ask it to, what happened was, when we we placed uh, the EMF detectors in front of each person, when the but when the box fell over, the EMF spike EMF detectors spiked, which picked up an electromagnetic field coming from each individual. So, and then the so, second, I just want to do what the second part of the experiment was. Was we were recording now, after Eric, voice. you know, you do one point at a time, real quick for us. Let's see what your audio is like. Okay, well, the, hang on, uh, hang on. What did I just say? We're, we're testing, Jesus. we're testing, we're seeing if Forrest is back. When I said Forrest, let's see how your audio is like. That wasn't James, keep going. Uh, it was for just listen to what we say, not not what you're looking for. Forrest, when you talk, we hear literally nothing. It's here, muted. Okay, you are unmuted, but the audio is yeah. garbage. That sucks because I have like several questions from everything I've been. Hearing. Oh, I do too, bud. <laughs> I'm 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 sitting here <laughs> just champing at the bit and also a touch annoyed. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna 
I don't even know at this point, man. It's well, it's not right. James. I, wait a second, please. We're trying to fix okay. the we're just trying to fix the okay. issue, my guy. Uh, J- Forest. Uh, fuck. I don't the. It's not sustainable for conversation. It's literally that bad. Like earlier when I was saying no one knows what you're saying, I literally meant no one knows what you're saying. It's pretty choppy. Uh, do you want to co- do you want to go off? I'll fill in until and call your ISP. See if your ISP has some answers for you. Just let them know your internet went completely out. Now it's come back and it's choppy as all hell. Um, even though the speed tests aren't reading funny, you could also go and just see like if a uh, if your download is also inconsistent. Go try and watch like a YouTube video on Max uh, settings or or something in 4K or something and see if that if it's also chopping up your download because your speed's not the issue. It's the consistency of your speed. Um, can I can I call you and be patched through? Uh, I know what you tried to ask. Yes, I, you could call. Yeah, you could call in and be patched into the conversation if if you like. But uh, uh, then I'd say let's finish the theist call with you. Then while Erica uh, does maybe some atheist calls, let's have you call your ISP, and then we'll pull the theist back up if it all works. Uh, we're gonna we're just, miss out on his facial expressions that's the worst part no, no, we can keep his face on did you mute your mic okay. do you need your mic forest uh no he's gonna call him from his phone and i think this is okay. you All right. uh forest did, did it sound like we just picked up you don't hear i, I don't pick- hear forest does your, does your, uh, is there a two in the middle of your phone number? I'm trying to figure out if this is you. Okay. So why don't we hear you when you call in either? That's odd. Dude. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know, He's buddy. Psychokinetically disrupting it. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> let me pull you, pull you out and in again here. Let me, uh, oh, he's calling back. We'll do that. We want to get Forrest on with you because Forrest has has some questions okay. as yeah. well as continuing Erica's questions. Yeah, my my questions are pretty much just, um, you know, I'm trying to per- perform a little inquiry here, right? I'm just curious. And I, I don't Thank think you so much for by- Okay, we hear you. Okay, sweet. I'm going to put my headphone away. All right. How, how bad's the lag? Is it working out? Uh, the, well, so dude. now you just need to have your mic a little bit further from your mouth. Cause you are, uh, dude, you sound clipping. like you're speaking through a tin can. Yeah. It's a pretty bad. Okay. I'm muting my computer and is this there? Are we good with this setup here? Is this where this needs to be? It's still clipping, but we'll deal with it. Dear God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Y'all have fun. I'll mute problem. myself. Okay. Yeah, Forrest, what do you think about all this? You 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 give me your perspective. I was trying to figure out what, what was going on, but um yeah, you, you give us your thoughts. Okay, so the, the, the biggest issue that I'm having is, is is I was trying to like keep up with like what you were saying here, uh, uh uh James. And one thing that I heard you say is that this isn't like just crazy experiments that you and your partners did. You actually have real scientists on your side. And you cited Dr. Barry Taff. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and this we, is specifically we, focusing on psychokinesis, right? We're talking about being able to move things with your mind or with your spirit or something like this. Psychotelekinesis is when somebody moves something unknowingly. Unknowingly. That's okay, radical. That's that's fine. Um, that's what we quick question. Since okay. since this is the kind of crowd that you're rocking with here, and since this is you know what we're talking about. Um, do you also believe in aliens visiting us and getting people pregnant? What? No, well, that's what Dr. Barry Taft believes. Cause I just Googled oh, this dude well, and here I've got Barry Taft who holds a doctorate in psycho, uh, psychophysiology with a minor in biomedical engineering is a world round renowned parapsychologist. Okay. Um, and it goes on to talk about his books and everything. He wrote a book called Aliens Above, Ghosts Below. Um, okay. And here he is in an interview I found as well, where he's explaining alien abductions, um, paranormal manifestations, uh, alien pregnancies, uh, yeah. all sorts. Of, so I'm just curious to know if, like, if this guy's right about your, your idea about, like, moving shit with your mind unknowingly, 
but wrong about all this other stuff, or if you also believe that aliens have visited us and fucked us, or like what's going on? Like where where's the line for you? That's completely different. I just wanted to make. Uh, I agree. I'm just curious to know why you think this guy is a credible source in this area and not another. We, we came across this story in his photographs. That's why we 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 started with that. So so somebody who believes in UFOs. You don't yeah. trust whatever evidence they have for that, but because they have a blurry photograph, you do trust that people can move things with their minds. No, we just we just uh, tried to replicate the experiment. We we were managed to do it three times. The experiment, um, which, as I was hearing Erica say, is moving a flimsy wooden cross on a piece of paper. Well, it's set up like a like a square, so it could not be moved. The reason why we put do you know who uh, do you know who Yuri Geller is? No. Yuri Geller is a really fa- or was a very famous uh, magician, a mentalist who believe who claims to have supernatural powers. Um, and one of the powers that he had was to like bend metal spoons and forks and things with his mind. And he sold a lot of books, a lot of self help books on the power of belief and that you could do these things too if you could just you know believe in yourself and you could have these amazing powers until a man by the name of James Randi uh, went on The Tonight Show with him and yeah. uh, said, I brought these spoons from home and I made sure nobody from your team touched these spoons. Can you please bend them? And Yuri Geller uh, threw a fit and said that he's being pressured and challenged and that this isn't fair and all these things. And yeah, very quickly his book that. sales went down. So I'm just curious, like, here you have this situation with a, a flimsy wooden cross on a piece of paper that you set no, up in a way that you believe couldn't change anything. Doesn't that sound an awful lot like the same people who are able to turn pages in a book with their mind, but not when that book is surrounded by thin scraps of paper and styrofoam that could also be blown with their breath, or they're able to blow out a candle with their brain, but also it, that can't happen when the candle is encased in a, a, something that doesn't allow for airflow. Doesn't this sound like something that you could have easily done in a truly understandable, replicable way, but you deliberately chose not to? Well, see, I, don't, I, I never followed any of that stuff because I never believed in this. I'm just talking about our experiment. So I, can I say I, too, James, well, from my perspective, point. right, it doesn't have to be malicious. It doesn't have to be intentional. So you, and if I'm understanding this correctly, right, so you have a room. I'm imagining it's not a huge drafty room. It's a relatively small room with 12 people in it. 12 people walk in, sit down around this no, table, and are told the story. Studio which was all closed off. We had no breeze. There was nothing going through. We managed to- No, no, that's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm talking about, James. So you, you have 12 people in this room that is not of a huge size, right? It's not a huge room. It was big enough that if you blew on it, you could not blow over this box. So all I'm trying to say is that we replicated this experiment three times. And I just want to know about, I want to tell you about the second experiment we did I, before you move on to another experiment, I still have questions about this one, James. What was your control? I do as well. That's what I was did. That was exactly what I was just going to ask. I, I'm I'm glad that was where we we're going. Yeah. What was your control, James? We had uh, at least ten feet in front of each person in front of this box. That's not what a control no, is. No, no. Did, did you place the? Did you place the plastic? Rolling. Place the and that's not a control. Cross in the room alone. Was that it there was alone and did you see if it fell over? Uh, another thing that we had rolling was tape recording. James, Answer do you Erica's know what a control question, is? James. Erica asked you a question and you just ignored it again. I James, when you when you No, as a control, did you place the popsicle stick cross in the room and record it alone? Yes, we did. And did it fall over? Okay. No. Not I'm eager to see this got, documentary. Not until we got the people there did it happen. And we replicated so, this three times with three sets of different, uh, of 12 people. That's so you I'm had three, you had three, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly, James, before we move forward. Right. So you have a room with the, with the popsicle stick cross in it. You record for some set of time the popsicle stick cross alone in the room with nobody in it. And then for that same length of time, you bring 12 people in and tell them a scary story and have them see if they move it with their mind. 
Is that correct? And then you did he that three times, three trials? Story, and then said, this ghost will move that will move that cross over if you ask it to. And so it fell over. And so we concluded, as we watched all the EMF detectors go off in front of the people, which, which tells us that there was some sort of electromagnetic field being generated by these people, then the, the cross fell over. That's all I want to say. And then part two of, of the uh, experiment was recording, uh, tape recorded voices. Now we got six different recordings come back from us of people say, saying the names of uh, this particular ghost, that story that we made up and no one was saying anything at the time. And then when we played the tapes back, we got voices on them, which tells me that this electronic voice phenomenon comes from the mind. No one said anything. So that's I, that was the other part of the experiment. I still have questions about the popsicle cross, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm well, still stuck on the popsicle cross you, experiment. You, you couldn't you couldn't blow it over. You couldn't nothing. We had cameras rolling on it. I mean, were were the people? No what was the room? completely isolated from every single person was there any like what were, were they connected by air in any way at all anything were they in the room with the popsicle cross or were they seeing it on a television screen no, like what was going on they were in the room there was no okay. way so they, they were heating up the it. air in the room which causes they, convection currents which could weigh on a tiny popsicle cross right no it we had we had a perfectly balanced. It was more. It was more like a square. It could not fall. Could over. you tell me what a local hidden variable is, James? No, tell me what it is. It's shit that happens around you that's like next to imperceptible that you don't even notice that yeah. influences experiments sure. that you need to account for. So, like, so that's one of them. Ford, <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I ask, like, James? I. I. I'm wondering. Why is this in the form of a documentary? Like, let's let's say for a minute, like let's set everything to the side. To let's say you're one hundred percent correct. Yeah. Okay, let's say for a second that you're a hundred percent correct, and everything you say here is true, and you've accounted for all the variables, and and this truly is, um, you know, uh, like a, a kinetic event from the minds of these twelve people. Why is this happening in a documentary? Like the implications of this would be massive. Why? Why didn't you what we're publish to this do in journals? Just prove and, and prove the power of the mind, and disprove what these people are doing. What they call electronic voice phenomenon, and we believe that. But that doesn't answer my question, mean. James. That, oh, that doesn't okay. answer my question. James, I'm repeat. No, 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 James. What was Erica's question? I thought she just repeated the whole thing over. That no. There was a box there. Every, okay. every, uh, us, myself, and what is it? What do we got? 1,400 other people, 1,200 other people all heard her ask, why a documentary instead of publishing it in a journal for peer review? Well, first of all, I have everything written down, and I we don't want to give away what we have captured freely first. First, we want to have have it all on, on film <laughs> and make and the money. Then it's going to be published and make money. So you want to make, make you want to make money off of it first. Sorry, Eric. This is Erica's line of questioning. We'll give it back to Erica. I, but never, no, my I mean, cackles I, went up. We never no, I mean, like, like money. James, to be to be to be quite frank about this, right? Like in academia, you want to publish something, and we're talking about mundane shit here. You gotta pay to submit it for publication, and then it gets no, peer reviewed, no, and then no, if it passes no, peer review, it gets published. James, free. shut the you fuck up! James, free. shut up! Shut the fuck up! What did so, Eric? So did I'm you asking, hear Erica finish? I didn't. Jesus Christ! Let her finish. Fuck, man. So, 
so my question is though, like, what? Because I think all three of us and everybody watching, or at least a lot of the people watching, got the same vibe here. You don't want to, you don't want to give away the milk for free, right? Like, you've got this uh, potentially explosive, you know, groundbreaking thing where it's like people can actually move things with their mind. That that's the impl- again, the implications of that are huge. But instead of publishing it in a in a peer reviewed journal, right, or like submitting it to people to critique. It's coming out in a documentary. And like, my question to you was, why? If you are that confident in, in your results, and it sounds like you're super confident in them. I mean, you, you've you said to me and Forrest, every one of our objections, you said, I've counted for that, I've accounted for that, I've accounted for that. And like, I don't know if that's true or not. I'll take it at your word. Sure, if you counted for all of those things, great. But I wanna see it, I wanna see it past the peer review of the people who actually study this stuff, the people who have actually been trying to prove exactly what you're saying for decades. Like, why weren't they able to do it, but you were? And then moreover, why is it coming out in a documentary and not in the peer reviewed literature? Because what I will say, and as a as a something to compare it to, is this, right? I don't believe in Bigfoot. But the people who published the whatever Patterson Gimlin film of the big, big guy in the Bigfoot costume walking across the the dry riverbed, they submitted that to actual peer review to to see if it could pass muster. Now, I personally think that's because they themselves were fooled by whatever it was that was going on out there, right? I I think that they were fooled by this by this hoax as much as anybody else, right? But they submitted it to be to be at the mercy, if you will, of the scientific community. Why haven't you done this? We're about to. Okay, where are you submitting you know it? We are about to. Oh, but I, I where? Where are you submitting it? Here, that's all. I, I, didn't, I didn't catch that, James. What journal are you submitting it to? Uh, we're probably, first of all, you ever heard of rhombus? Rhombus? Yes. No, they're, a media company in, they're a media company in Toronto. Okay. Media company is not a scientific not a journal. journal. Let's, do, let's no, try this again. Yeah. Erica is asking you which scientific yeah. journal. So let's, so, yeah. so Finding. your next, your next, uh, your next response is going to be the scientific journal I will be submitting to is go. We're just going to do it through a film and then see what people think. Okay. Yeah, that's just like all. scam artists. Good. Right. Right. That's See, that's the thing, James, is that what you're doing is you're not actually checking to see if what you found out was legitimate. You're not checking to see if you made any mistakes. You're just putting it out there for everybody to see, to fool as many people as possible, make whatever money you can, get as much attention as you can. And then if people say it's bad later, fuck them. It doesn't matter, right? You've already gotten some attention on the internet. That's all that it is. If you were serious about this and you actually wanted to know if something was true, you would call in actual experts to fact check you. You wouldn't just say, I made this thing. Everybody look at it. You would actually give a shit and like ask people who know what they're talking about. Well, we have we have several other people involved in this investigation who did. Do they also believe in alien pregnancies? Todd and Harry and Frank, they're all up for it. No. James, we were James. What we were trying to do was prove the power of the mind. Yeah, you're a joke, just so okay, nobody. Okay, okay. You, I, you I, gotta, I gotta, I gotta do my last like, point, which is what the difference. Like, here's the thing, though, James. Like, I don't even necessarily no. think. I don't even necessarily think that you as an individual are trying to scam people. You might be, but like, I don't necessarily think that that's the case, but everybody on your team, everybody, if they are truly as interested in truth and in, in the empiricism that, that encompasses the scientific method, as you've said multiple times, you followed here. If everybody is that enthusiastic about it, all of you should be putting this to the forefront. This should be on the cover of, of, of Nature or one of the journals that specifically studies psychology or, or you know, the, the, the medical fields, right? Like, I don't understand. Help me understand why we're going with the documentary. Oh my James. God, is it just that? Can you not stand women's voices? Is that what it is, James? Is that is oh, that no. your problem with waiting for because because you 
I do not you yeah good you're finally interrupting me too the num- amount of times you interrupt her versus Forrest or I it is comical on top of being I'm like sorry. you know she's I very apologize. optimistic with you that you're just an incidental charlatan as opposed to a malicious charlatan uh because you're definitely involved in a, I mean I'm not going to speak for her. you're definitely involved in a culture of charlatanry where you're coming and you're using terms like scientific method and proof. And then when you get the mildest pressure from these two on, on actually seeing if you can meet that threshold, you reveal, you don't even really know what that threat, those thresholds are, or what those words mean. And I'm going to put an end to the call before you go. Can I now tell the difference between the soul and spirit? Because can I, I just no, no, you can't, you can't say shit because you're, you're a joke. And you need to re-examine everything you do, you are doing. I don't care whether it's malicious or if it's the result of your uh, of the people you are around who are conditioning you. I don't give Mormons a pass for the same fucking thing. Go and re-examine your life choices. And instead of trying to not give it away for free, go and have peer review done and then call back. We'll apologize when you survive peer review. Does anybody want anything before I drop this full? I got nothing left. Mr. Valkai, we can't hear you. Question. Oh, shit. Now you can. Um, there you go. There you go, Mr. Valkai. Science explained why the heart starts beating on the 21st day. Uh huh. Can you? And, it, and what about when the moon is in the second house? Forrest, do you have anything left? Uh, no, not really. Goodbye, James. Bye. You're a joke. That's. Well, that's not fair. Uh huh. It isn't fair. How the is it show not fair? isn't fair. James, hold on. Before you drop oh, this I already, guy, James, I, I, I we've been entertaining dropped. you. Already. He's already gone. You already dropped him? Damn. Yeah. Just at the end of that, saying that that's not fair. We had this dude on the show for 40 minutes yeah. while I battled with tech issues to listen to him. And while Erica battled with his sexist interruptions just to talk to him, like we went through so much to give this guy as much platform as possible to say whatever he wanted. But because I'm not going to sit here and answer your fucking embryology questions at the end of that, that's not fair. Come on, dude. We gave you so much yeah. of our time and energy for free. He was there to promote his documentary. None of the, I, Okay, yeah, actually, though, yeah. I did find something disturbing. I, I think, no, I, I think that I think you're right, Jimmy, though. Like, I think that that has to be a documentary thing. Like, dude, I can't stress this enough. The Bigfoot people do better than that. <laughs> the bigfoot people do they submit their stuff to people who actually study this shit they submitted their dna that they collected from the himalayas of the yeti they submitted that to actual edna um laboratories and those laboratories were like hey there's no mysterious hominid lurking in the mountains but we did find the dna of two extinct bears or two members of uh, an extinct bear species so that's pretty cool it's like you have to try hard to do worse than the cryptozoology folks but this was, and yet here we are. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, now I'm being now I'm channeling James, and I almost interrupted you. Uh, this is no, no, the point ahead. about the no, no, no. Don't leave yet for us, because I have one thing to show you before you go. Uh, does it only? Oh, I'm staying right here. Well, this is the rest of the show now. Oh, you're doing this. The rest of the show. It sounds like shit. <laughs> uh, but it's it's fairly wait, synchronized. Wait, does That's it sound the crazy like shit? thing. Does it sound? Does this better? Is for this, this, is this yes. good? For this very second, it is. Yeah. Mute your phone. Don't hey. hang up. Mute it. Mute the phone. Don't hang up. No, I, I've got my phone muted. Yes. Yeah. Well, Whatever except we hear an echo still. Right? We're hearing an echo. You hear an echo now. Yeah. Probably turn the volume down on your phone. It's probably actually picking it up, coming out of the earpiece. Uh. Yeah. Much Is better. Is that any better? Uh. Uh. Yes. Two things. Uh. Yeah. What, was my, what was the first thing I was? Oh, that was my point about incidental charlatans. They are the people who go. It's the people who, when you when you're a hammer, you think everything's a nail. But then you start going and telling everybody's every everyone that everything's a nail. And when you're wrong, you re- you you do not allow people to examine the ways in which you're wrong, and you prepare a bunch of you know basically bullshit apologetics to defend it. Now that said, I was able to locate still photography evidence of a person moving something with their mind, and this is uh, going to be pretty shocking for everybody. Please prepare yourself if you aren't in the right this headspace. This is going to be a shit post. This yeah. is uh, uh, a human. Uh, he did not just throw it up there under the frame. I know that that's what you're going to say. That I, that's not, I didn't do this. I didn't do shit. I didn't rig shit. Okay. That's a reference. I, I think you should leave. Anyway, uh, so this is pretty scary stuff. 
Uh, and that is, um, you know, there's some, when he said there was fo- still photography, photo evidence of uh. things being moved with the mind. And I loved the end. Well, this isn't fair. The fuck did you, when did we say this was a fair show? If you call and you behave okay. honestly and you act in good faith, you will get that response. But you called to promote your shit because as you said in your own words, we don't want to give it away for free. And, and like to, to, to end with, as four said, right, to end with the biochemistry question, God, I wish he would have just started with that. Because like, you, right. you guys know me, right? Like I'm trying to give good faith here. I'm trying to find out if he's using the scientific method. He's saying this stuff, agreeing with what we're saying, even though he clearly didn't understand a lot of the different terminology that Forrest and I were, he didn't even know what a control was, right? But like, you know, it's fine whatever. And then he ends with that. Like, bro, he could have finished with being like, I believe in ghosts because look at the trees, right? Like it, it, it's an mm-hmm. on par argument. What starts the human heart beating, right? It's just a look at the trees argument. This thing is, is complex and therefore there must be some kind of supernatural explanation for it. And it's like, I, we could have saved ourselves a lot of time if you would have started with that. Cause then we would have known where he was it's, coming from. And instead of right. following him down the good faith rabbit hole. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the first part of that call because where I came in, it was insane. So I can only imagine Bro. where it started. You know what I mean? No, Bro. it started. It started at that level, dude. It like, was, it, yeah. It, it, you it's, had to be like, bring it down. Shut up a couple times. Like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. let her fucking talk. Jesus. That was so frustrating because you pointed it out. I was, a, I, I'm glad you did. Like every time I spoke, I was able to finish a sentence. And every time you spoke, you were able to finish a sentence. And then Erica would start and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, Come yeah. on, dude. And not even like, uh, and, he, and he would just start talking about something else. It was, she, she literally yeah. says, she literally says, let me explain uh, Erica's point for everybody here. Cause as a woman, she's un- incapable of doing this. She literally said, <laughs> yeah, my female brain is too small. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously. The uterus is up in there. <laughs> yeah. It's taking up all that space. Uh, uh, I just love the spot where she goes, what scientific journal are you publishing it in? And he started talking about something that could not be more unrelated. And then when pushed yeah. on it, when I thought I was answering the question, which is why I asked, what question did she ask? Yeah. Fucking Jesus. And anyway, goes, can you, that was you my favorite part. I thought she was just repeating the same, the same thing she said before. It's like, how could you possibly think that? Yeah. How could if, you it, Unless he just think straight that? up wasn't listening. That's, oh my God. So I want to bring yeah, Roxanne right. back on whenever we talk about this next time. I want to get her in. The, I want to have just yeah. like all female scientists just tear somebody. Oh, I've thought about, I've, I've been mentioning this. If we could figure out a way that it wouldn't have the exact same problem as women's sports, I kind of want to make a, a version of the line that is just that no men ever hosting, maybe producing. They can, they can serve the women, but, right. uh, uh, or, or at least a show like that. But, the problem is, much like yeah. how Transatlantic yeah. is uh, our least watched but best show, it would also be our best show that would be least watched. And we do have to pay for stuff. <laughs> like, this is an expensive channel to run. You guys have no fucking idea. Just fucking God. But it's okay. A man will still be running the channel, everyone. Don't yeah, worry. Don't you, It'll still function. Don't you worry God. about that. <laughs> don't you worry about that. And, and clearly oh. one who just... Secretes masculinity. Everybody goes. You know who I think of as the example of manness? Jimmy Snow. Uh, you've got like. In, in all fairness. <sighs> in I'm all fairness, you're more manly than me because you at least do woodworking, whereas Dude. I just read books and. <laughs> and yet, and yet, when we stand next to each other, I'm just in awe of your arms. He's got y'all. I, I don't know if it's picking up here. This dude's arms are like. I don't want to sound. I don't want to make it weird. I'm a muscly man. He um, he is lean. Yes. He is a lean man, and and I I think I told you I was like, yo, just so you know, you should feature these more. Didn't I say something to those effect? <laughs> like that effect? Like like I, unfortunately, fandom does come with a level of shallowness. So uh, uh, success comes with a level of appealing to fan shallowness, and uh, this would work. Uh, you have like oh three God. atheists that have have been waiting more than two hours, and one that's close. Can you try to speed round those four before you hit the next theist? Yeah, I was Do thinking it. the same thing actually. Because we, yeah, we've got people here been here for a while. Okay, so we're gonna Your signal just, is better. Uh, we're by gonna, the way, so I'm gonna step away. Hey, that's but that's pretty good. Speed uh, round. If it gets bad, I've still got I've got the same call going on right here. By the way, if you're interested, everybody 
Call that number. Call into the line if you believe in creationism. Call into the line. Um, Dude, yeah, please. I've got that sitting oh there. So God, please. please let a creationist one, call in. Please. Oh my God. One, call in. You guys talk one so question much about shit evolution. and then you don't show up. Please. Please call we are, in. Erica, and we I'm, may have somebody. I'm glad you're joining the line crew. Uh, by the way, I, we, we're, we're working it out, but I guess we'll just go ahead and sort of soft announce here. Erica is joining as an official host. Not as a guest, it seems like. That'll probably be happening. But Erica, I'm glad you're joining. And if you decide you want to do debates, we'll try to find you creationists to debate on air. Listen, I, I yeah, tight. I want it on the record that like I'm oh, yeah. I'm willing to debate a creationist on just about any platform. These days I, I don't go on well, I don't even get the offers to go on modern day debate. I feel like I've debated every YouTube friendly creationist out there just about, but um I also am not like super keen on going on MTV yeah. these days. James is a kind person, but he does platform like a shitload of Nazis on there. And oh, I'm there's not, like, more, issues. there's yeah. more issues with that channel than that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah. yeah. So, so we'll have a I good debate channel. To go, I got offered to go on a modern day debates. I'm not fucking doing that shit. Absolutely not. Am I going to give my time and energy to make them money? And I recently got uh, invited onto the uh, P Peter B Bohos Bohoskin, I think his name. I can't remember his name exactly. Um, it's but, like uh, Bogosian uh, or some shit like that. Bogosian, I, I think so. I just recently learned about him, so forgive me. I'm not. I, I don't remember his name. I, I I would I would pronounce it properly if I knew it. But like, um, I was recently invited into his podcast as well. Uh, after I made a video uh, with somebody criticizing Richard Dawkins on his podcast, um, yeah. and I was like, oh, that actually might be interesting. Let's look look at that. And I looked at his channel, and all I had to do was read the about section on the channel, and it was like, well, I'm here to fight the the left in, in infiltration of media and journalism and education. All of our colleges and universities are just teaching people how to be woke liberals, and uh, and it's talking about like the D. DEI classes, diversity, equity, inclusion is a, a serious existential threat to America and shit. I'm like, all right, never mind. I'm not doing I'm not gonna it would yeah. take me so long to even like get to where we can have a discussion. I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna take the time to do that. Well, yeah. Well uh, here's, here's the thing. Like I it used to be there was a time period where I, I was perfectly willing to to chat at great length with absolutely anybody. And as mm -hmm. I think I've spoken with you about this before, Forrest, but like it took me about a year of having multiple very long conversations run into the ground once I realized they were like a pre-supper or they had just decided yeah. that they have their opinion set and there is absolutely no changing it or that they just weren't arguing in good faith for whatever reason. And then it was like, oh, okay, cool. So you wasted my time, right? That's, like that, that's not that cool. is exactly I don't like that. Uh, right, yeah. that's exactly I, where I'm at right now. Is I had to learn that lesson so many times because I, yeah. when I started this, I was like, cackle. I can convince anybody, and it's the like, signal. no, no. The, sign the signal's flirting what? with being bad again. It's not bad yet, but it was flirting with it a couple times there. Uh, I, I was just like, I no, was so frustrated about the other it because mic. I wanted to stick with the other mic until we tell you it's too bad. Not for fuck's sake, yeah, uh, Erica, I think you will like here. the changes we're making because we're also not doing. I, I, you know, I don't want to commit that we never will, but. The ideas we have for these debate shows are not the standard formats. They are uh, adjusted to account for irresponsible platforming, uh, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and how yeah. if we were to platform somebody, because at the end of the day, who can you responsibly platform that believes the earth is 6,000 years old? Uh, I, I mean, I mean here's, here's, here's the long and short of it, right? Is that it's like, I've yet to meet a young earth creationist who doesn't also platform some pretty wonky yeah. ideas and you can read into that however you will right i mean it, it really depends on like where you want to draw the line like i i can absolutely cop to that and like different lines are going to be drawn for different people right and for yeah. for me like i'll just i'll just be upfront. like for me my line is i don't want to go on a, a like regularly hosting like Nick Fuentes channel. <laughs> like that's yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. gonna yeah. be a no for me personally. Other people do what you want, whatever, but like for me, I'm good. <laughs> like, Bro, where so, I have controls, I'll have Nick Fuentes on as long as I got as long as I got production controls. That dude can come face to face with me anytime he wants. It's not, you know, <laughs> it might be that every time he opens his mouth instead of actually hearing his words, you hear just like ostriches having sex or something. I don't know what yeah. I would do, but I'd do something to make it work. But no, uh, there's definitely yeah. a lot of the, the shows we have are more geared toward showing because debate shows, uh, regular debate shows are just entertainment. The best debater is the most entertaining one. 
this sort of adjusts for that, that there's still always going to be elements of charisma winning out, but it is more of the, does your position uh, survive any skeptical smell test? Uh, and so mm -hmm. one of them is hyper that it's very much a, here is what you are. Here is, you know, you where the other person actually gets the larger amount of time. The opponent gets the larger amount of time. Uh, and then basically gets interrogated by the what's called the end boss. And then the other one is more about the consequences of belief, where the questions are actually coming from the audience and it's more town hall style. Uh, and mm. so you get to look and go like, do I want to represent myself? Do I want to be with a group that represents themselves uh, like that? Anyway, uh, we're up to like two and a half hours on a caller. So speed round, speed round yeah, on okay. the atheist. We'll, and we'll then go through these. Onto the theist call. Yeah. And we'll go back to theist callers. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start here with the person who's been waiting the absolute longest. It is Rogue Show, pronouns he, him, in South Carolina. Uh, wants to talk about Adam and Eve very quickly. Uh, Rogue Show, we're speed rounding these calls. What is your question about the biology of Adam and Eve? Um. Okay. Uh, so um, sorry to keep you waiting so long to be like hurry. <laughs> but, like, it's good. It's good. Um. So I. So I have good reason to believe that Adam and Eve do not exist, but I want to make a stronger case through by bi a biological perspective. Uh, why they don't exist, and who who else? Else but the uh, secret ancestor to Bill Nye the Science Guy and uh. the, the Canadian Superman's enemy to answer this question. Yeah, you want to go okay. first on this, or you want me to for us? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll start with just saying that like we do have something called you know uh, Y chromosomal Adam and mitochondrial Eve, um, which are sort of theoretical people from which we all derive our mitochondria and our Y chromosomes. You can only get your Y chromosome from your father or sperm bearing person. Mm -hmm. um, you can only get your mitochondria from your mother or egg bearing person. Um, and for that reason, because we all have such great similarities with our Y chromosomes and our mitochondria, we can trace these things back to people who lived a long time ago and say, okay, so this is the one common answer from which we have. And we call these things Adam and Eve because it's a mythological poetic reference that people can understand. Problem with that is a lot of people take that mm -hmm. as literal and they think, oh, here's actually two real people that lived at the same time and did this thing. Number one, these people would have lived about 100,000 years apart. So like, no, they're, they're, this is not the only. Yeah. And also it's important to remember that populations evolve, not individuals. So well, you can do that with evolution at a certain point in evolutionary history, every single living thing is either the ancestor of all humans or none of them. That's the thing that's going on. You can't do that with mm -hmm. already human populations. That doesn't really track. Um, and so, like that's that's kind of where that falls in. That's that's all I would say about it. Is that like the 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 idea of Adam and Eve goes against the like the actual way that populations flow. And just because we have genes, specific genes that we can trace back to individuals, that doesn't mean that those individuals are our only ancestor at that time mm -hmm. we have other genes you know what i mean yeah. uh, that's what i would say what about you erica yeah i mean there's there's that's a great that's a great explanation uh, what i would add to that is that it's like okay if we're looking at like the quintessential sort of classic uh young earth creationist argument which is that adam, Lee, adam and eve live in the garden of eden which is located in mesopotamia we know for a fact beyond mm -hmm. the shadow of a doubt that the the last common ancestor of all humans did not live in the middle east they lived in what is effectively within a hundred square miles of modern day Addis Ababa and ethiopia and the way that we know this is because of how mm -hmm. populations nest one we know it because of how linkage disequilibrium works between uh, populations within and outside of africa as well as heterozygosity levels um and just in general mm -hmm. biodiversity right like we everybody outside of Africa has less biodiversity than just the African continent, right? Like it's, it's insane how this, and it's like, it's like, it's like pretty stark. Um, this is because all of the external to Africa populations were established via founder effect. So you see a reduction in genetic diversity as, as these out of Africa movements occur. So in and of itself, there is no way to make a genetic argument that humanity began in the Middle East. Now, if you want to say that for whatever reason, the Middle East was actually Africa, <laughs> Okay, sure, uh, you can make that case, but then you have to deal with the other hominins, right? Where do they fit in? 
are Neanderthals, are, are they the ancestral species? Well, no, they can't be because humans, modern Homo sapiens and archaic Homo sapiens are a sister group to Neanderthals. Well, what about further back in time? What if an Adam and Eve, what if Adam and Eve mm -hmm. are like Homo erectus, okay? Well, then you have to explain why you have things like yeah. Homo naledi or potentially Homo floresiensis, really, really basal looking hominins that have adapted to their local areas um, in ways that are rather non-intuitive, right? They have small brains. They've got very um, primitive apish, if you will, arms and shoulders, but modern yeah. hands, right? They have curved phalanges, clearly climbing. Like these are not what invoke you know, a, a, divin a divine touch, a divinity is, is sort of instilled into modern humans. Now I've heard what like your sort of, your more progressive Christians would argue, people like William Lane Craig, uh, Joshua Swamidas. Uh, Swamidas, for example, I, I have a great mm -hmm. deal of respect for him. I think he's a really cool guy and, and a very intelligent person. And he yeah. would argue that, that uh, that is exactly the case, that Adam and Eve are sort of this progenitor population um, only in the sense that they've been endowed with like a soul, right? Like th they're living amongst all of modern yeah. humanity, but for whatever reason, they've contributed sort of this soul to, to humans in a way that isn't necessarily genetic. And in that way, they're the mother and father of all of humanity. And I'll say what I said to Joshua, right? Which is like, okay, <laughs> that's a non-testable hypothesis. So we can't investigate that at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it is virtually indistinguishable from what regular old, you know, sort of naturalistic, if you will, evolution. Um, so if you want to say that, sure, but that's outside of the realm of science, right? Like that, that ceases to be something yeah. that we can investigate. So th that would be what I would say with regard to like your scientific arguments against the classic idea of Adam and Eve. Yep. Does yeah, that answer your question? I guess Rachel? there's also... Hmm? There's a uh, also what about the uh, there's also stuff to take into account like Australopithecines and all the other Austras. Oh yeah, there well are. I mean in, in that case yeah in that case you 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 cannot get around the fact that Australopithecus as a genus and also Paranthropus as a genus are like extremely closely related. Um, to, to genus Homo, and in the case of Australopithecus, is likely ancestral, at least some member of, of Australopithecus, unless you want to take a, a sort of different route there. But even then, it's like Kenyanthropus. It's some kind of basal hominin. Yeah. So you would have to incorporate in some way all of those guys into your idea of Adam and Eve. And if you're taking this sort of progressive Christian view, they're just like, again, it's like a soul thing. So humans can have evolved from these progenitor species, and then Adam and Eve are just like zapped with a soul or whatever. And again, like, okay, I can't argue against that, but it's also not as scientific, right? Um, if you're taking the younger mm -hmm. creationist or like the older creationist, like evolution bad and not allowed view, it is virtually impossible to account for the Australopiths, in my opinion. I mean, you basically have to argue that God created a type of animal that is virtually indistinguishable from early genus Homo, but is also not related at all. Like, it, and that's a hard sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's to the point well i don't think creationists understand that like it's to the point with with just what we see where like there's there's bioanthropologists out there that argue that homo habilis doesn't exist that it's actually yeah. either australopithecus afarensis or it's actually africanus uh, not afarensis africanus sorry uh, or that it's actually definitely homo erectus just in a different way or that it's actually rudolfensis or that rudolfensis is actually that that it's it's such a fuzzy area that there are people out there arguing that these things need to be reclassified or declassified and put into a totally different box or like just that it's mm -hmm. we have so many goddamn fossils with such a smooth gradient it's crazy and there's people acting so, like well, oh we have you know only a few fossils that fit in the back of a truck and that's it like no no i promise we have so, so many <laughs> um so bill kimball has a great article titled australopithecus hmm. australopithecus to homo the transition that wasn't um and yeah the reason why and this is from 2016 right so bill kimball recently passed away uh but before that he, he published this article and and it basically took into account all of the the fossil record at the later end of australopithecus and at the early end of genus homo so right around 2.83 million years ago is the fossils that cluster around that area and bill kimball argues like mm -hmm. listen 
he's not saying that it wasn't a transition because it didn't happen. He's literally arguing that the gradient is so smooth that you cannot empirically draw a line between where Australopithecus ends and early Homo begins. That's how smooth yeah. of a transition it is. Yeah. When you're looking at the cusps of the molars, the size of the incisors, the prognathism of the face, the brain case size, the efficiency in locomotion, the minutia of the phalanges, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you're looking at. You, you, really can't sell me personally and really not the paleoanthropological community either on the the idea that there's this this dichotomy here um and that's exactly what we would expect if evolution is at play right um so you know cool cool very cool stuff <laughs> but i've actually seen creationists cite that paper <laughs> without reading even the abstract they're like see even a paleoanthropologist says that homo didn't come from australopithecus and it's like no no you <laughs> You you grossly misread the situation, I, I my friend. <laughs> you got to actually read the thing. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna um, jump into the next caller because we got another somebody somebody else has been on for another two and a half hours. But I hope this answered your question, Rojo. I hope this helps. Uh yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank have, you so much. Have an uh, awesome day. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on to Rick who is in California, pronouns he, him, is an atheist who wants to say, uh, no, if it's reasonable to assume that their ancestors were dark-skinned when they are not. Rick, you're on the line. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, although I'm plagued with autopsychokinesis. Every time I think about having a cigar, a lit cigar appears in my mouth for no reason. We've, I don't get it. We've all been there, oh. bro. Oh, it's the worst. Oh. <laughs> so tough. Thank you Listen, for waiting for so long, seriously. Five minutes. Oh Jesus! It's this crazy. Thank you so much for, for waiting America, so long. Yes, I, uh, I believe that race is a social construct. Is that correct? It is. Yes. It is. Yeah. Good. Okay. Listen, did our ancestors have dark skin? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we know the anything very first about humans in the fossil? Black. I know the fossil record doesn't show us much about skin color, but genetically, yeah. can we detect that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you're you're going to yeah, you're going to see dark skin proliferate through basically most of the hominins that are living in equatorial regions, right? And the reason is just because they're living in an area with such harsh UV radiation that they need that kind of protection. That kind of protection is going to be selected for. Um Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. I, yeah, I know. It, because they Yeah, which sex. is exactly yeah, I mean, it's it's universal across the entire planet. You can pull up like a skin pigmentation map and like it, it's it's Already actually a it. great case against the biological reality of race, right? Because it's like the further you move north, the lighter your skin. Wow, that's so weird. What, what do you suppose that is? I'm sure it doesn't have anything to do with like uh, vitamin D and folate and, and risk of skin cancer. Um, it's, it's unambiguous. And I think the best case too, like we, we can talk about the advantageous nature of adapting your skin to a local area as a population, but moreover, and this is just the final word on the subject, right? Genetically speaking, the human genome project and also the thousand genomes project has unequivocally cemented the fact that humans are ridiculously low in our biodiversity. Like, we are so similar to one another. It is ridiculous to claim that there's some kind yeah. of like basis for for um, biological entities known like uh, matching what we would consider to be modern races is indefensible on the basis of genetics. Um, it, it is. It would be. It would fly in the face of the standards for um, what we consider to delineate species in smaller categories that we use for every other species alive. I mean, it would be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the. Yeah. Well, I actually I pulled it up while you were talking. Here is my ancestors. Here's the skin color map here. So you can see. Let me move this over to the middle of the screen. I guess there, there you it go. Is. Nice. Yes, there's a skin color map you can see for indigenous populations, uh, and here's a global UV distribution map. Notice how yep. even Not like the there, especially yeah. dark I'm, parts I'm here and here and here correlate. To the especially dark parts here and here and here see how perfect that gradient is and so like this is something that was done by i think her name was nina i think it was jablonski wasn't it jablonski i i don't remember off the top of my head uh the name it started with a j um uh she started measuring she took a, a little reader and like measured on the inside of people's arms here which is the less likely to be tanned by like 
the world around you and, and to experience UV. So it's like more of their natural skin color. And using those readings, plus a lot of genetics, plus a bunch of other stuff, she started really pushing this as far as I remember um, and showing that like, yeah, ancestrally speaking, the very first of our species would have had dark skin. And there's a reason for that. It's, 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 you know, to protect you against all sorts of crazy things. The original hypothesis was skin cancer, but skin cancer doesn't affect you until well after reproductive age usually. So that really wouldn't be the right selection pressure. But you know, it does UV light destroys the folate folic acid in your skin. Uh, and if you're pregnant and you don't have enough folate, then you're going to have baby with spina bifida. You're going to have spinal deformities. That baby's not walking. And that is a selection pressure. And then when Eric right. and my ancestors moved out of Africa, went way up north where there isn't a lot of direct sunlight and isn't a lot of vitamin D rich grains. Well, now we have the opposite problem because if you don't have enough UV light, you don't produce enough vitamin D. If you don't have enough vitamin D, yeah. you're not going to have strong bones. You're going to get rickets. And again, you're not running from predators and you're not chasing prey. So you're going to have a selection pressure there. So we got lighter skin so we could have stronger bones, whereas our ancestors had darker skin so they could have healthier babies and like every defining racial characteristic that you can think of has an evolutionary story like this and i was looking that up while erica was speaking but i'm pretty sure i caught her saying at the end there that the arbitrary categories that we use to classify races don't hold water with any other species ever um and what's most important, I don't know if she touched on this or not, forgive me if I'm repeating what you're saying, but like, I, is that they've changed significantly over the years. Italians used to not be white. Irish used to not be white. Jewish not to, used to, Jews used to not be white. Like we have all these different people that used to not be considered white. And what's interesting about that, this is slightly off topic, but because race is a social construct, it's relevant, is that the racial implications of what we do define in our racial categories, despite the fact that there is more variation within races than there is between them. What we yeah. define right. as these categories, especially what we define as whiteness, is very telling of the history of race. Because if you notice, whiteness is the only race that is defined by its purity, by its lack of other races, right? If I had a black father and a white mother, I wouldn't be considered white. I would be considered black even though you could consider me either way. Why wasn't Obama the first biracial president or yet another white president? Because he has some black in him and therefore he's just black. White is the only race yeah. that is defined by the lack of everything else, the exclusion of other races, because it's based on supremacy. And we made the concept of race up to justify why people who look like us are superior to other people. And the only way to hold up that white supremacist view is to find whiteness as a lack of anything else. So if you have a little bit of black in you, well, you're biracial now. You're not, you, you, you're, you're mostly black. You're just black, whatever. You're just Asian. You're just Mexican, whatever like that. We have this blood quantum bullshit going on. Whereas whiteness, you have to just be white. Um, it wouldn't be Skep Talk without a book. Check out race. <laughs> Are we so you know different? What? Second is one I have. Um, this is a little textbook by the American Anthropological Association that is a fucking easy, great little read for anybody to flip through. And they have a whole chapter here on how race was created and how it's actually oh, defined cool. and how evolution works. Um, uh, uh, living with race and racism and all sorts. Of, it's a fucking great little thing. And I, I, like, I'd love to skip through this every now and then and just find new cool things to learn about it. Because race is a, a deeply fascinating and seriously problematic issue. One of one of Thank the best for... arguments against racism being a biological entity is to look at the arguments that white supremacists make, because they're all non-genetic phrenology antiquated arguments that came from like the 1890s, right? None of yeah, them yeah. have a leg to stand on these days, which is why all their citations are are, you know, ancient nonsense from the days when we used calipers to measure you know the width of the <laughs> the width of the brow ridge to define what someone's mm -hmm. race was i mean it's 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 silly stuff um and the only reason that the idea of like race persists is because uh there are unfortunately people who wanted to um yep. it doesn't have a, a yeah. strong biological backing and except for when those Which people pick is, up like that's a bunch of bullshit anyway isn't it it, it absolutely is. And like oftentimes when you find somebody who tries to square the circle of, of race realism with biology, they try to lean on what's called the multi-regional hypothesis, which is that we, oh. we are damn sure, we are damn sure that humans evolved in Africa and spread out from there. That is what like every bit of evidence points to. However, Homo erectus 
way before that, over a million years before that, spread out all over the world and diversified quite a bit. And we're finding new evidence that like, for example, you know, there was Homo floresiensis down in, in the Isle of Flores in, in uh, was now Indonesia. Um, there was for a long time, we were like, okay, so this is Homo erectus that came down through Asia and mm -hmm. then settled here. And now there's new evidence that like, no, maybe actually they rafted across and they settled there and it was a different population and Homo erectus found them later. And like, we're learning all this cool stuff where all these different species all over the Eastern hemisphere diversified, um, mainly from Homo erectus. And the multi-regional hypothesis is this idea that modern Homo sapiens like met and like bred with these people from different regions. And that's where we get different races from now, or at least this is a bastardization of the multi-regional hypothesis. Um, that is told is like if if we you know if if uh if we we met with the neanderthals in europe and we bred with them and that's where white people came from and then we met with the denisovans in east asia and met, bred with them and that's where asians come from and it's like all it's doing is trying like hell to prop up this bullshit idea that races are actually this concrete thing and then what you do with a race realist like that he's talking about this shit is you show them cheddar man Cheddar Man is a famous fossil of a human being that lived in, in, in England. They, they got all the way over there, and he would have had black skin and spots. And you're like, what the fuck is that then? And then they spend 45 minutes trying to tell you why Cheddar Man doesn't exist, and it's hilarious. Um, well, but, well and, they can, and they can do that. They can do that all day long. But my brother, we have its genetics. Like we have Cheddar Man's <laughs> genetics to the degree that we were able to track down his ancient descendant, or his rather his modern descendant from an ancient hominin, right? Yep. Like we have the genetics. We know this guy had dark skin, right? Like you, we know he had dark skin and we know that he lived yeah. in what is now like modern day UK Europe area, right? And so it's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. what are they gonna do with that? Um, but that ruins their that ruins their um, their supremacy ideas, doesn't it? So they they have a great problem with that. And then it's then eventually you can fight this all the way into it's a big conspiracy. Yeah. And what makes you actually white is if you have Atlantean or alien DNA. That's what it always ends up falling into. And then you're yeah, like, that's, that's right. <laughs> dude, the amount of people from every racial group that are racist as fuck and say that aliens made them special and everybody else nope. different. Aliens made everybody yeah. different, it turns out, because everybody has an yeah. argument for it. It's fucking crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. They got around. Well, yeah, I have always, I've always, anybody I meet, they're my brother and sister. They're homo sapiens to me. And we have the same color yep. blood. It doesn't matter what color we are on the outside. You know, we're all the same. Aren't we? It's, it's crazy. Well, I mean, yeah. How... And that's the thing, man, is that what you're saying there shouldn't be a radical, crazy, difficult, nuanced idea. No, um, but like the, the fact of the matter is it's it's the dip caused by the invention of race as a tool to justify mainly slavery. Um, you know, when you look yeah. back over the anthropological record, uh, the, the cultural record going back, you know, thousands of years. This kind of concept never came yeah. up. People talked about ethnicity. People talked about what people looked like. People talk about differences in skin color and shit. But that was never like a categorization system until actually like 1700s America when we were like, hey, we need to make a reason for this to be allowed. Turns out you guys aren't really human. Oh, surprise. Um, <laughs> it's it's a bunch of shit. Yeah, right. But like, yeah, the, 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 the invention of race is a, a, a fascinating and terrifying thing that, that you can see the implications of today. Um, and it's absolutely insanely stupid. And unfortunately, there are way too many people that think it's a real thing. But uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, anyway, <laughs> we're going to jump on to that. We got another one waiting for an hour, uh, two, and a th two and a half hours. So we're going to move on there, Rick. But okay. thank you so much for calling in well, and talking to you, us, I'm seriously. A great, I'm a great fan of you, uh, Forrest. And uh, well, Eric, thank you. Erica, my, my namesake, I love you. I'm a subscriber on your channel. And keep up the good work. Thanks, Rick. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate bye -bye. you waiting for so long. We appreciate your kind words. Take care, man. Bye-bye. Super. -bye. Uh, okay, so like we said, we've got another theist caller, but we're trying to crank through the atheists as fast as we can to make sure that because they've been waiting for over two hours. Every atheist is waiting for over two hours. Um, so That's we've great. got next one um, is Halvard, probably saying that wrong, from Norway, uh, wants to talk about some arguments for the possibility of the existence of a god or a supernatural force. I'm probably saying your name wrong, but Halvard, you're on the line. How are you doing? Hello. I'm uh, doing good. Uh, 
you pronounce my name pretty much uh, as good as I've heard uh, some non natives hey. in Norway. Uh, good job, Boris. Yeah. How do you say it? You start. Uh, halva. Halva. Oh, okay. Well, I'm. Halva. I'm gonna keep saying. I'm gonna try that, but I'm gonna do it wrong still. Hal- halva. Halva. I'll try that. That's completely um, awesome. Okay. So you just uh, say it as you did the first time. That's perfect. Halvard. Okay, cool. Uh, um, so what is your, uh, what's your question? What do you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, uh, my topic is that uh, I, I'm kind of calling in because I've heard a lot of this show and there's almost no theists that have very good arguments. So I would basically like to try and set up uh, uh, an argument that uh, shows maybe the possibility of something at least supernatural not claiming it sure. to be any kind of evidence just yeah it, just i have argument. it here on the call screen that you are an atheist and you're just kind of playing devil's advocate you want to try something yeah basically cool sick right. yeah man let's so, hear it. i'll just set up with the premise that like we have electricity that has always been a mm-hmm. force even if when we couldn't affect it Mm-hmm. So the argument basically goes that there may be a force, but we simply do not have the uh, technology yet to detect it. Yeah. It's pretty much all so this, there is to it. Yeah. So this is something that like, I remember back when I, I used to be some sort of quasi half ass spiritual semi-religious type thing. And I, I, I never had like a, what you could call a religion, but I was raised pagan. And so I was raised to believe in magic and spells and, and spirits and all sorts of crazy things. Um, believed it real good for a long time. And I remember when the first uh, Thor movie came out, the, the Marvel movie with Thor with Chris Hemsworth. Um, and at one point uh, he says, like they're, they're, they're seeing Asgard or something like that. And they're like, this is magic. And uh, he says, what we call magic is what you call science. We just have more of it or something along the lines that like you just haven't discovered this magic yet. Um, and uh, I remember being so like vindicated by that. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what we're saying, man, is it's all just this great. And that was about the time that I started questioning that. And like, uh, as I've said on the show before, the second I started having same standards for my magical supernatural beliefs that I did for anything else they fell apart and the idea that like we haven't discovered something yet and that this thing that I believe in could be real we just haven't detected it yet that was something that propped me up for a minute until I realized that there's a big difference between a hypothetical and and like actually changing your mind for good evidence because like what I would say in my head is like well there's lots of times over history where we changed our entire worldview. We used to think that the universe was stagnant and eternal. And then we learned about the Big Bang and we learned about the expansion of the universe and we all changed our opinion on the entire universe. So what would happen if we discovered some new evidence for this supernatural stuff? We'd have to change again. The difference being one of those happened. And so we have a reason to change our minds. It would have been stupid for anybody back when we believed that the universe was stagnant. It would have been stupid for somebody to say, maybe actually there was this big bang and the universe expanded and we just haven't found evidence for it yet. Even though they would have been right, they wouldn't have been reasonable. Um, and so like having that that kind of background there, it it kind of shook my, it, that, that's what took that down for me a lot was I was thinking like, if if we discover something magical about the universe someday, I'll be the first one to be like, yeah, okay, that's a thing that happens if the evidence is right. But I can't sit here and change my mind early in assuming that maybe someday I'll have validation. That that just makes me, you know, a, 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 a sucker. That makes me somebody who's been fooled. Yeah, I'm totally there with you. So to, uh, to, to that point as you... as well, right? Like, let's, oh, sorry, sorry, Halvard. Oh, I was just going to say that, as you pointed out, I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate, and uh, I'm definitely following yeah. the evidence. And as of yet, I've not seen ev- any evidence of the uh, the supernatural. I so, appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like to me, right? So science is an exploration of you know the natural world around us, right? And so the second, like, let's say there is this force, and it's it's like radiation, like that's the example that that I typically think of is that it's like okay, radiation is this thing, 
It impacts all living organisms, but you can't see it. And when you're exposed to it, you don't necessarily feel it right away if it's in small enough doses, right? And yet it, it impacts us all the la all um, all the same. Excuse me. So okay, that's that's a cool idea, right? But radiation isn't supernatural, right? It's it's natural. The fact that we can investigate it yeah. means it is in fact natural. So if there were some unknown force like that, that is what would seem to us to be magic, right? If we could investigate it by empirical means, it would cease to be supernatural. It would be just this, this fascinating aspect of the natural world that we perhaps don't understand yet. Um, I think that's a, a critical distinction to make is that it, it would just be a, a wonderful part of the world around us that we're learning more about. Um, for it to be supernatural, it would have to defy any kind of natural explanation. And as far as I know, there's not anything that meets that that kind of standard just yet. Um, ho hopefully that kind of outlines my my thoughts on the subject. Yeah, that definitely uh, makes sense. Sick. Well, thanks so much for calling in. And thanks so much for waiting for so long, man. I really do appreciate this discussion because this is one that you're right. We don't get a lot of the theist callers on this show anymore because I guess we scared them off. Um, but like, <laughs> that is one that has, we've heard things like that before, but I appreciate you putting it out there so we can address it early. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Have an awesome day, dude. Thanks so much for calling in. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Continue having an awesome uh, stream. I'm expecting it to be like Most definitely, man. minimum five hours. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been going so far? Three? Three? Yeah, I guess we started at six, mm -hmm. so seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so yeah, we've got a little while longer to go. Uh, by the way, to mm -hmm. the person in the chat here who doesn't understand that there's a difference between race and skin color, um, I'm just going to, because this, this is the quote that was deleted by one of our mods, which I'm glad was, uh, race isn't real. This liberal hypnosis crap has gone way overdrive. Come on, let's operate in reality. Uh, I went ahead and just pulled that, again, just fucking college textbook off of the shelf behind me here. And just, I'm just going to read these quick points here for you. This is their, their summary, um, few points on why variation does not equal race. Uh, number one, evolution rather than race excludes, explains biological variation within humans. Number two, by the way, each of these has a full paragraph of description to it. I'm just so quick, quick skip my it. Um, number two, human variation is continuous. There's no clear place to designate where one race begins and where another ends. Um, Number three, human biological variation involves many traits that vary independently. Skin color, for example, is only correlated with a few other traits, such as hair color and eye color, leaving unpredictable and huge numbers of other traits, which vary between races. So you could have black skin and an Asian eye and a white nose and a this, that, and the other. Um, uh, number four, genetic variation within so-called races is much greater than the variation among them. We talked about that. Um, the uh, number five, there is no way to consistently classify human beings by race. We talked about that one, too. Um, and it goes on for another four paragraphs on just that particular case. Uh, yeah, this is just just not not a debatable topic for you. Uh, it's, it's really, really hard. I don't know if lines are still open, but if you want to call in and give it a shot, you have two people who study this for a living that would love to talk to you about it. You're fucking wrong. I just... Uh, <laughs> dude... Dude, I just, I, this, this is so exhausting to see, right? Like, it's all these people who come up and they're like, race is a real thing, science says so. And that's like, okay, here's, here's, you know, five or six genetics based arguments, right? That show mm -hmm. that you are, in fact, incorrect, brutally so. And then they say, yeah, but my common sense says otherwise. And it's like, at my friend, I, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> I'm sorry. My brother in Darwin, like, your common sense is not a publishable source. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like, it, that really sucks for you. But no, like, race is not a, a clockable biological entity. I, I, I know that's going to be a tough a tough pill to swallow for our race realists out there. But, like, um, it's, it is what it is. It's the same you know? thing. It's, it's the exactly, same thing when but... people try to tell me that sex and gender are the same thing. Because can't you just see? And it's like, bro, you can't defend that. I promise you, you cannot defend that. It's, it's a hard time. Um, we've no, got it, it, another it, one. Who's, mean, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I'm just agreeing. Like it's just, and and yet we still have this conversation so frequently. We so frequently have to discuss, like, okay, why isn't race a, a real thing in a biological sense? And it's like, 
you know, if, if we made common sense arguments, you'd walk outside and tell us the earth was flat because common sense says mm -hmm. that it doesn't, you can't see the curvature when you're standing on the surface. Like that's, that's just ridiculous. It's a vibes based argument. And it's quite frankly, cut. vibes based. Argument. <laughs> I love that. A vibes based argument. I'm using that for sure. Uh, we've got somebody <laughs> else who's been on for two and a half goddamn hours. We've got Cassie pronouns. They, and she calling him from California. Uh, as an atheist who is here out of spite and anger about climate change. How are you doing today, Cassie? You're on the line. Hello, Cassie, can you hear me? Cassie, S-O-N, we can't hear you. We can hear, you. We can hear us, I'm though. Dumb. you got to mute your stream. Hello. Can you hear me now? Um, I yes. muted up my headset because I didn't want... <laughs> like ho any horrible background noise to happen accidentally um i got gotcha. you i'm so excited to be talking to you guys i've been i've wanted to talk to both of you before and when you guys were talking at climate change way back at the beginning of the show i was like back when you I called like, in back when i called in and before my brain melted from the psychotelekinesis uh, that apparently that guy used on the entire audience that's what he did. Mm -hmm. He jiggled mm -hmm. our brains, and now we're here. He broke my um, fucking microphone. He, he messed up my internet connection. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're all weak to psychic damage out here, to maximum damage. Yeah. And I'm just like, could we just trick the conservatives and be like, hey, guys, here's a <laughs> shit ton of money, and mm -hmm. everybody will just, like, love you and, like, listen to what you say if you just do this stuff. I of have course, a way, actually. Tell it. I, what's uh, the way for you? How do you do it? So, so I don't know how to do it with money because I am very, I'm so anti-capitalist that I have a hard time even thinking in that space. But like, I can tell you how I would trick conservatives into solving climate change. If I was in power and I was a very evil person to do this, uh, this oh, is how I would do it. Tell me. Is number <laughs> one is we need to be investing in. in clean energy. We need to be doing that. We need to be moving away from fossil fuels, cleaning and getting clean energy. Um, and number two, we need to be tackling the issue of the damage that's been done to the atmosphere and like actually cleaning up uh, the ecosystem around us. And so here's what I'm going to do. Number one is we need clean energy. And the reason for it is that there we don't have enough oil here in America. And so what are we doing? We're buying oil from overseas, from Saudi Arabia. We're moving it down from Canada. We're moving it all around from all around the, from hostile foreign nations that don't understand our freedom. And so what we need to do is build our wind farms so that the real strong masculine American wind can power our American homes. And we need to be putting you know, up solar farms so that the beauty Beautiful sun signing on God's green in America can also power America. That's what we need is American energy for American energy freedom. Energy freedom, freedom from these other terrorist nations that want to charge us for their oil. We need American energy creating American jobs with American power to build American guns. And then the second thing that we need is also to, to be cleaning up the atmosphere. And for that, we need to remember that what the biggest contributor to carbon emissions is China, them commie bastards. And so if we're going to take care of America, then we got to make sure that there ain't no liberals over there in China polluting the atmosphere for us. We need to clean up the atmosphere because the Chinese are producing the carbon that's harming Americans and taking away American jobs. And so what we need is real American energy, real clean American fuel to take away from the Chinese influence on America's atmosphere. Did you know that each American consumes a credit card's worth of plastic every day and breathes in immense amounts of carbon emissions that are produced in China and in India? Not the Chinese and we can't have them. You know, that's how no. they're turning the kids no. gay. Is that that's what's that's happening what is that the, yeah. it's the communist yeah. propaganda being spread through yeah. carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere yeah. it's the methane and i'll tell you what else i'll tell you what 
It's right now, it's destroying the American coral reefs off the coast of the great state of Florida, America's withered scrotum that we all know and love. We need it to be protected for American biodiversity, which creates American oxygen here in America. That's how I would do it. I would make it natural, uh, yeah. nationalist and yeah. stupid. And then, then that would work. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. They that's, love- that's so valid. It's funny because my partner and I play that game where it's like, if we were evil and we were going to like do a scheme and like, what would the conservatives fall for? But we're mm-hmm. both leftist and hate capitalism and wouldn't do it. But we're like, it's so yeah. tempting. It's so tempting. Yeah, Dude, that's, I, that's I kind of right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things too, where it's like, I genuinely think a lot of it is is just like the force fed propaganda from news from right and far right news sources because like force I, you're probably in the same place as me right we're like we're both in southern conservative states and it's like i don't know a single person down here who doesn't hunt or fish and that's like their happy place right like they go out there yeah. into into the natural world sit crack open a bunch of beers probably catch or shoot nothing, hang out with their bros, you know, and then come back. And so it's like, they want those places to be clean. Why aren't we pushing this yeah. angle more where it's like, Dude, you love these natural places. They're epic, you know, save those natural places and put a bunch of big phallic windmills all across the, the countryside in, in Texas and call it a day. Like, I don't know. I mean, and nuclear, we need nuclear. I, I Maybe there are some people yeah. who don't love that out there, but I think it's a necessary stepping stone personally. So no, no, get I'm, some big American nuclear power plants out there. We invented the bomb and we can use it now to protect America's freedom from the liberal <laughs> Chinese communists yeah, like, who are producing the emissions like- with the fossil fuels. I don't believe in evolution. And I refuse to be told that some dinosaurs that turned into frogs that turned into us created the energy that we're producing now. That's what those West Coast commie professors in Caltech want you to believe. No, I know the sun and I know the wind and I know the geothermal and I know the nuclear. And that's what we're going to use to save the world. This is Forrest Limbaugh signing off. (laughs) Well, they I would just, love it. They would love it. Like they would love that. That would sell have to so rely easy. On anybody else for our energy. <laughs> that's no, that's that, my big is, thing. It doesn't. Uh, honestly, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like the the anti climate change position that that the right has is coming exclusively from the the, the fossil fuel lobbyists. That's the only place. Everything yeah. else they would love about like pre- preventing climate change. You could they could make an enemy of everybody who isn't American. <laughs> Everybody's polluting more than us. They could argue. I mean, they they could make all sorts of different ridiculous cases. But you know, whatever. Like for the time being, they're yeah. content with just um, yeah, well, like poisoning the waterways. Like a real <laughs> issue that like dates back to the '80s, where like Reagan gutted the yellow journalism laws that have been around since like syndicated newspapers when they were like, oh, you know, mass media is a thing. Maybe we shouldn't just be able to like say whatever about whoever. And, you know, maybe the news shouldn't be in entertainment stores. Maybe it should be true. Um, And then Ronald Reagan was like, absolutely not. (laughs) There there was a Asimov quote that was like why why is it that two like two opinions aren't necessarily 100 percent equal now are they right like i don't get to have an no. opinion on quantum physics like at the at the the academic level because i don't know shit about quantum physics right like it, the every climatologist who does work on this is like hey listen and then also every ecologist and then also every marine biologist and just everybody who is observing who steps outside is like hey man it's a little unseasonably warm here. Maybe we should do something about this. And then the GOP is like, no, 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 no. CO2 is good. And also <laughs> fossil fuel are good. And also windmills are too gay for us. We cannot have those in our nation. <laughs> like, and, and, and then also they call it a day. To... Like, it's... Sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. It's just like, but like also we have to deforest the Amazon. We just need all of that yeah, well, space for whatever we need to do with it. Like, it just well, it, makes me so upset because you, you this know, has been like, oh, sorry. We don't we don't need all that space because if we were to start investing in vertical farms, 
and building high rises and creating more urban areas, then America wouldn't only be the greatest country, we'd be the tallest country. We'd be up in the sky with our farms <laughs> growing. We'd be the tallest ones in the world. And we'd have all the plains protected for all the American deers to graze and roam. And we'd give reparations to black people and Native Americans because we're rich enough to afford it because we're America. And the workers would own the means of production because here in America, we say no to tyranny. And we don't call it socialism. We call it super capitalism because everybody's capitalist. That's my thought. Yeah, no, that's that's. I looked up valid. USA I like, anthem with gunshots, good. explosions, and eagle screeches. Is what well, I. Heard. And then it's like, and then it's like, my country tis of thee place. Uh, I I just am like, this has been like one of the longest standing problems that we've had so much warning about. Oh man, like, yeah. conservationist <laughs> efforts, and like that kills me as a person. Like as a kid, I didn't get it. I was like, they got the science. Why yeah. aren't they doing what, what's the crazy? Science? Do you know who found that science? Do you know who discovered climate change? Fucking fossil fuel companies. The fossil fuel yeah. industry yeah. scientists discovered this shit and the fossil fuel companies spent billions with a B of dollars covering it up. And then when it came out, they spent billions of dollars denying it. And then when it was undeniable, they have spent since spent billions of dollars blaming you for it and saying, why are yeah. you using plastic straws and not driving a hybrid while they do more damage in a day than any normal American does in their lifetime? Like it's, yeah, that's, that's not why just, it's fucking propaganda bullshit. American. It's like the top 11 ocean barges produce more of the like, carbon emissions than every car on the planet. Like it's, it's insane. Mm -hmm. The amount of damage that, that corporations do as compared to the average person. I mean, it, you, you think I God, it's so frustrating too. Cause like I saw something on um, Twitter, which I saw someone in chat said, it's okay to dead name Twitter. So I'm going to dead name Twitter. Um, they <laughs> had like, okay. they had like a, uh, they had a post that was the first time in, in publication sense that was like, hey, there might be a connection between burning coal and a warming atmosphere. It was from like 1911 or something like that. So like, you're correct, Passy. It's been over a century. We know the relationship. It is not a hard line to draw. And yet we're still having this debate. It's not a debate. I mean, no one in their yeah. right mind has a debate, which is why on Turning Point USA, Toilet Paper USA, they had a candidate who came on recently, one of the guys that they're pushing, who was like, I believe in climate change. He was like, climate change is good. And it was like, oh my God, it's yeah. we're just doing the death cult thing now. We're just doing the death cult thing. He was like, CO2 well, is like, good for the plants. It's what they crave. It's crazy. Well, it's AI did the same thing. That that's what will trigger the rapture is like, if yeah. we let it get so bad, we can't fix it that like jesus will happen well like, and that's, well, that's i don't know there's and two like, things there because it doesn't number, make any sense the 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 i've heard for erica's point i've heard people say that carbon dioxide is good for plants and they'll grow better i think marjorie taylor green said that dumb shit um without noticing that also what goes along with carbon emissions is temperature increases and plants have a harder time photosynthesizing uh, photosynthesizing in hot temperatures especially plants like trees and shit that you like because C4 plants are more prone to photorespiration. When you're in a really hot environment, you accidentally bind oxygen instead of carbon and you make fucking poison, which you then have to like go back and reproduce. Like it's, it's a problem. Yeah. The heating is the problem. Well, also, like carbon dioxide like, isn't the problem. The heating caused by it is the problem. Like, let's just say plants like don't have an issue with it. Sure. Like let's pretend biochemistry yeah. isn't real. You know what heat isn't good for? what CO2 isn't good for, it's keeping the planet cool. And what that re what that results in is a shit ton of ice melting and raising the level of the ocean, right? Your plants can love that shit all day long. It doesn't matter when, you know, all of Indonesia is underwater and those people don't have a place to go. I mean, it's, it's, right. it's ridiculous. Well, and like yeah. establishing the infrastructure, like you said, for rising sea levels is so important because uh, there's a creator I watch who's from New Zealand and was talking about all of the terrible flooding that was happening where she was from. And yep. it's like one of those things, like people talk about the economy, the economy, the economy. And I hate talking about money, but I'm like, what could boost the economy more 
than investing in these new enterprises and Mm -hmm. gaining more capital through jobs and stimulating the economy. But they don't care. They're just Jeff Bezos dragon smog types who like to sit on all of their money and like, like rub their hands together and like count it and be like, look how rich I am. And well, and it's, it's like, an F you bought mine you can't situation, eat that right? Money. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, these dinosaurs don't care, right? And I mean, like, they, they're they all counting on being dead before the impact of this becomes too severe. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that people will put up with, but not having a place to live, not having food to feed their children with, that you know, not, not yeah. having water to drink is something that makes people riot. Uh, and I, rightfully so. I mean, I think there's a reason for it now. I think there was a reason for it 50 years ago. This this is catastrophically irresponsible uh, of every government on the planet to not be placing greater priority on it. And I used to keep up with, with climate change news and numbers specifically, especially in my early college years. But like, honest to God, yeah. I, it, it, my mental health was in the pits. I mean, I, I couldn't keep yeah. it up. I couldn't keep oh, up with it. And so, I, you know, I, I'm yeah. very grateful for the people who do. I was the yeah. same Gassy, way. Gassy, we, we've got um, a... Also, oh, sorry. I know we need to wrap up. Oh, no, fin- I'm finish, super weird. Finish I, like, your point and then I got to move all on. Of yeah. your content, Erica. And I was like, there was a point where I was like, I love listening to you dunk on the young earth creationist, but my mental health keeps taking these hits from hearing these people <laughs> talk because they're so yep. stupid. <laughs> and that's how I just feel. And I feel like it's going to be this mask of the red death situation where it's just going to be the ultra wealthy eating each other when everybody else is gone and they didn't even notice. And I just hate it. But thank you guys so much for talking about this with me. And um, I love evil Rush Limbaugh Forest. You guys are both (laughs) fantastic. Um, I love the Jane and whatever his name is series that you do. No, John and Jane. Oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, I really appreciate you both. And thank you for taking the time for my call. It was worth the wait. Thank you so much. I appreciate you you staying on the hold for so long. Have an awesome day, Cassie. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Bye. Take care. All right. We've got exactly one call left. That was nuts improv. That was dope. (laughs) That was well, sweet. Thank you. you pulled up on your phone. Ooh, smooth, smooth. <laughs> if I had a way to play the sounds on the computer, I'm sure I do. I'm sure Jimmy will tell me later how I could have put that through OBS and made it better. But what yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I do want to say also, like, there was one thing that I, uh, she she mentioned, and I, I think you brought it up, and then she expounded on a little, talking about like the rapture and the end of the world and all that stuff. Like, yeah. that's one thing I get asked all the time, you know, like why we do shows like this, and and. Uh, I like to say, you know, that beliefs inform actions, you know, what you believe about the world around you dictates how you're going to then behave in that world. And if you believe like, you know, we, we talk a lot about like, if you believe that homosexuality is a sin, you're not going to treat gay people very well. If you believe that there is, you know, uh, God created a man and woman and only this, and you're not going to treat trans and non-binary people very well. If you, you know, have all these issues, but like in this case specifically, you're going to hurt a lot of people. Because if you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back to change to end the world as we know it, why the fuck would you take care of it? 44% of adults in America believe that the rapture is coming within their lifetime, within the next 50 years or so, that the whole world's going to end. And like, if you move into a house and the landlord tells you, hey, by the way, I'm going to replace the carpets next week, how hard are you going to worry about that carpet? How much, if you spill something, how much are you going to try to soak it up and get the stain out? You're not going to give a fuck. It's going to be gone next week. So if you live in this world and you believe the world's ending in 50 years, how are you going to worry about the coral reefs and the, and and the ice caps and all the, you're just, ah, fuck it. It'll be over soon. Like that's a problem. Well, and like, I'll, I'll take a sort of, a sort of different approach here, right? Like I don't even think, I think the, one of the bigger problems here is that if like, if you, if you're actually reading, take, let's, since we're talking about the Christian Bible, right? Like look at the Christian Bible. It's like, again, if there's a singular message in the beginning of Genesis, right? In like one through six or whatever, it's like, Hey, fill the earth and take care of it be a good steward. Right. This is a literal command that God gives the people. He's like, take yep. care of the earth, be a good steward of it, 
Don't let anything bad happen to it. I mean, it's not even a person interpret. This is supposed to be God's direct words. The fact that modern evangelicals and really a lot of modern Christians in general don't take that seriously. I'm not saying none do. There are some incredible folks out there who are who, who are Christian. And then I think I commend them for this, for fighting against the stream. Just speaks to the rot that, frankly, in my opinion, a lot of far right and, and late stage capitalistic um, ideologies have put even into spirituality. It manages to usurp spirituality, something that has been, you know, uh, close to to humans because we are tr- we like to try to explain the world around us since since our our <laughs> our ascension, whatever, three hundred thousand years ago. Which they, I'd say that it's a poor way of putting it because there are many ways to be a hominin, and obviously we're not the singular or best way to be a hominin. Um, but it's like. This isn't even coming from a spiritual place. This I this this desire for a rapture, it's coming from a selfish one. It's coming from a desire to 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 basically say, fuck you, got mine, exploit what you can while you can, put down the people who you don't like, and pretend that there is a divine reason to do so. Right? Right. That's despicable. Right. It, it, it's it's not coming from a place of of sincerity, in my opinion, not sincerity in the form of like, oh, they truly do believe that this is the will of, of their God. Right. Like, at least there's some some honor in, in thinking that you're you're doing something morally good. It's that's just being used as a justification. Right. To, to get what you want and, and put others down. And, and that's the worst part of it. And I, I, I tend to think that it does come from from some late stage capitalism, um, which you know, it's, it's the altar at which the, the GOP is kind of worshiping right now, which is sad and, and alarming, to say the least. I have a couple things to share. Uh, first of all, yeah. in the time that you were speed rounding the atheists, I made an entire tortellini, three cheese tortellini cabanera from scratch. Second of all, <laughs> and I'm not even <laughs> Second of all, uh, they have announced 10 new indictments for Donald Trump out of Georgia. And we are currently waiting wow. for them to be unsealed and read from the courtroom in Georgia. That's wild. Jeez, um, I also, man. Uh, based on what Erica was saying, uh, this is so. This is from the New York Post. I, did, I I I knew to look this up. This is the first article that I found about. It. This is from the New York Post, which is not a great news source. Um, I'm seeing if they have sources cited in here. Um, yes, this is an interview with NPR that they are sourcing and reposting about. So I'm going to go over there to make sure I get the actual shit because the New York Post fucking sucks. Um, Mm. This is the idea that Jesus is too liberal um, for modern day churchgoers. Russell Moore, the editor in chief of Christianity Today, explained in this interview, blah, 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 um, partisan tribalism within the U.S. affecting Christianity. And they're saying that Christianity is in crisis. Um, And basically what's happening is in these you know, hyper MAGA populations. So these people going out, you know, and, and, and going to these evangelical short, uh, churches, um, they're reading like what Jesus actually says in the Bible. And they're like, who's this socialist that you're, you're talking about? And they're like, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said to love your neighbor. Jesus said to feed the poor and the homeless and the hungry and, and, and take care of people. And to, Jesus said to give away your wealth. Jesus said that there shouldn't be money involved in this religion, that there shouldn't be Jesus. Like This is what Jesus is saying. And they're like, I don't give a shit. That's not the Jesus I believe in. I believe in the Jesus that wants guns and freedom. And it's like they, they're actually now criticizing the, re- the religion that they're in because it's not the new cult that they're in of, of, of you know, super hyper nationalist America. Um, so yeah, it's fucking nuts, dude. Um, look up Jesus was too liberal. And there's, there's a bunch of articles about it now. And like, it just, you can read the actual interview if you'd like, but like, this is just, it's crazy that these, these, you know, so many people are like, no, this Jesus guy is woke. Like, what fuck, a, man, what, a, what am I what, supposed to do with you? What a great uh, thing that you could easily segue to a call with a believer in Jesus. Who's been waiting for an hour and 46 minutes. I was thinking the exact same thing, Jimothy. Thank well, you so much. Uh, as the last call that we have on the show, we uh, we have one more theist call in today um, who's been waiting incredibly patiently for an hour and 45 minutes. We've got Jacqueline. Um, and really quick, Jacqueline, before I, I start off here, I just want to read what I have on the call screen here. It says that you believe in Jesus because he, he has made a difference in your life. Uh, your son is an atheist and was watching the show, and so you decided to call. He did not put you up to that. I say this simply because we do often get people who call in because like their kid or their their friend or whatever is like, call this show, call this 
want to make fun of them. So I want to put it out there so that the people know that you called of your own volition. Um, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. you are officially on the line. How are you today? I am doing great. Thank you so much, Forrest. Thank you, Erica. Um, what happened was Thank you for my waiting, son sir. was trying Did we lose you? No, no, no. I thought you were about to say something, so I stopped oh, speaking. Oh, I, I just, I just thanked you for waiting so long. I really appreciate you taking the time, especially since you're calling in to have a discussion about something that we don't believe in. I know, I know. <laughs> and the, the part about it is that my son showed me your show. Uh, I guess it was on five, sometime in May. And mm -hmm. I saw your number on the line and I said, well, let me call in. And my, my son kind of discouraged me from calling. He says, no, don't do it, mom. Don't do it. But I wanted to anyway. I think you all have great personalities. What I will <laughs> say first is that I'm probably not as schooled as you are as far as coming up with, um, sightings and so forth of different things. But I did want to say how Jesus has changed my life. Um, I heard you okay. mention earlier on the show that you grew up in a different type of household where you were taught about magic and so forth. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, it's pretty complex, but that's a, a roundabout sort of it. Yeah. I, I just want to, I'm going to jump in very quickly with this uh, real quick, Jacqueline, because you said you want to call to share how Jesus has changed your life. And so I just want to be clear that this isn't a bear your testimony show. Uh, it is a, you can share your beliefs and why you have them. This is a skepticism show. And so then they're going to ask you questions about those beliefs to see if your beliefs are justifiable and, and worthy basically of believing. So if you want to say Jesus changed my life is one of the evidences and maybe they want to ask you some questions about that, that would be fine. However, if you just are calling to say, hey, people, my life was changed by Jesus in this way, so you should become a Christian too, that's not something we would entertain tonight. Cool, Jacqueline? No, my apologies. I wasn't trying to do that. I Go ahead. Oh, no, no, we, we don't think you were. He was just being clear because this is your first time calling in that we're, we're, we're not interested in just hearing your testimony. We want to have a, a discussion about it and see if you have a good reason for believing what you believe. So we weren't accusing you of doing that. He was just trying to make it very clear because that's his job. I was responding to the phrasing of, I wanted to call to share how much Jesus has changed my life. And so I'm just clarifying what, what uh, this show is for, basically. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, you were asking me so about he, my upbringing. Was that what you were saying? Yes, because you mentioned, I heard earlier as I was waiting that you grew up uh, surrounded by magic and so forth. How did that affect yeah. your life as to now growing up and realizing that some of the things that you didn't believe, that you believed were not true? Oh, quite a bit. Um, so so just to, to give a brief summary, um, I, my, I lived in a split house. Uh, and so I was passed around between my mom, my dad, and my grandma, who all lived in different locations in the same city. And they just passed me around. Um, my mom was a pagan. She believed in, in magic and sorcery. Um, I still have all my books on witchcraft on how to draw this pentagram and burn these herbs and get good luck for the week or whatever else. You know what I mean? Um, I lived mostly with her. Um, and then I had my grandma who was like a half ass Buddhist kind of thing. Um, she just kind of, you know, was very chill about it. Uh, she, I think she was raised. Uh, she taught the Bible as literature for years. And so she taught me most of what I know about the Bible. Um, and then my dad was a Catholic. No idea how that happened. Um, but uh, he he taught me um, what I know mostly about actual Christian religion and, and like where Abrahamic theology and thought comes from, because he would talk to me about his idea of God quite a bit. Um, and so that's those are the the, uh, the the what I had. And also, I was very poor. I grew up in poverty. We, we lived off of government assistance and charity and things. And uh, poverty brings with it a lot of diversity. Um, and also I had a, a family that valued education. And so I was constantly surrounded by other religions. 
Um, we attended a he Hebrew temple. We attended the Hindu temple in town. We attended the Buddhist temple. We went to the mosque. We went to all these places to experience their culture and learn about what they believed in. And then also to share community because we were all poor. Um, and so like you could go there and kind of get to know everybody and have good food. Um, and that's, that's what, what, you know, so all of that shaped me tremendously into who I am today. It made me a, a more culturally aware person. Um, it made me a, a more socially conscious. Um, it, it taught me so much about the world. It made me who I am as far as deconstructing from that. Um, like I said, I, I came to the realization that I had a different standard of belief for that one thing, for my spirituality, than I did for anything else. I loved science. I loved learning about the universe. But I was, when it came to like this concept of God or of magic or of spirits or whatever, I would kind of hit this wall of like, well, technically, you know, E equals MC squared. So matter is energy and energy can't be destroyed. So really there's this thing called this this like transient magical thing that kind of holds the universe together. And if you think about it and squint your eyes real hard, you can kind of call that like a God and you can kind of call that like a soul. And you can, you know what I mean? And I had these kind of thoughts. And then eventually I realized that like, I wouldn't give that same leeway to anything. Um, and as soon as I started asking actual questions about what I believed, not just easy questions, actual questions about it, it fell apart. And um, that affected me in so far as it made me a better scientist. It made me a better thinker. Um, it made me a more, I think it made me a better person because it, it took away what I had, these presuppositions about how the world was supposed to be. And it allowed me to create my own understanding of, of what was around me based on the evidence around me. Um, <clears throat> and it also made me a lot more um, anti-theistic because I, I used to believe as Gandhi did that all religions were beautiful flowers in the same garden, that they all have sort of truth and some sort of value. And now I can see, excuse me, the cultural significance of them. But as I took away the permissions that I was giving to them. And I, I stopped making excuses for them. I started to see the harm that religions cause both to a person and to their community around them. And now I see religion as carcinogenic. I see it as something that deteriorates a person. It, it, it is harmful to them. It causes trauma. And it also hurts communities and societies. It, it's corrosive to civilization. Um, and it makes people behave more poorly than they normally would. Um, there was the old, I think it was Steven Weinberg quote, that if in a normal everyday circumstance, good people do good things and bad people do bad things. But if you want a good person to do bad things, give them religion. And uh, that's how I see it now. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the brief summary. I'm sorry, I don't want to give you a whole life story here, but I figured that's those are all the important talking points that, that you would need to know about me. I like sharing it for us. I am. <laughs> I don't want to over talk. I wanted to say I appreciate your backstory and I can, I can resound with that because a lot of that happened to me as well. Only I didn't have the paganism. I had Catholicism. And mm -hmm. once I read the Bible in its entirety, I'm working on it for the third time through. It changed my life. I did some in-depth studies where it just, it resounded in the hole that I was looking for within myself, which God places, places that spot in our hearts that looks towards eternity. And I did hear you mention earlier about the rapture and so forth. I am definitely a pre-trib rapture person. What I can say, though, is in my time that I'm left here, if that doesn't happen during my lifetime, I know that me personally, I'm going to do the best in my ability to take care of everything around me. And Erica, I heard you mention you, you spoke about Genesis, about people needing to take care of the earth. We were put here to take care of the earth. We were put here to build. We were put here to nurture. We were put here for all those reasons, to not destroy anything. And I appreciate that you mentioned that earlier. 
Yeah, man. So really quickly, do you want to talk about because like you've you've mentioned a few things to touch on, but I want to let you kind of lead us here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I have an issue with what you said about God, because I frequently talk about how the God character in the Bible and especially the God that's kind of described by Christians a lot of the time, I think is evil. Um, I think the God character of the Bible and, and, and the way that people describe God to me sounds monstrous and I really don't like. So I would love to talk about that with you, especially since you're talking about, you know, the hole that God places in us to seek eternity and all these things. I'd love to discuss that um, a little further. To, and also I want to talk to about how point. God. Yeah. No, no, I, I was just going to second what you said there, Forrest, because I, I also I find um, I find the, the problem of evil to be a quite uh, imposing um, challenge to pretty much every faith that claims to have sort of the triomni God. So I, I would be curious as to, to your perspective on sort of God's character as well. Yeah. So w would it be OK if we went that way? Because like, the other thing I was going to say was you talked about the Bible and like we, we can dig into the Bible and have a whole Bible study together where like I say, well, the scripture says this and you say, well, actually, it mean, or we can just talk about the character of God. I think the character of God would be a lot more of a compelling discussion for all of us. Would that be OK with you? Perfect. OK, good. Uh, so, uh, again, just to reiterate, um, I think that the God is described doesn't exist. But if it did exist, as it is discussed, I think that it's an evil entity. I don't think that it's a good thing at all. I don't think it's worthy of worship. Um, and Erica brought up the tri omni, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, right? This this God knows everything and can do everything and is everywhere at the same time. All the like, is that the kind of God that you believe in? Is is one that is all powerful, all knowing, and all present? Well. Well, and to add to that, Forrest, yeah. it's also the, the all loving component is really critical for the that's, problem. That's evil really important. Right? Yes. Yeah. That is really like, important. It's, yes. It's, it's, God is able to do all of these things. And yet, you know, we still have to explain uh, suffering, right? There's an ultimate plan. But for whatever reason, despite the fact that God has every possible iteration of reality at, at his fingertips, we still mm -hmm. live in a, in a reality where there is immense suffering. So, so to me, I, I find yeah. that compelling. So, so Jacqueline, is that the God I, that you believe in? A God that is all powerful and all loving and all knowing? Is that is that right, or are you talking about a different God? No, I'm talking about Yahweh. That's the God okay. of the Bible. And, and, and what I can say are those, is that are those traits characteristic of Him? Is it what I want to make sure I understand? Is like because I don't want to give you an argument that makes no sense to you or that isn't isn't what you're arguing. So, like, is Yahweh all powerful? All knowing and all loving. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. So what I to can move say to when you oh go ahead. Suffering. Sorry, Jacqueline. Go ahead. I believe suffering builds character within us because we're all given freedom of choice, and you're. What I can say is that. You don't have to believe in the God I believe in Yahweh. He gives everyone a free choice to believe or not to believe. My compulsion within myself is to know what he's done for me and how he's changed my life. And I think as part of somebody who cares about the earth and cares about people, all people, regardless of what race, what creed, what tribe, what religion, I would hope that they would get to know Yahweh and choose so, him. So uh, really quick, Jacqueline, you know, you, you said a couple things there that are really problematic. And, and one of them was that suffering builds character in us. And I've heard things like this before. This is what Mother Teresa believed. Mother Teresa that we suffer in order to be closer to Jesus and understand his suffering and, and, and things like that. And it's like, that's very common. Um, but I don't mean just suffering. I am going to get back to suffering. But like, what about the fact, and I'm going to put this in, in chat so you don't know, I'm, you know, I'm making it up. This is a UN article right here um, that shows that 25,000 people, including 10,000 children, starve to death every day. They die from hunger or hunger-related diseases. Um, so that's 10,000 children. And usually we're talking about kids under the age of like, 10. So these are 10,000 children under the age of 10 years old 
starving to death every single day. So like what part of God's plan is that? Like, why is that necessary to teach those children character by starving them to death before they even, you know, reach an age where they might be able to read properly? I don't know if it's so much about the It is about the children, but it may be sins from the parents, generational things that... So do you believe that I should be punished for the things that my parents did? I think that thing history repeats itself through generations, and I think it's up to us to make that change. Um, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but just like to be clear, if my father was an adulterer or something, which he was, if, if, so if, if my father committed some gross sin, you think that it's reasonable for me to be starved to death before I'm adult, before I'm even grown as a, as a child, I should starve to death so that I can learn a lesson and change the generational problems that my father caused. I don't understand that. I'm trying, I'm not trying to give you a straw man here. I'm trying to repeat it the way I'm hearing it to make sure if you, if I'm wrong, correct me. If I'm not representing what you're saying, right. Tell me. No, you represented, you put it in a different context, but that's okay. Because I think different places, I know there's hunger in America. I know there's hunger all around the world. I think those are the ways that, that God, the loving God, gets the attention of people that he doesn't have their attention of yet. Is by starving children to and death. Children, I believe, if anything happens to them, if should they die prior to coming to an age of making a conscious decision to believe or not, I believe they are with God. Okay, but so then about, it's a good thing that they this? starve to death. Yeah, it's, but it's a good thing about, then uh, that they starved. To add to that, though, Forrest, it's not just that they starved to death, right? It's that they suffered, or it's not just that they died. It's that they suffered immensely before dying, right? Like, the, the yes. human body is capable of so much pain and so much agony, both emotional and physical. And starvation is one of those that is is pretty hard-hitting on both of those fronts. Right. So my, my question to sort of take uh, where, where Forrest is going to hopefully piggyback on that, because I know you're kind of going down a specific direction here, Forrest, but like... Yeah. An all loving, all powerful God, right? Like I, I understand, I could understand if God is some kind of cosmic entity and requires, you know, some kind of amount of suffering or whatever to get a, a desired outcome because he's not powerful enough to get it otherwise. And then the, the desired outcome would somehow bring greater joy to everybody else. But this is supposedly somebody who is reality warpingly powerful. And, and all-knowing. He knows every possible outcome of every possible pathway of every possible person, of, of every possible atom, right? So if that's the case, then God should be able to acquire any desired outcome whatsoever, no matter what it is, no matter how it needs to play out, right, without any suffering, right? That should be attainable if he can warp reality to his whims. Like, why does any child starve? Why does anybody stub their toe? Why does a single plant experience the breaking of a single stem, right? Like, there's there's no reason for that if he could do it in a way that didn't require suffering, which we, we know he could if he's all-powerful, right? Truly in the sense that you mean it. Um, does that, does what I'm saying track? Oh, no, I get where you're tracking. What I can say is that we don't know if God comforts those people that are starving. I mean, God is spirit, according to what I believe. We don't know, or I don't know this side of eternity, if he's comforting that person who's suffering. I don't know if um, the people that, like you mentioned, you mentioned God can control anybody. Who wants somebody that's forced to do anything for them? Do you? Well, well I mean in it fairness, more in the sense that God could lay out any kind of reality in such a way, any kind of domino effect in such a way that would eliminate any kind of suffering. Like, otherwise, he's not all powerful. You see what I mean? Like, 
he he could do it in a way he could bend reality in a sense that could give us free will and simultaneously allow all of us lay, lay the events out just so that every person ends up coming to him uh, by their own volition, right? I mean, he could do that, but that doesn't seem to be what happens, right? And right. in the meantime, a ton of people suffer and die. They're they they're not just starving to death. They're not just dying. They're being either they're in agony. Some people never experience a life of of comfort or security. They are afraid from the moment they're capable of comprehending fear itself to the moment that they die. Mm -hmm. And I don't I. I struggle as, uh, to, to grasp a potential, even a potential purpose for something like that. Um, and supposedly, you know, if, if we're talking about the Yahweh of the Christian Bible, supposedly humans are created in God's image, at least spiritually, which means to some extent we reason in the same way that, that this divine figure does. So I feel as though I've got a decent ground for how I reason and I can't, I can't even begin to wrap my head around a, a, a world uh, with some sort of inevitable divine purpose looking like the world we live in. And, and just okay, to, I don't want to talk your ear off here, Jacqueline, but just to build off of what Erica said is that she was saying, but, couldn't but, God okay. make a reality where we all know that he exists and also we have free will, like that we're, we have these two things together. By the biblical account, that world is this one. Because everybody in the Old Testament, God showed up right in front of them and did miracles for them and, and, and presented himself. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ was walking around showing everybody, hey, here I am. And there were still people who didn't believe it in both books. And also, one person who knows for sure that God is real and still doesn't follow him is Satan. Satan met the guy in person. Satan was there at the beginning and still chose to rebel. So it, clearly, if God were to show up and say, here I am, here's the rules, I'm real, this is all real, we could all know it for sure and still make our free choices whether or not we're going to follow it. Why, why not do that? He did that for many years, and Satan wants to be God. Satan wants that position, and Satan's going to have an opportunity real soon to try and deceive the world beyond what they can fathom. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I pray for everyone to not be deceived. I pray that the God of love, the Yahweh that I believe in, will save everyone before that awful time comes and can reconcile his created to himself, the creator. So Jacqueline, can but I ask just, a question? Like, let's let's say we have a hypothetical a hypothetical person, right? A, a child living during the time of the Olmecs, right, in Central America, you know, and she she grows up in in Central America, you know, and and dies at the age of six due to some uh, you know genetic abnormality that was completely outside of her control, right? She's never she doesn't know that. Yahweh exists. She doesn't, she's never heard of, of Jesus or Christ or, or Christians or Hebrews or anything, right? Is she's already dead too. The Olmecs are long gone. What, what of her, right? What, what of her, what of these people who never were exposed? She would be with God. God knows the heart of his created and would know if she knew or she didn't. And I think he would welcome her with open arms. So in, in that case, anybody who doesn't hear is covered would be your position. I would agree. Anybody that does not know, yes, I would, I would venture to say that. Okay. Good. So then and I'm no why? Authority. I'm no authority. I'm just a student. Right, but we're we're talking about your beliefs here. We don't we don't care what the church at large believes. We care about what you believe. And so, like you and just said, that I if, believe and, I believe right. that child so, would be with God. So what Erica just asked was, if anybody dies in ignorance of this religion, what happens? And you said they all go to heaven, like they're with God. They if if you die without ever having hear about heard about this religion. God can't fault you for that, about and so you get to go. Is that sorry? Not about religion, because religion is subject to whatever the group or, as I've heard you mention earlier, cult. 
Yes. For, forgive me. I, I, I am conflating the words. What I mean to say is if someone dies in ignorance of God's presence, if they've never read the Bible, if they've never been taught this stuff, then they automatically get a free pass to, to be with God for eternity. Is that that's what you said, right? I do believe that. I believe okay, so people then that why, are, Wouldn't it be the best may, thing for you to do then? Wouldn't the best thing for you and other Christians to do be to make sure no one ever learns about Christianity so that way they guarantee no. all go to heaven? They don't have to make the choice? No, because the difference it's made in my life within myself, I would want other people to feel that joy. Right, but just a second so, ago, <laughs> you said that it was okay that a child starves to death because they get to spend eternity with God. So who cares what difference it makes in their life? Their life right. is just a fleeting thing. They get eternity in heaven if they don't learn about this. So wouldn't it be better to have a terrible world where nobody learns about Jesus and they suffer immensely here, but then because they never learn about Jesus, they get to go to heaven and be with God for eternity? Wouldn't that be better in the long run? I don't think so. Why not? Because I think the experience of knowing and learning and discovering and seeing this, the things that God can bring into someone's life. And let me tell you, there have been hurts. There have been things that have broken me and crushed me. And I, I, I would be like, God, where are you? Mm-hmm. What I can say, he has not failed me. Sometimes he hides from me in a sense where he lets me try and do things on my own to try and fix whatever kind of mess or whatever kind of anything that I'm in or I create. Jacqueline, but Jacqueline but if I may, how, how do you know that's not just your strength? I mean, how do you, are, I, I'm, I worry you're not giving yourself enough credit. I mean, the, the life can be incredibly challenging and at the same time, uh, to those of us lucky enough to be in certain positions, right? Like wondrous and and just enchanting. But like horrible things happen to so many people who don't deserve it. And they power through because the human spirit in the sense that, you know, we are creatures that are, we don't know when to quit. Uh, we're strong, right? Like what, what, why do you, why are you assigning your robusticity, your your courage why are you assigning that to god when when that might just have been you that might have been you that pushed yourself through it because i gave up i tried to kill myself once so i i have a different question for you then and first of all i'm terribly sorry to hear about your your suicide attempt that's awful. i'm really glad you're still here jacqueline i'm glad you're with us yeah nobody deserves to go through that i'm very happy that you made it out through that um, I but know, I do have another question, though. Me, but it's the truth. Yeah, I, I just, I want to ask a little bit more on, on, you know, the line of question I was having is that I, you said that it's, it's still not a good thing to not teach anybody about Christianity because they should experience, you know, what God has to offer. And then you immediately said there's been several times where you said that you didn't know where God was and you were at your lowest and all these problems came up. Do you know that there's a lot of atheists out there that, on shows like this one that have that exact story and came out in a different way. They fell at their lowest and they felt like, Hey, there's, there's no God, nobody's helping me. And they came out the other side as an atheist. Do you realize that that happens quite a bit? I do realize that happens quite a bit. And that happened so, to my son. My son okay, is Okay. So, so here's here. my issue then is that you're, you're saying that it's better for people to have the opportunity to suffer as you have, in the hopes that they will come to terms with this the world the same way you do and then get God, there is the possibility a good possibility that that won't happen and that they'll become atheists and that they won't live with god forever why would you risk that why wouldn't you want to guarantee that as many people get to go to heaven as possible because i don't get to make that choice who goes there Course, but you could certainly usher more people there, right? That's that missionary service is all about, right? You do work. You're trying to get more people to heaven by convincing them that this is real. So why wouldn't this be the same thing? By by burning every Bible you find, by tearing down every no talking, you'd guarantee they all went to heaven. 
have experiences in their life, but there's no chance that they would come out the other side of that being anti-God. They would all get always go to heaven. Well, if I could sacrifice myself, I'd, I'd do it. And, so, and wouldn't Jacqueline, that be a sacrifice to commit such heresy? Um, no, it would be me giving myself up so that others could experience the joy. So, so Jacqueline, I, I want to commend you, first of all, for, for that. I mean, you seem like a, a very kind and selfless person. You would give your life to make sure that everybody, everybody on the planet could go and spend eternity with God. Why didn't God yes. do that? Right? Like he did die on the cross if you're if you're taking out the the story of of um the gospels uh, literally, right? Like he died so that everybody could have the chance. But why not make it so that Correct. it's it's automatically done? Because he wants to be chosen. But why not just I engineer the situation so we all choose him? We saw free will because. that the situation compels us. Because that's too, there's no fun in that. There's no life in that. There's no choice in that. Well, what if he just made it so there still was? I mean, if he's all powerful, there just still could be all of those aspects to existence, but we all end up making the right choice in the end. I pray that for everyone that they make the right choice in the end. I hope everyone, I don't care what they've done, I hope on their dying or their deathbed, or if they think death is coming, will just cry out and say, Lord, have mercy on me. So, But I, I guess I what I'm saying is like, oh, okay. go ahead, Forrest. I've, I've got to pee anyway, so no, I'll no, no. It, I, Okay, I'm going to go down a slightly different path then, just really quick. Um, uh, Jimmy, by the way, if you're listening, can you open a line for me? I'm trying to call in so I can not have audio problems. Just just get me on there, dude. It keeps going just straight to, to a busy signal. Um, in the meantime, though, Jacqueline, really quickly, do you believe in a literal hell? I do. Okay. And and when I say that, I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. You're talking about a place of, like, eternal torture, of conscious pain and agony and fire or whatever. Like, because you don't believe in this God when you die. Is that right? What I believe in is hell is a complete separation from God. Complete separation. Okay. And what does that mean? Does that, does, because when I talk about hell, a know. lot of people believe that as a, a place of conscious torture for eternity. And some people just say, it's just a place you don't want to be. And I, I want to know where you're at with it. I believe it's going to be torture. I believe it's going to be a mental kind of torture. I believe it's going to be physical. And I believe there are different different uh levels of hell as well okay um so let me ask you a personal question then um you talked about mental and physical torture um here you said you have a son right i do what could you what could your son do what action could your son take what words could he say like what could he do for you to torture him mentally and physically like that nothing he couldn't say anything to me because I love and him unconditionally. I was about to ask you why, and you said it perfectly because you love him unconditionally, and that's a great answer. I, I there's people in my life that I would never ever do that. I, I would never hurt them. Um, why would God allow us to be tortured mentally and physically for anything at all, let alone just not for believing in Him? Like, if you love someone unconditionally, why would you ever allow that? Because He hates. Sin. And he loves I us. I hate sin too. I mean, I I don't revel in it. I try and do my be, best each day to become uh, be a better person. I'm sorry. And it's not because I'm sorry, of Jacqueline. What I do. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry to interrupt you, but like, I can't let you go on that tangent because what you just said is an issue. He hates sin. Does he hate sin more than he loves us? I think he enjoys a repentant heart. 
someone who's that's not sorry an to the for what they've done. That's not. I'm sorry, but that's not an answer. You said that he loves us unconditionally. You said he is all loving, but also that he will torture us forever because he hates sin. I'm asking you, why does his hate outweigh his love? His hate only outweighs his love for those that don't don't believe that he is who he is. So, so just really quickly, I'm going to say exactly what you just said, but with me instead. Okay. I have a child here, and I love my child unconditionally, but I hate gambling. And because I saw my child on an online poker site, my hate outweighed my love and I dragged him to the back shed and I chained him up and I set him on fire. Am I a good parent? I don't. Like, how does that work? I think the thing is that God is very merciful to us. It isn't just, oh my God, you gambled, so we're done. Maybe, maybe back in Old Testament, you would have to go make a sacrifice. Well, well, no, in all fairness, I picked I picked gambling so that I had a real world example. Based on what you just said, I could have tied my son up in the shed and set him on fire because he just didn't like me. And that would be justification. So God, it, it seems, be- has a mass. God has an ego problem. If you don't like him enough and if you don't choose him, then he feels justified in torturing you and hurting you and like causing you immense pain because he hates you now. Like his hate outweighs what? his love if you don't like him. That sounds like a, a child. Jealousy is a is a big thing with God. But that's a is sin. jealousy a virtue? Is is jealousy created. a virtue? Is jealousy a virtue? Can you say that one more time? I missed it. I asked, is is jealousy a virtue? Jealousy is, I'm trying to think for a minute. Is is it a virtue? Is it a good thing for people to be jealous? No. Then why no, does God isn't. get to do something that's bad? It's not that it's bad. It's just, it's, it's a insecurity. It's what jealousy is. So God is, is insecure. God is insecure. I don't know if he's insecure. I think I think since I'm not God and I didn't create everything and I didn't make everything the way it is that I don't have the I don't have the authority to kind right, of but, but Jacqueline Jacqueline I'm not Jeff Bezos and I didn't make Amazon but I can still judge the actions of that man in that company by just looking at it, right? I can tell what's going on by watching someone's behaviors and watching what they do, and I can judge them for it. I can make a moral judgment based on what I think about them. So I'm asking you to do the same thing for God. You describe God as jealous, and I asked you if it's jealousy is a good thing, and you said, no, it's insecurity. So that would mean that God is insecure. And because of his insecurity, his fault, his failing, something wrong with him that he should go to therapy for, he's willing to torture his children. Does that sound like a good person to you? It sounds like if I was God, which I'm not, mm-hmm. and I, I I think it's disappointment in humanity is what I think. It, how, and I think And again, I'm going to ask you the same you question get, again then. I'm going to I'm going to ask you the same question again. How disappointed do you need to be in your son? in order to torture him. I couldn't do it. And that's you just couldn't because you're a good honest. person, Jacqueline. Because you're a good person, Jacqueline. No good person would ever torture anybody no. at all. Like that's the thing. What I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand, there is no justification for hell at all. 0%. No, if you are a loving person, a good person at all, There's no justification. And what Erica was talking about earlier is even just the world that we live in now. There's no justification for it. Do you have any idea how many children get raped every day? I brought up the children that starve to death. Imagine the ones that get raped 
every day and have to live with that for the rest of their life, where's their free will? Where's their compassion? Where's their grace? Where's the savior for them? Because for me, so if I saw a child starving or a child being raped, I would stop it. I would feed that child. I would probably kill the person raping that child. I would do anything I could to alleviate that child's suffering. For God, though, it's different. God says, well, it's good that the child starves to death because then they get to be with me. And it's okay that the person's raping the child because I'll punish the rapist later. And that's just not acceptable. It's not acceptable this side of eternity. So Jacqueline, can I can I ask a question too? I want to I want to probe a little bit on this because earlier you you mentioned something um, about generational uh, punishment, right? Like, and I've heard this idea in, in Christianity quite a bit, right? And and in other religions as well, where it's like, oh, you know, we we today suffer because of the sins of of Adam and Eve who ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which like to me. That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because God creates us in his image, according to the story, right? Which means he created us with all our characteristics that are, um, you know, ostensibly good. Our curiosity, our wonder, our our thirst for knowledge, right? And then he puts us in a garden with a tree and he says, don't eat out of the tree. And we're curious, so we do it, right? Like, I mean, that's one of the characteristics we were created with. Like, we're always going to violate that rule, um, I think. But all of that aside, right? So the, the idea is that humans sin and then the the curse is what impacts all of humans and that's why we have suffering, right? It's, it's not anything God's doing, even though he's allowing it, right? It's actually because of something that humans did, even though, again, God kind of set us up. We were, we were a bit of a fall guy for that one. But I, I wanna pose an interesting, like sort of challenge to that as well, which is like, okay, um, when I look at the natural world, I see I see immense beauty. I'm constantly awestruck by the complexity of the world that we live in and uh, how impeccable and and resilient life is. But there's also just an incredible amount of suffering, right? Um, parasitic wasps are what gave Darwin pause, right? I mean, wasps that lay their eggs in the babies of, of other arthropods that then chew their way out the whole time the living arthropod is just in agony again, right? Or or the wildebeest migration, where these wildebeests are, are moving along from, from to greener pastures, you know, as the monsoon seasons come and go across East Africa. And they have their babies on the run and some of the babies fall right out of the mother, right? And they get up and they stand and instantly they're they're ripped to shreds by a clan of hyenas or by a Nile crocodile or whatever. Um, there's there's just unknown amounts of beauty and also incredible amounts of suffering across the animal kingdom. And these guys didn't even sin, right? They they don't mm -hmm. they are completely guilt free. They they do nothing wrong in the eyes of God. They are incapable of the knowledge of good and evil because they didn't eat from the tree. And yet they are punished to a degree that is, you know, on the same level in some cases as, as the suffering that some humans experience. So, you know, I, I take what Forrest said earlier and kind of, kind of pose it a different way, right? Is like, there, is there anything, is there any reason you can think of that something could deserve uh, torture uh, when when they've not done anything can you can you think of a reason to impose um a, a system of of you know fighting and clawing to stay alive and and get ahead right for something that did nothing wrong something that's their only crime is existing i do understand where you're coming from and i i do have I still have some of those questions myself, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe the rest of what I've experienced as, as well as come to learn through knowledge in my own personal experience. I can't answer that question. Do I want anything to suffer? No. Would I jump in if something was happening to someone else? Yes, I would. I would do my best to stop it from occurring, even if it meant losing my life. Jacqueline, I think you're a better person than your God. I'm not. I don't think I am. Well, I think I'm lucky. I, I have I my, think... my God is what's made me the person that I am. I appreciate well, you saying respect. that so far. 
I, and I mean it sincerely because with like what you just said is that you would do the best you can to make the world a better place, even at detriment to yourself. And that is the exact opposite exactly. of what this God does. This God only, only cares about glorifying himself and allows the world to suffer in order to make sure that his ego gets stroked. Get the, the God of the Bible, I don't know how seriously you take the Bible, but the, the we, we've talked about we've talked about it quite a bit. And I assume you believe in like the Garden of Eden and these things, right? Is that right? I do. I believe the word yeah. in its entirety. Okay, well, there you go. So like this, if if you believe the Bible in its entirety, this God literally invented lying. In 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 Genesis, I, I pulled it open because we were talking about the tree of knowledge and all that. Here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, tree, 17, God is explaining the rules of the garden to Adam and Eve. And he says, of the tree of good and no of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For the day that you eat from it, you shall surely die. That was a lie. That's that's the first lie he ever told in the universe. He killed something for the sin. He had mercy on the people. He but had that's mercy not what he on said Adam he would and Eve. But that's not what he said. Instead. And made clothes for them. But that's not what he said. He said, you will die if you eat from this tree. And the first thing the snake says, the serpent later but on in, in, uh, in verses three and, or, sorry, verses four and five of chapter three, the Satan, uh, the snake just says, you won't die. You'll just know good and evil. All the snake does is tell the truth. And so like you'll this God, God, God made a system that he knew the outcome of. God made a system where he made these people without knowing what good and evil was. Well, hold on a second. Let, let me just explain what I mean. God made this garden and put people in it. The people didn't know what good and evil was. And he said, don't eat from this tree because then you'll know what good and evil is. First of all, why put the damn tree there? But also, then the people eat from the tree. They don't know what evil is. So how could they be judged for making a choice that he thinks is evil if they don't know what it is? They made a decision. It's like a baby. If a baby pushed a button that launched a nuke, the baby didn't know what it was doing. It doesn't know what nukes or evil or death or pain or anything are. It just pushed a button. So here's these people. They make this decision, and God judges them for it. And number one, he already knew what was going to happen because he's all-knowing. He set the system up, told them not to do it, knew that they were going to do it already, and then they did it, and then he makes all of these problems because of that sin. The chief of which being, this is one of the most evil things that God ever does. In uh, uh, chapter uh, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, uh, to Eve, he says, I'll multiply your sorrow at conception. You're going to have a lot of pain bearing children, and your desire shall be to your husband. Your husband will rule over you. He makes women subservient to men and makes it so that it's very painful for them to give birth because she did something that she didn't even know was wrong that God knew she was going to do in the first place. This is like, and I this know. is just one page. This is one page, Jacqueline. I can go on and on about this I book. Know. There's parts of this book that where God condones slavery. There's like this, this is an evil, evil, stupid person. This God is stupid. He made a system and knew what was going to happen and then got mad that it happened and then did terrible, evil things to people because of the choices that he himself made. That's not good or kind or loving or just or smart. He allowed the choices because he wanted the free will. Would you allow your son to rape someone to make sure he has good free will, or would you stop him? I would stop him. Damn right you would, would because you're a good person, Jacqueline. You're a better person than God. I'm not. My God, son God is wouldn't stop him. I am. God wouldn't quiet. stop him, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, God wouldn't stop him. God would allow the rape to happen. And then if the rapist afterward decided that they repented, then the rapist gets to go to heaven. And if the person who is just raped, if the victim is so hurt by that, that they end up giving up their faith, they go to hell to be tortured forever. Can you imagine that? If a man rapes a child, 
and that child says, I'm an atheist because there's no way this is acceptable, the child goes to hell and the Christian man gets to repent and go to heaven. Does that sound like justice to you, Jacqueline? I don't believe the child would go to hell. Why not? What they don't it, believe in God. Was, what if it was a young woman? You know, what if it was a young woman who who uh, was was raped by someone who was in their church and they thought to themselves, you know, you, this the fact that, that this has happened to me, God would never allow this to happen. Therefore, you know, they lose their faith or she loses her faith or something along those lines. Um, the Christian guy, he stays a Christian and then they both die, right? The, the woman dies, I don't know, she stays an atheist and she dies at whatever ripe old age and same with the guy. I mean, under under what you just described to us, that that's exactly what would happen. She would go and be tortured for an eternity in hell um, and he would, he and his righteousness would go to heaven, right? I mean, I just don't, but for believing, not for, not for being kind or compassionate or merciful, um, but for believing, that's, that's all he had to do. And, uh, and her only sin was reacting in the way that she was programmed and designed to react. So, you know, I, I, I don't think, I don't think that that's how you would behave, Jacqueline, but then I, I would agree with Forrest. I think you're, you're more merciful than the, the the dude you worship yep so can you answer that one Jacqueline? Did, about, about a grown person a grown woman gets raped I, she goes to hell and a grown man who rapes her goes to heaven is that okay i'm not god to know the heart of either of the people let's say he well, repents is it, is, is, they say he repent. oh yeah i'm sorry I'm not the one to judge the heart. But but Jacqueline, with all due respect, just a minute ago, we've been on this call for a while, I know, but like just a little bit ago, you were willing to say that every single baby who dies without knowing God gets to go to heaven. You were willing to say that I every think, you you detailed out why you th you detailed out why you think people go to heaven and why people go to hell. You explained it. And now that you're faced with one specific scenario that's hard, you're going to say, well, I don't know, and it's not my place. Like, you were willing to make these decisions a minute ago, and we're not asking you to judge them. We're just asking, what do you think is acceptable? What do I think is acceptable? I think yes. whatever God decides from knowing the heart is acceptable. And it is a hard question. It, it's a hard reality. Right, but based on let, hard just, let me let me try this as just at a slightly different angle, okay? Let me just try the same same say, general idea, but just I'm going to turn it around a little bit. Something. All right. Sorry. No, go on ahead, Forrest. Okay. I appreciate I'm just going to try you. a slightly different angle. No, it's it's okay. I'm just going to try a slightly different angle and see if this makes a little bit more sense. Um, you said that God knows everything. God knows everything that's going to happen. Let me ask you a follow-up question. Does anything ever happen that isn't in accordance with God's will? I'm thinking nope. of my response to that. Well, it, it depends. The way you answer no. me depends on how I no. phrase this question. Okay. Just a yes or no question, too. Just yes or no works. Yeah. It does. Is is it possible that anything ever happens that God doesn't want to have happen? No. Okay. So then here we are. Um, the situations we've described, the 10,000 children that die every day, the babies that are raped every day, the people that you know, suffer and starve on the street, the people who are addicted to drugs, um, all of these things are God's will and his plan. The first sin, so, the very first sin is, the, is his will. I mean, the, the first sin that knocked every domino down was, was his will under this scenario. His, his plan, yes. So I have a couple of questions for you following that up, and I'll make them very brief. Number one, based on that logic, because God dictates the rules of heaven and hell, and God knows everything that is going to happen, he already knows, even though we have free will, he already knows all the choices that we're going to make and whether or not we're going to go to heaven or hell. And also, he nothing happens that goes outside of his plan. So then that means that he made certain people 
for the purpose of sending them to hell and torturing them. If it, if it all happens according to his will, and he already knew that they were going to sin and rebel against him and go to hell, then he made them for them to be tortured for eternity. A minute ago, you said that people go to hell when his hate for sin outweighs his love for yeah. them. That's not that reality. What you just described, if, if, if nothing happens that, is a good, that doesn't happen to his will, then that means that he just wants those people to be tortured. It has nothing to do with love or hate. He made people just so that he could torture them for eternity, period. The, what happens in the middle is a blip of reality. It's, it's a fraction of a second compared to the eternity that they spend in hell. So it's completely inconsequential. He made them knowing that they would sin, knowing that they would die without him, and knowing that they would go to hell. And that all happened because he wanted it to happen because nothing happens that he doesn't want to have happen. So he made people to torture yes. them. Why does he want to torture people? I don't know. I don't because know why. That would, be an, that would be an evil thing. Can you think of a reason that you would want people to tor be tortured that wouldn't be evil? I know, like I said, I wouldn't do it, but I'm because not Because you're a good person, Jacqueline. And the second thing is... Let's talk about this reality, because that's eternity. That's something that you and I can disagree on whether or not it exists. I can agree with you that this reality exists. And we've talked about people starving to death, and we've talked about people being raped, and we've talked about people being harmed and drug addled and all these things. Are you willing to, you, you said that nothing happens, it isn't according to God's will, and God's will is good, right? So can you tell me right now, can you be honest with yourself and say that every baby that's raped, that's a good thing that happened? That was supposed to happen. Every child that dies of hunger, that's a good thing that happened. It's a good thing that they died that way because that's what God wanted. I don't have the full picture as God does because he knows the you beginning don't need to. from the end. I, well, I do I'm sorry. if I need, to, I need to know and make you that decision. You absolutely do not. Based on what you have already said, you do not. I'm sorry, but that's a cop-out to say that you don't need, you need the it's, full picture. What you've said is that God is all God loving and all merciful. Whole, but you I don't do need to, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you don't need to know the whole plan. You don't need to. 10,000 children starve to death every day. You know that's a fact. And you said nothing happens that doesn't happen because God wants it to happen. So either God is doing something evil or God is doing something good, right? It's either good or evil. If you believe that God is good and can only do good things, then you must believe that those 10,000 children starving. I'm sorry? I don't think he can just do good things. He promises everything will work out for a person's own good, for his plan. It's not my right. plan. Do you, do you so think Jacqueline, that his plan Jacqueline, is a good thing? Do you think that his plan is good? I think it is. Then that means that the children that die as a part of the plan, that was a good thing that happened. The means just or the ends justify the means, right? Can you honestly yeah. say? So can you tell me right now? I, I just want to hear you if you can say it, that children starving to death right now is a good thing. Do you really believe that? I feel for the people that are That's stuck. not an answer. She's never, she's, th am, this is, that's this not is, an this answer, Jacqueline. Nope. Nope. Hold on. No, We're not leaving this. I know you want to yes or no for that. Yes. But and I'm not leaving this point until you give it to me. It's not it's a gray area. It's a gray area. It's not for a gray me, area. It's a gray God is area because I don't is, have the is God, infinite mind of God. Jacqueline? We're not moving on from this until you give me a solid answer because I need you to understand that's not a gray area. You know the you don't need to know the infinite plan. You don't need to know the mind of God. If the plan is good and the plan involves children dying, then that means that children dying is good. That's what that means. If my plan is to go to Walmart and I get in the car to go there, getting in the car is my way to go to Walmart, right? 
if the plan is some good, it doesn't matter what it is, and it involves children dying of hunger, 10,000 a day, then you must believe that is a necessary and good part of the plan. And I want to know if you're going to have the, the, the courage to just say that. If not, I think it's a good thing. I think if you think that's bad, that's good. It's You should think it's bad. But slavery I, in America. I think it is. Okay, I think it is the, bad. But it's not my plan. It doesn't have to be your plan. I'm asking you to make a moral judgment, Jacqueline. I'm asking for your thoughts, your opinion, not God's. Nothing about that. I'm, I'm asking what I'm you think. You I'm giving so you was mine. slavery... Is slavery a good thing? Not in this current day and age, it isn't. Not ever, Jacqueline. Not ever is it okay, right? To own another human being as property and use them as farming equipment. That is never okay, right? Because there's still slavery going on today, and there has been throughout human history. But that's part of God's plan. So can you tell me that slavery is good? Because it's part of the plan that is inevitably good? And it was the suffering that those people needed? Those people were suffering, and that was teaching them moral lessons. You said at the beginning of the call that the suffering we experience in life is to build character and to bring you closer to God. Can you tell me that the slaves... We're just having their characters built and learning about God and that it was a good thing because it fit into the plan. What I can tell you is that we are to be servants. That's not an answer. I'm sorry. Look, I've, I've Jacqueline, when, we've been talking when, for an hour. You go ahead. When, Erica. when, when you, when you have a plan, right. And the plan is, is some, some end, some good, and some steps along that way include things like slavery or the starvation of billions of people across space and time. You don't say that that plan is good. You make a different plan, right? You revise the plan. So I, I don't see there being, especially if you're all powerful, all loving, all knowing, the triomni God, there is no excuse for that God to exist and for the plan to be playing out as it is now. There, there is no way to skirt that issue, right? One That's of those three, if you, if, if you believe I'm God exists, you Jack, th thank you, I, I'm almost done. If you believe God exists, then one of those three tenets is faulty. One of those three columns has cracks in it. Um, or maybe, maybe they just don't exist at all, right? I, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm 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 the agnostic in the room, but I'm not agnostic to this, right? Like there there is no room for the for the triomni god uh, with the current state of the world. It, it is logically inconsistent, and in my opinion, indefensible. That's because the devil is in charge of the world right now since the fall. So, is the devil more powerful than God? It would appear if you're just looking at this realm, but in the end, God wins. So really quickly, um, if there was like some really, really evil, terrible dude who you just knew was just the most evil guy in the world, fucking Elon Musk or some shit, just some really fucking just sick, nasty, evil guy. Uh, and he started just taking control over your house and making your son do terrible, evil things, and, you know, I don't know, fucking your cat, or some crazy thing that you don't want to have happen, like, just doing terrible, evil things in your house, how long would you let that go on? I wouldn't let it go on. I would retaliate. And here we have God allowing Satan to run the world, and to hurt his children, and to cause us to rebel against him, which he already knew was going to happen anyway, so that he can send us to hell, which he already planned on sending us to anyway. So it sounds like Satan is another part of the plan. It sounds like Satan is a torturer that God created in order to torture us so that he could torture us some more later for fun. It sounds like Satan is just an extension of God's arm, just torturing us for fun. He's the wannabe God. 
he's the wannabe God who in the end will not be God. But that but doesn't he change doesn't anything. Right now. God has allowed him free reign on the earth right now. How long would you allow a man free reign in your house to fuck your cat and mess with your kid? Why would you do that if you were a good person? That's an insane thing to do. It is. It is. I wouldn't allow it because I would stand up for what I believe is Be right. Because you're a better person than God. Like that's that's what we keep coming back to is here's this obviously evil thing. That's we we're in a loop and we've been in a loop for almost an hour now. In fact, the call has been going on for over an hour, but we've been in this specific loop for almost an hour, which here is this very know, obviously evil God. thing. And then you say, well, God's doing it, so it's good. And we say, would you do that? And you say, obviously not. I would never do that. And we're like, right, because it's evil, right? And you're like, yes, it's very evil. And we say, but God's doing it. And you're like, yeah, but God is good. And we say, okay, so you can do it. And you say, no, it's evil. And we say, okay, it's evil. So then why is God doing it? And you say, well, because God is good. And we just keep going around and around. God's doing evil things. What do you call a person who does evil things? Do you call them good or not? I call him, I call him Yahweh with the ultimate plan. So if I do enough evil things, then you'll worship me too, because I have a great plan, right? Forrest, I can't do that. Although I find you very entertaining. What I if can't. I write a book? What if I write a book that says that I'm the, the coolest dude in the whole world? Yeah. Right, but that's what I'm he saying. Like, what what would it take? Can I? Can Sorry, I you go ahead, Erica. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, do you think do you think Forrest is a good person? I do. Do you think he has a good heart? I do. I'm I'm sure he does because he's yes. I I do believe he has a good heart. I believe you do Thank too, you. Erica. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline. But no, no, Forrest is the one on the stand right now. If Forrest died now of 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 some horrific, some horrific, uh, you know, accident of and medicine. And to be Yeah, he he just goes down, right? Um, is he going to hell as he stands right now? He dies right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pray that God has mercy on his soul. But what because based on your theology? Yeah, your but merciful is, is right. Go. Your merciful is is God. Is God going to have mercy on force as you would, as as Christ preached to have mercy? Right, because uh, that's another weird thing is the inconsistency of character. But but that's a whole different discussion. You would have mercy because it's the right thing to do. Because Forrest is a good person. Forrest has never hurt anybody in his life. Right. You would have mercy because you would know that his heart is good. Just because he doesn't believe the same way as you do, you would have mercy on him. Would God? I would hope so. Based on the rules that you've laid out, not what you hope, based on the rules on the that you laid out. out. No, God would not have mercy on you. Right. And if he did have mercy on me, that would be breaking his plan. Would I, would I agree? No. From what I understand of you, I mean, I've, I've talked to you for, what, an hour now? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the time and the conversation. But I, like yeah, I, I yeah. said, I called in because I am someone who believes in God and from what I understand, I think we've had a great debate. I think so too. And I, I just, I want to ask, like, I have, I have two more quick things and, and I promise they'll be very quick. Um, if like, take God out of it. Just if, if, if I had superpowers, I was just the most magical, amazing person in the whole entire world, in the whole universe. I wasn't God, but I could do literally every single thing that this God claims to do. And I ran the world this way. Would you say that I was good? If you ran the world the way the world is run right now. Yeah. Yep. If I was Superman and just beyond amazing and I could do every single thing, I was completely omnipotent. Um, and this was the world that I created. Would you say that I was a good person? I 
I'm still thinking. It's a you know, yes or no. Some thought. Well, it, it is a yes or no, but yes. Do, she's do, trying to figure but, out the clever way but to do answer it. I, I, no, I really but do want. think about it. Yeah, I know Jimmy. Jimmy really wants me. To, Jimmy's been texting me this whole time, asking me to end this call. I, I want to wrap go this call. Further, it's it's it, because it's on a loop. And so here, here's what I want to wrap the call with, Jacqueline. I want to ask you a question. Well, I want to answer that question first, really quick, please. Okay, but we, I, I mean, we already question, have Jacqueline. about twelve times. But go ahead, <laughs> let's do nope. it for the third time. I want an answer to that one in particular. I right. know it because I'm it's trying so different, different angles. than the others. That it is, and you, I'll explain why later, and it'll sound really condescending, but it's worth it. I, I, I want to know. If I ran the world exactly this way, would you say that I was good? If I had all power and all knowledge, I knew every single thing that was happening in the entire world and I had every single power to change it, but I'm not God, I'm just Forrest. I'm just a dude who has amazing powers and this is the world that I'm running. Would you say that I'm doing a good job and that I'm a good person? Judge me, not God. No, no. No, because the devil is running the world right now. Well, I'm not the devil. I'm Forrest. Well, not strictly speaking. That's a different just, answer. <laughs> I'm Forrest. I'm, my name is Forrest, and I'm running the entire world exactly like this. And hey, and my friend Jim. I've got my friend Jim, who's a real bad guy, and I'm letting him fuck some shit up, too. That's the devil in this analogy. Am I, am I now <laughs> right, free of guilt? Devil. That's what I'm asking. Like, am I, am I now free of guilt if I say, ah, I didn't, yeah, you know what? I had the power, but I let my buddy Jim do it. So fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, judge me. I'm not God. I'm not perfect. I'm not ab all these things you believe in. I'm just Forrest, and I'm running the world in a shit terrible way. And I have my friend Jim, who's also causing all sorts of problems. And uh, the other day, I watched a man rape a newborn baby and i just stared at it the whole time and i was like damn he shouldn't be doing that and i let it happen and then i watched ten thousand children starve to death and i was like ah fuck what are you gonna do and i kept doing it but i made sure that somebody won a football game because i'm a good loving god like good just put the onus on me take your god out of it and give it to me am i good if i do these things i know you'd kick kick his ass if he raped a newborn baby. Uh, but um, I didn't. And I I'm the super thing. Ready. I'm the All super right, thing well, and I didn't do it. Five Am minutes I good ago. Let me just get a let me just get a quick yes or no on this five minutes ago. I'm I'm just gonna get a quick answer on this. It's all gonna it's all gonna morph together. Can we avoid doing the loop a fourteenth time now? No. You know, I I, because I, think, I think I think I, like we've definitely reached an impasse here. Like because the problem is, is that <laughs> we reached Jacqueline it eight did. loops ago. <laughs> no, yeah, because I'm Jacqueline trying different things. She's she's a good person. She's a kind person. She's never going to agree that that these these characters that that God it, as as Jacqueline has described is doing. She's never going to say that those are good unless they're ascribed to God, right? And and then that's out of obligation. But Jacqueline is a good person. She knows that those things aren't good. And you know, I I think I want to say I think I I want to commend her her courage for coming on here and having this conversation because she's been getting Most grilled definitely. by me and Forrest, but mostly Forrest for, for like the past you know hour and a half. And I think that that's really impressive. You have a lot more courage than many of the creationists who just didn't come on tonight. All of them, really. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think at well, the end of the day, Jack, you don't know you what you're talking about. You've had in, you've had Collins that I I thank God. I do. I thank God that he allowed me the opportunity to converse with y'all. That actually, that well, I'm really glad you said that. Will you? Sorry, I'll let you finish this second, Erica. You spent most of the last 85 minutes talking about what you believe, and you thank God that you got to talk. On Wednesday, will you call me and we'll talk about why instead of what? Yes. Okay, and it won't be 85 minutes. We'll do it in less than 30. I guarantee you. <laughs> I will probably right. be on that show, but I'll be quiet. Well, most I'm gonna mute. I'll be muting Forrest for that show. <laughs> yeah, the, and, yeah, and the reason Forrest why we we have been stuck in a loop. And before I let you go, Jacqueline, I'm, I'm not going to ask you any more questions, but I want you to hear this for sure. Is it like we have been stuck in a loop for a long time, and it's been frustrating for for you know us on this side because we're hearing and and again, 
I understand how condescending this is about to sound. I apologize in advance, but like, please understand this is what we do for a living, right? And so like, <laughs> when I'm an educator and I get on this thing and, and talk about this stuff and I'm hearing you over and over hit this wall of like, you're, you're a very good person, Jacqueline, and you hit this wall where God very clearly isn't. And you keep coming up with these excuses of saying, well, I don't know everything. And there's probably a reason. And well, there's this logical workaround. There is no logical workaround for slavery, for rape, for genocide, for murder, for starvation. None of it. It's not acceptable. And the reason why we've been in this loop for so long is because I keep, as an educator, you, we have these tricks of like, if I ask the same question a different way, eventually will come this path didn't work i'm gonna try this one and 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 i want you really to that's what the last thing was put me in place of god quit making excuses for god ask me if i'm good if i do these things i want you to please i know it's an hour long but please go back and just listen to this call and listen to you specifically listen to yourself where we're asking you the same thing over and over and you keep hitting the same wall where you say this isn't good but God does it, so it must be good. And I say, okay, so is it good? And you say, no, it's not good. But God does it, so it's good, but it's not good. But God does it, so it's good, but it's not good. Over and over and over. And we try a million different scenarios and in different ways of thinking about it. And you, in this loop, I would like you to please listen to yourself. And I think you'll hear what we're hearing, that like, you are a better person than this God you believe in. And I hope next time you talk to Jimmy, it'll be, you know, we, we can start tearing that apart a little bit because I think you deserve to be free of that belief. Erica, what was well, it? Go ahead. No, I was just, I, I mean, I was just going to finish. I was just going to finish complimenting her because I, I think you're clearly a very thoughtful person, Jacqueline. I mean, you, you called in mm -hmm. on your own volition because you want to understand the perspective that your son has. I mean, God, yeah. if only, if only every parent were, were that, were that, aware and that curious about what their kid thinks and why they think it. So I'm so glad that yep. you called in. And even though we did keep hitting this wall, right? Like I, I, I think the same as Forrest, right? Like, I think you should go back and listen to this again. And I, I think, I know in fact that you will consider it, you know, and whatever conclusion you, you come to there is, is going to be on you. Right. But like, I, I also hope you call back you know, and, and if we can take this conversation a little bit further, and I, I hope you and your son um, are, are well and, and live well. Most definitely. We I, will. Thank you. I, last you question. Guys. Last question for you, Jacqueline. When you called in, uh, you, uh, when you called in what on a scale of one to 10, how confident were you that your belief was warranted? How confident were you in your belief on a scale of one to 10? It's still a 10. That, so that was going to be the second question. When you called in initially, it was a 10, right? Yeah, it's still okay. a 10. So you're saying that nothing in this conversation that has happened has made you think I need to go and re-examine some of my beliefs? No. I think, I think there are over a thousand people watching right now that think what you just said is tragic. And you need to yeah, go that's... back and watch this call back and really think about the answer you just gave to that last question. Yeah, that, Jacqueline, that makes me words. sad a little bit, but that's okay. But Jacqueline, you have the floor, last words. What do you want to say? I just want to pray for y'all. Lord okay. Jesus. No, bye. Have no, mercy. We'll see next, you on Wednesday. Yeah. Jacqueline, no. next time we talk, next time you and I talk, I will tell you why I think that's a really I, mean thing to do. Yeah, I hung up Take on care, the, I'm not letting somebody okay. pray on air. Uh, uh, right. you, by the way, the Bible tells you to pray in secret and in your closet. And was, that is not what you just did. I was um, going to bring that up. You, but yeah, no, that's, you know, you know what? I, I do. I don't think though. like we we've called with a lot of people who suck. I don't think that came from a malicious place. I think, I think next yeah. time she does come on, I, you okay, should explain why that, like, why that was like, not super here's cool the thing. to do. But I, I don't think that as of now she thought that, like, I think she was trying no, of course to not. like, I want to actually talk yeah, no, about that call, nice, and I kind of sure. want to do it on air, but I don't want it to come off as hypercritical in a shitty way. Cause I, I, I think you two are wonderful and that the points you made were great. However, uh, uh, the, <laughs> yes, this, Jimmy. and I'm willing, and I, and I hope that Forrest, you are with me if she calls Wednesday and I, and I'm happy to take this challenge to her on Wednesday. Uh, this idea of like, she's brave and she's great and all this stuff. She is the exact type of evangelical I used to be. And it doesn't, it, it's weird to say, but it doesn't take the bravery you think it takes to sit there and go, and this is why I asked that, very, that question at the end, how much 
do you feel like you now have some homework to do? And it was none at all uh, because I recognized it and I could hear it. I could hear that it was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Every time you'd ask a yes or no question, she would take a long pause and then not answer yes or no, because this is where you go. I just have to say an answer that is good enough. And this came up in the chat kind of early on where I actually mentioned the chat. I was like, oh, I want to know why. I, I'm I, like, I don't want to keep listening to what. I want to know why. Um, yeah. and, and there's a lot of people who this call was extremely entertaining. So I don't want anybody to think that this wasn't a good call in that way. We, we went and up it also during that call. Yeah, and it makes point. It makes a point that functionally what that call was is a call to go look at the consequences of believing this. Look at what you have to defend and look at the lengths you have to go to present yourself as faithful. Now, functionally, what I don't think it does is help a person examine the uh, whether or not they're meeting a sort of skeptic test, which that's not what every call is going to do. So again, I'm not saying this as a, I, I, like, as a, like, you guys should have done better, could have done better. Cause honestly, I'm excited to do that part on Wednesday. I want that call anyway. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm down to say it, man. Like this, this isn't the thing I normally debate, right? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know the first thing about, about this particular kind of conversation. I mean, I know why I don't buy yeah. into the triomni God, which is kind of what I mostly talked about, right? Like, I, I think it's yeah. logically inconsistent. I don't think it works, but you know, I mean, to, to me, like from my perspective, right? Like I, I don't think that there's very many people period that would be capable of if they're on like a call with their son listening, right? And they know that that their son is like at least right on some of these points. Like there's no way Jacqueline hit that wall every single time and there wasn't a single a single moment of hesitation. I don't think anyway. So to me, yeah. I, I hope, I hope the reason why she was like, no, I'm still a 10 is because it's like, that's a hard mold to break. Right. Like I that's, hope that out, maybe out of fear was for saying anything else. And, yeah, and, in front of her son, right? Like, I hope yeah. that that's the reason, and, and that she'll she'll truly because she seems like a thoughtful individual. I hope that she goes off and and when she's thinking about this, when she's by herself, you know, she kind of chews on it a little bit more, and and you right. know, yeah. maybe. So maybe, this, well, also like that's I, I don't know. That's the thing. Also, I think your question at the end was really important, Erica, when you were saying like, would I go to hell? You know, because you think I'm a good person, like, and immediately it went from, oh, I can tell you, this is the kind of person that goes to hell and this is the kind of person that goes to heaven. Here's why and all this stuff. And all of a sudden when it was about a specific person, well, I don't know. I, you know, I don't have the whole plans. And like, mm -hmm. I hope that her son comes up in her head because I'm just some fucking dude on the internet. Who gives a shit about me? Yeah. Nobody. Like, but, but for her to say like my son, who is an atheist, who watches this show, who doesn't believe like me, he goes to hell for sure. And yeah. like, I can pray that God's merciful but at the end of the day, all I'm doing is praying like you are worshiping the person who's going to torture your child. And you said at the beginning, you know, I would never do that. And thank goodness you did. But like yeah. at the end of the day, you're still I, you know, I would never hurt my wife. But if someone came in the house and started hurting my wife, like, yes, thank you so much. I'm yeah. still the problem. Right. So like that's. That's the thing, man. I, I I hope that this is something that she ruminates on for a long time and puts her kid in the middle of it because like it should be personal. It should be deeply personal. Well, um, well in dissonance, yeah. dissonance is is psychological, right? Like it's not just it's. I think it's rarely something that your that an individual person's will can overcome in a given moment, right? Like when confronted with facts that that with with ideas and thoughts that I don't know, maybe she's considered those before, but maybe she hasn't. I would suspect that everything you went over with her for is which, like you know, I hope you don't mind, but I was just like, man, let him cook, right? Like he, you were like on her eyes, like he's, he's killing it. <laughs> well, but, I'm okay um, with that. You know, I, I want to I want to address that. Yeah, Erica, sorry, I finished, but yeah, I want to yeah, address yeah. what you specifically yeah, said. Yeah, you're interrupting the woman, goddamn you. I, I have you to. fucking Robert yeah, or whatever that guy's name was. I, I mean, my me, brain's so mind. much better. So much bigger and better. Just interrupt me, be interrupt am, me because I'm a person, not because I'm a woman. So that's, I know that's what you guys are doing. So just interrupt. <laughs> I, I mean, Forrest and I interrupt each other because we're like, well, how will anyone ever hear us if we don't? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, did, did you want to finish your point before I? No, 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 no. Okay. I, think, I think the point got it. So I think here's you guys my, know where I'm coming from. Here's my concern because there's going to be a lot of people who watch that. And I, I was seeing it in the chat and they're like, God, this was an awesome call. And again, I, in a lot of ways, I agree. Now I'm going to do the part that's like a little bit. Here's the but that people need to worry about as we are. And the only reason I'm addressing this on air is because we're not just having the conversations to entertain. We're modeling conversations other people are having. Uh, mm. The reason why that call felt so good 
was because it feels good to see a person hit the basically be called out as a hypocrite. It was that little bit of like, oh, I got a dopamine from watching. First, it was a cringy. Oh, my God. She said what? And then Forrest nailed it with the perfect wording. Yes, that felt good. And what are we going to do? We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Now, I know Forrest well, and I know that in Forrest's mind, what was happening? Well, I don't know that you're autistic, but I'm still going to use the adjective in this case. You were having an adjective, an autistic Socratic loop. You were going, okay. somehow that metaphor still wasn't good enough for her. So I'm going to try another. Surely this one she'll get. Okay. Okay. I see what the flaws were on this one. So I'm going to adjust for it to a slightly better metaphor and fuck. Yeah. She's going to get this one. And that I, I know in no way were you on your end going like, I'm going to embarrass you again. Oh, wait here. I'm going to embarrass you again. Oh, wait, I'm going to oh, embarrass no. you again. But that part no, and, of us, and the idea, that, let me the, finish. I, the idea wasn't like, Oh, well, fuck it. Yeah. You know, interrupt yeah. Erica and then I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 thing I worry about as we're modeling conversations, and the reason I'm giving this note is, there will be people who watch that, and I've seen this since I've started, and I've said I hate people who debate on Facebook trying to cosplay as Matt Dillahunty, because they think a totally different way than Matt Dillahunty. So where somebody's going to watch your call and be like, God, that felt so good, in the same way watching shitty callouts on reality TV feels good. Uh, that's where their brain is going with it. And they're going to go. So I do want to do what Forrest just masterfully did and embarrass somebody 14 times in a row so hard that the person didn't even realize they should be embarrassed. And that's what I kind of, I, I kind of worry about when we focus more on the, what we believe than the, why we believe. Cause functionally, I agree with the people in chat who were basically saying, I think what they're basically saying is this was the best cause. This was the most entertaining call in a while. And I agree with that in a lot of ways. But functionally, yeah. if, if we're trying to model conversations, I'm just trying to make sure that people are aware. Don't try and yeah. do what Forrest just did because you can't do it. You'll be a dick when you do it. Forrest did it yeah, right so and masterfully. You won't. Well, because well, we all know that. where Forrest was coming from, right? Like we, we right. know. And God, I thought it was actually so funny. I want to call you out on something, Forrest, because like at the beginning, yeah. maybe but I'm like 99% sure it was this like this skep talk episode today, but you were like, yeah, or it might've been the previous one that I was on, but we we've talked before and you've been like, yeah, you know, like it really sucks when you realize like, you know, it, it used to be that you could just, you, you were naive in this sense that it was like, eventually I just need to present the right information to a person and then they'll come around. Everybody will come yeah. around once the proper information is presented to them. Once they see the data, once they see it as, as it is, they will come around and you were like, yeah, I used to be so naive when I believed that shit. Like, I'm not like that anymore. And then this exact call, you were like, okay, and wait, this let me happens try for an hour. <laughs> yeah. you, you went full on educator mode and you were doing the, the, like you said, right. You were trying different lines of inquiry to see if maybe something would stick. And it was like, I, I think that that speaks like, I think that speaks so much to, to, to how much this means to you, right? Like you genuinely wanted her to understand. And, and that's where I think, like, I, I get where you're coming from with the concern, Jimmy, right? Cause it's like, yeah. I don't know that every single person who's going to try that tactic is coming from it from the same perspective as you are. Right. As I think like Forrest, a, that, oh, I, I didn't Forrest want just to wanted a, a metaphor that would work. That was all I think. Well, and that's, that's what I would want if anybody's watching, because you make a valid criticism, Jimmy, by saying that like people are going to take this th my intention the wrong way and try to mimic it in th with the wrong intention on their own part. Um, that that's a very reasonable thing to point out. Um, I would just want those people to realize that like the reason I did those said all of that and the reason why that was is because I've been an educator for over ten years and like that's what I'm thinking is like I said to her I'm trying different yeah. ways of presenting the same information and also at a certain point. The fact that I've done that is in itself another lesson to say, like, oh, that's what I try to say at the end. Go back and watch the loop um, is like, this is what we've been doing this whole time. If none of these metaphors and the similes and, and, and everything worked for you, maybe seeing all of them at once will help and seeing your reaction to all of them being I, yeah. the same will help. And so like that's the whole time. And like that's when I'm doing I, yeah, this, I'm I just thinking think nine about notes how are as good classroom. as 14. <laughs> I think they're there's not, diminishing returns. They're not always. The, so the uh, like that's the, I'm thinking about it in a classroom setting. And so like, yeah. that's, that's really important for me. Um, but yeah, it's the second, it's, it's, it's just all part of the plan. The second, yeah. But, My yeah, divine, I, perfect plan. Yeah. The second concern loops, the second concern I had had 
Uh, I already knew it. So actually, by the time I said, asked the question, I felt I had already had it confirmed for me when she called what you all did a debate uh, because mm -hmm. religious yeah. evangelical people fundamentally don't even really understand what a debate is. And they use that word to sort of mean we had a good debate and was even projecting that there was some equality of sides that happened here. And the, re and, mm -hmm. and the reason why I was concerned with that call and why I wanted to ask that question to demonstrate that point at the end that she was going to say her, her certainty hadn't changed um, was again, because I remember being that kind of evangelical people today watch and will be like, that was an awesome call. It was really entertaining. She will also go away if she is the person who I think she is because I recognize so much of my past self in her believing she won that altercation that at the end of the day, there actually are. I know that people like when we hear it, you actually just made my faith stronger. Sometimes people say that and it's like, shut the fuck up. No, we didn't. Uh, but there are there are things that actually do that because making your faith stronger. People think that when, when a religious person is saying that if they're telling the truth that they mean you gave me more facts, more good reasons to believe. But they don't because that's not what faith yeah. was in the first place. It means I did an exercise in shutting down critical thinking when you tried to force me to do it. And I still managed not to. We had a guy call in yesterday. I'm not kidding. Who said, I didn't actually call in to talk about my beliefs. I had called in a while back and I just wanted to tell you that I haven't changed my mind and see how, and then also check in on you. And I remembered who the caller was. It was Tony from Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> and I went and I pulled the call and looked at the summary because I now have chat GPT write the descriptions. Basically, I have chat GPT read the transcript of the calls and write the descriptions. So the descriptions are very apt uh, now. They, 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 it does all the work that I was never going to put my fucking effort into because I hate that part of you being a YouTuber. Anyway, and so I'm reading the thing and I'm remembering all these things and I'm like, wait, so you called in. When, yet, when last time you called, you conceded you didn't have good reasons. You conceded that you can't use emotion to defend having faith. You conceded. And, and we basically said, you're going to go, uh, on six other points, that you're going to go away and come back with the good reasons. And you're coming back to tell us you don't have the good reasons. And yes, we confronted and you had to admit you were wrong. But you still aren't changing your beliefs. And I kind of lost my shit at that guy. He might have been drunk. There's a, de a whole debate about whether or not his slurred words, because when, when we asked him if he was drunk, he said it was his blood pressure medication. I take blood oh. pressure medication and it never makes me slur my speech that hard. And it's not that I don't know him. And maybe his speech isn't usually that slurred. Again, I did. I had talked to him before and I pulled up the call during the show. It was in comparison, very slurred. Um, anyway, the, uh, that was my concern. I, I think she goes away thinking she won that one. The one thing, and she she very well might have, honestly, um, but like the one thing I would say, like that that maybe this is a hundred percent our different worldviews. My optimism and everything is uh, everything you said, all of the very again very valid criticisms of of everything we just did. Um, I still think that we did the right thing because of one particular word that you used. You kept saying this is what I did when I was a theist, and this is all they say was. So something no, got no, 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 buddy. <laughs> that's that. that's, that's kind of like was. saying like that's kind of like saying I'm also a woodworker now. So that's like saying if someone you knew was <laughs> going to be a woodworker, you could have that conversation and they'd become I'm a woodworker saying, too. Maybe down, it, maybe down no. the line when something else puts yeah. a crack in her, then she'll come back to this and be like, oh no, no, no. fuck, maybe These this is act. You know, th I'm saying it was the opposite. Work. These were the conversations I loved having in high school, especially because they closed my cracks. It was actually when. Well, I stopped doing hot. these close cracks. That's right. It's hot. Uh, it my I lost my faith trying to prove it true because uh, uh, if anything, it was I started to go like, man, I've had these debates and I recognize how obviously true it is. So now I'm going to go find the reasons it's obviously true. But it wasn't any of the things within those debates themselves that did that. And I don't know. And I'm sorry to say this is going to sound a little ageist. That might yeah. not be a very common thing for a person who is older and stuck in their ways to do. Because I'm talking about when I'm 17. I'm just saying, I'm taking a word, uh, uh, taking a, a phrase from the uh, evangelical playbook. We planted a seed today. Yeah. That's what we did. I, again, again, we I'm not saying it was a bad call at all. Entertaining as hell. It's going to do very well as a clip. And it's long, so we can put so many ads in it. It is, <laughs> right? It is that we have to, and I would have to include this part. It's that 
I know there are two there are two different experiences that happen that I care about here. And funny enough, hers wasn't one of them. I want to have the conversation with her. So we'll say two and a half because I don't care not at all. But I care most about the hosts and I care most about the audience because those are the two people that we're actually here for. The people who call in, we don't assume we're going to change anybody's mind, but it is nice when it happens. The conversations are for the people watching uh, and it's a part of their deconstruction. And so the, the, sure. the, 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 the thing that we're calling criticism is there is a difference between what the audience took in and what Forrest was doing. And that was the clarification I wanted to make. Don't put all the blame on me. Erica was there. No, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying I Dude, get it. You were in it. That, uh, that was like, that was maybe, if anything, 5% me. I mean, no. I, you gotta, you gotta, again, you were like cooking, man. You were going, you were going hard. Yeah, the autistic uh, Socratic okay. metaphor loop is one I've been in myself. And that's why I, I uh, uh, wanted to give you that opportunity. By the way, I, uh, speaking of putting I, ads in our videos, I, um, if you're I, a fan of my content God at all it. on my channel uh, mm -hmm. and you uh, don't like how many ads I have in my YouTube videos, blame Jimmy fucking Snow. That's um, true. I, because I used to put... I used to put an ad every 10 minutes in my videos. And because of Jimmy Snow, I now put one every six to eight minutes in my videos. Uh, we, so if you ever like, damn, we there's so many things. ads in Forest shit. We improved other things <laughs> about the ads too, like the types of ads and stuff too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One day Forrest called me and I was, we were just talking a lot about production stuff. And he told me how much per video work he was putting in to how much it was paying it off. And I asked him some questions like, oh man, we'll yeah. fix this, buddy. Yeah, it turned out. It turned out Jimmy was making like five times more money per video than I was for several reasons. Uh, and so like one of them being the fact that I was spacing my ads out improperly and, and that's not how a lot of YouTubers do it. And I was like, well, a 10 minute episode of a show and then you have a commercial break and that's fair. And he was like, they're short ads. And <laughs> it's a whole bunch of things. But yeah, <laughs> there's still a couple of people in chat who are reacting as though I'm saying it was a bad call or the call shouldn't have happened. I, I if I was going to modify the call, here's how I'd modify it. Same amount of time. We'd have gotten through all 10 loops in the first 35 minutes. And then in the second 35 minutes, we would have stopped doing what do you believe? And we'd have just done why. That's the way I would have changed it just because it is skept talk. But I wanted to be gentle with her. though. She that's how nice. I would change it from standing out here looking from the outside in. Have you watched my videos? Sometimes I end up on a 20 minute metaphor about foot fungus. So like, you know, conceptually, it, Forrest, principally, I'm perfect. <laughs> Forrest and I are, are a kid gloves team though. I feel yeah, like I, we, yeah. I, we use kid gloves. I'm, I'm a kid glove user myself. I mean, I, I, I don't get mean very often. And when I do, it's, it's, it's still not that mean, I feel, honestly. I feel like I, I, I am not as mean as I would like to be sometimes. Let's put it that way. There are some it takes I've, a lot I've, to get me to be mean. I've thought about this in, in past call and shows with you too. Uh, and I, th first of all, again, none of this is like mean, cri hard criticism or anything. I've thought before, like, ah, shit, she's still giving people the benefit of the doubt and they're trying to <laughs> manipulate her with it. It's my nature. Jimmy. It's my yeah. nature. I, I am, I am like a, uh, I'm like, <sighs> I just care a lot. Let's put that. I just care. I I, I want to believe yeah. that people are are good faith actors, and I get hurt over and over again because they almost never are. But maybe, maybe the one or two times that they have been good faith actors, it's been worth it. I'm not saying it is. I'm I'm being optimistic oh, for my own. Look, sense. I I have a high bar for when I'm going to call someone out as malicious, and this is why I talked about it before. There's such thing as being a malicious charlatan. It's like lying. Uh. <clears throat> there's such thing as being a malicious liar and an incidental liar and an incidental liar is still responsible for lying because it wasn't as though they shouldn't have figured out that they were lying. It's this sort of like they belong in a system where they keep avoiding having to address the fact that they're a liar. So we're not talking about an incidental liar is just somebody who accidentally says something that is untrue. That's not a liar at all. That's, that's a genuine accident, but there is when you're a part of a culture of lying and you put up blocks, you put up these thought stop, these thought stopping techniques uh, to prevent yourself from addressing that. And so malicious liar versus incidental liar, malicious liars lying to you on purpose, incidental, it's usually subconscious and part of some greater system. So same thing with like a lot of these people who are engaging, some of them are incidentally manipulative 
and some of them are maliciously manipulative. And generally, I only start saying the fuck yous when I'm pretty positive <coughs> that they're either maliciously manipulative or they're so far gone in the incidental malice that the level of thought stopping they're doing is kind of the level that we saw. Um, I was so pissed off at the beginning of the call with, I can't remember her name already. Cause that's how my brain works. I'd lose it all right away. What was her Jacqueline. name? Jacqueline. It was yeah, Jacqueline. I, I, I was so mad at the beginning when you started talking about the suffering thing. Cause that's so my dad's level of thing. You have so much privilege. And even if the only amount of privilege I know you have is that you have a phone cause you called in, you have the internet because you're aware of a YouTube show and you have the ability to call and and talk like you have a voice your body has all that even if that's all the privilege i know you have that's still way more privilege than most of the planet has and you've come up with a system to dismiss their suffering that i don't even care if you uh, uh if if that system is incidental or malicious because at some point someone needs to hard love you and go you might be a good person, but you are defending heinous shit at the, at yeah. the level of billions of people. Uh, I mean, and, I think, I think it comes from a place of fear. It has to, right? Like if yeah, fear, yeah. fear is the only thing that can move someone who otherwise is a good person and, and has a good heart to, to do such things. I mean, we've seen it over and over again across human history. It's a powerful motivator. And from Jacqueline's perspective, right? Like as she was telling us, and you know, here's here's me maybe psychoanalyzing more than I should, but you know, her talking about how she's had some dark times in her life, and then you know, she's been brought through through it all through the power of Christ or through the power of whatever with her religion, right? I mean, from from her perspective, that's like a, and this is just how human psychology works. Oftentimes, it's like a debt that's got to be repaid. You know, she mm, feels yeah. that she was pulled through that by some external force, and if she doesn't give that force its due, then she might be taken back to that place. That fear is so strong, man. Like, I mean, it's, and that sucks. That I, sucks. I so. actually think it's her fear of everything else. I, I I think so. I know the type of evangelicals you're talking about. So I'm going to give you a counter psychoanalysis. It's not her fear of that God and her fear of that religion that's incentivizing that. It's her fear of the world and how much stuff she would have to reconcile, how much suffering she would have to accept is in the world with no plan. It's her fear of all of that that makes her because one of the things I noticed about her is her God is everything she needs it to be for her to get into heaven and for everybody she wants him to make an exception for to also get into heaven. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. And so I yeah. don't. That God is whoever she wants him to be. Uh, and so I don't think it's the fear of that necessarily that system, though I'm not surprised that maybe fear of that system is why <clears throat> that's the framework she chose to put it all in. I think it's mm -hmm. her fear of everything else that that incentivizes it. Yeah. That is it is a good point. And like, that's the thing. Like when you when you see these things, it seems like. I remember the last we, we took we took a call like this one time where it was this guy who kept talking about like God can send you to hell and that's all I need to know I'm terrified of God and hmm. we did a similar line of questioning and at the very end I presented the same scenario that I did here where it's like give me all of everything that God is am I good and uh, he was like no of course I can't say anything bad about you because you'll punish me and I was like okay so give me everything that God is except one condition i cannot touch you you have special privileges where i can't hurt you and he said oh well then of course i would call you evil and it's like got it so this is 100 percent out of fear and jimmy i think also you make a good point is like this is also utility is that god is this dude who is is not just some old wizard in the sky he's her best friend he's this guy who knows what's best for her and is watching out for her has her back loves her son probably has great abs you know just this whole just everything that she wants in a god and like those two things combined, you have the fear and the desire. It's, it reminds me of that. You know, we've talked about terror management theory. It's a lot less scary to think that there's an evil cabal of wizard lizard people that like fucking shape shift and take over the world with the Illumina. That's less scary than it's totally random chance and you could die at any minute. And or like, that humans suck. That, like that that is just humans. Or fucking, yeah, just people are assholes. Yeah. That's Which, more scary the <laughs> than the fucking Jewish pyramid scheme or whatever else, you know what I mean? So like that's that's I see a lot of that with her. It's just like I can justify my fear these ways. We find comfort in that too, because it mimics the stories we create that that the bad guy is this concrete 
uh, black and white evil or good, and they mm-hmm. the bad guys lose in the end, right? Like it it mirrors this story that we can put a nice neat little bow on, you know. I mean, she's like, it's all okay because in the end, God's going to defeat Satan, and it's like the idea yeah. that suffering doesn't have a purpose is to, is potentially just so senseless and overwhelming that 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 can't even be confronted. I mean. Yeah, and yeah, and look, the uh, uh, as much as the fourteen or so loops were fun, and there were more loops you could have done that would have been also fun. Oh, yeah. Like uh, the one I, I wanted. I would have done that all night, dude. <laughs> That's except here's the thing, Forrest. You literally would have. That's why I had yeah. to stop. It. I'm not saying that just to say it. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, saying, I'm not just saying 100%. you would have. I'm saying that's what you were trying to do <laughs> was do that all night. That's what not. I had a limit as far as it, the show. I yeah. know the show has to be a thing. So like, I would have stopped for that. But like right. in terms of just me, I would have been here all day. I would I wanted have, you to have sh- a single problem I, with that. I wanted you to cut in when she said, well, Satan is running the earth. And I wanted you to cut in and say, mm-hmm. according to God's plan. God's plan was for it because that was one of her most recent contradictions. And I, I, I really wanted you to hit that one. And I'm sure you would have eventually had I not cut it off. Just I was act- yes. When she has already committed that up- everything is happening to God's plan to then excuse something as yeah. if say if everything is God's plan and Satan is ruling then the Satan earth, is too. they are business partners. Like yeah. <laughs> read the story the, of Job. The- How are they not in on this together? The jealousy thing killed me too, right? Yes. Like it's like, okay, well, God's jealous. Well, is jealous is jealousy a virtue? Well, no, not when you not when we do it, but when he does it, it's cool, right? And it's like, yeah, well, right. okay, doesn't this all sound like it was <clears throat> doesn't this all sound like it was written by someone who is a lot like a person and maybe just maybe is a person, right? I mean, like yep. people get jealous, people get it, vengeful, people get petty, people are shitty, like that was part of it why it sounds like a child inventing a game. Like I can do this, but you can't do yeah. this. But it's okay when I. But I, I can do it this way. And I. But it, yeah. But I got you. But you didn't get me because I have magic armor. Really, like, you know, it's like it's, yeah. it's just yeah. children playing a game. That's it. My my last point is part of why I think she will also think she won is it, even if she goes back and watches the call, the thing she's going to look for is not what she where she was wrong, uh, to you where she was wrong to you, but where she was wrong yeah. in representing her belief. And as soon as she recognizes it, I'll, I'll just tell you what it's going to be. She's going to realize she was wrong to say that God doesn't have, uh, uh, oh shit, what was it? It was something around the word want, that God doesn't have uh, wants for good or bad things to happen. Shit, I've lost my point. It, but I, I, I remember the sentence, I had it a minute ago, the sentence that she had said, not the point, but I've lost the sentence. Anyway, surrounding the word want, uh, and she was wrong about that. The, the, if from every Christian traditional belief and stuff, the whole want thing is um, uh, uh, for good or bad or whatever. Fuck, I lost it. It's gone, gone. I'll think of it in an hour when we're probably not even done with I Super Chats. I also wanted to ask God, her about no, prayer. We and I, we have... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, this I wanted is to ask clip... her about oh, prayer as well. Sure. I, I was, that'll be my last thing. I wanted to ask her about prayer because she kept saying that like, well, I'll pray for you to go to heaven. Even though I said that you would go to hell, I'll pray that God will be merciful. And I wanted to bring up, you already said he already knows everything. So if you were going to be praying and that prayer was successful, he would already know that was going to happen. There's no reason for you to pray. If not, you said nothing happens that goes according to his will. Me going to hell or heaven would have been his will anyway. Your prayer does nothing. No matter how you slice it, why are you praying? That makes no sense. And like that's, and then we probably would have gotten to Matthew and all that stuff. But that's 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 for Wednesday, hopefully. We're gonna go ahead and say right now for everybody listening, as of this moment, super chats need to be ten dollars or more to get through, since we already have three pages of them to do. Oh um, my god. We'll be quick. Be you got anything going on in the morning, Erica? Oh, tomorrow morning? No. No. Yeah. No. Cool. No, no, no. No. I'm dissecting superficial muscles of the back at 1 p.m. I'll be removing somebody's latissimus dorsi um, and digging for their nerves. I spent the last nice. three fucking days, like, not when I was at, out of town, but uh, last week, I spent the last three days of last week just digging out this dude's freaking optic nerves here, or I'm sorry, opsic- occipital nerves and occipital arteries here. So I got to do the back now. It's going to be awesome. Do you get migraines? Do I get migraines? Yeah. Yeah. Is it interesting to you, to you to be taken apart the occipital nerve? Does it change your own 
so I got to do a cadaver lab years ago that was all on. We got to fuck with a bunch of nerves, and it definitely changed the way I thought about a lot of that kind of stuff. And you're fucking with the nerves that are wrecking your life right now if you got migraines. Yeah, I got yeah. migraines. The whole yeah. the whole bod is so rigged, dude. Like this, yeah. this is we're just big. We are big rigged like flesh mechs walking around. Like it's just anything bad could happen at any moment. Like we rely yeah. so much on just the consistency of shit that we don't even we can't even see it. It's crazy. I feel like for yep. a lot of people, the first time they take apart a body, they start questioning. What were you saying about intelligent design? Uh, oh yeah. What's okay. up, bro? Oh, dude, the the first cadaver lab I worked in, I had a creationist guy in there, and he was like, "Oh no, look, this is all so perfect and so intricate." And I was like, "No, it's so <laughs> dude, bad. no. Let, let me show no. you the same body you're working on." Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, great. Let's start with what this oh, guy man. died of. Uh, his right. food pipe is his. It's his air pipe. That's why he's dead, you idiot. Weird, right? Or, or with oh the nervous gosh. system, the way that the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves are laid out as they branch off of the vertebral column, right off of the spinal cord, it's identical to how those in any like chordate is, right? Like, why do we have the same parasympathetic sympathetic plan as a fish, right? Where we have all of our shit that's up by our head up here, and then some of our shit down here. Like, it's really weird. The layout is very ontogeny recapitulate phylogeny. It's really cool. Yeah. Let's start reading these. I really want to watch the coverage on the. Uh, they've they've indicted Trump and Giuliani and Mark Meadows on basically trying Ooh. to pressure to basically try and uh, a conspiracy uh, I don't know what the exact words are going to be but a conspiracy Inspired. to try and overthrow the election by compelling the Georgia government to give the uh, uh the state electors to Donald Trump. Wow. I wonder if there will actually be jail time. Like no. what what if there was? Wouldn't that be Trump crazy? Won't ever. Trump won't ever go to jail. Yeah, I think yeah. there's not a person who potentially could be president on the right or left including Joe Biden who won't pardon him even even joe yeah. biden will pardon him if if he gets prison time uh out of a so. fear of too much violence and upsetting the apple cart but they'll say it's we have to move on as a nation this was a great evil mm. but we have to we, if we think about the past we have to move on or 79 years of kfc will catch up to the guy and that'll happen before <laughs> natural causes before yeah. He uh, uh, would see any prison time, too, because there's these as fast as they're going to try and do the trials and stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff that delays things. And I'm reluctant to actually believe any kind of uh, verdict will come before the election. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yep. What an and all those people shit. that chanted lock her up, lock her up. We'll start talking about how you can't jail your political opponents. That's fascism. Well, they're just going to say that this whole thing is a lie, basically. And even yeah, and they'll oh, say yeah. that you shouldn't be weaponizing the department of whatever, even though Hunter Biden, all the stuff coming out about him. All of that was from a special counsel appointed under Donald Trump. But they're saying that when <laughs> Merrick Garland did a special counsel for Trump's shit. That that is weaponizing the uh, the just it, the hypocrisy is paramount. And then but both Marjorie parties Taylor suck. Green That's the showed two. fucking pornography of Hunter Biden on well, front on national television. Showed right. his dick and was like, "This is okay, a thing. Anyway, this is unacceptable." Oh, censored wow. dick. He did. Okay. She, she did technically censor the dick. They didn't show straight up oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then but, that same person is going to be like, yeah, but a man wearing a Howard. dress, that's 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 pornography for children. That's terrible. that's still revenge porn also in a lot of ways. And how how it is e even a censored penis of this is a video of that people were already aware of the video existing is only meant to embarrass. It's not meant to actually make any case or mm. submit into evidence. It's a, yeah. Anyway, seriously, let's pop I through heard these. Those censor bars, I heard those censor bars were tight as hell, too. Like I heard they were about as <laughs> they were basically just like. The select magic wand tool just around the penis and then black ball. Just just as minimal as they could get. I uh, no. and, and now Forrest is gonna eat a banana. Do we're gonna censor that banana. A banana and some nuts, right? Right? We're gonna oh, vote. Man. That act would. All right, so uh, I'm going to start reading these to you because you have mouths full of food. Uh, $10 from Dustin Waldron. Yep. Snuck out of work early to catch the 72-hour super stream 
Love to you, Forrest and Erica. Jimmy, it's 90 Fahrenheit at 7 p.m. here in Florida. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, it was still like 96 or something. Oh, well, no, more I than that. It was than... still above 100 at 7 p.m. tonight. I feel yeah. worse about the fact that you're in Florida. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I used to live in Florida when I was a child. Now I'm me. It wasn't as Never. bad then. It was, pra- it was bad, but it wasn't as bad then. Uh, Smart Alec Atheist says $5. Considering that there's a video that all three of you would like to comment on, how about making a three-way collab video? Because I don't have time for a 40-hour edit. <laughs> Maybe, though. Un- we'll un- Dude, unironically, if there was ever a six-minute video that could be turned into a 40-hour edit, it would be this one, especially if Forrest and I are both there. Though I have a lot to say about it. There's quite a bit to dig into. We've never done a show Yo. together, Erica. We gotta. We, we'll do that one day. Let's do it. Yeah, Erica, I'm pretty sure. If you er- want to work together on that video, if you want to do it all yourself and tell it on your channel, that's totally fine. If you want to work together, do like a two-parter, one on each of us. Yep. Cool with that. Whatever you want to do, dude. No all pressure. Right. I'm not no, putting dude, you on the spot on in it. front of a thousand people or anything. God, I got cut out no, of this totally project would. fast. No, I totally would. But <sighs> watch it and make sure that there. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be enough to say, but like. My question on the whole thing was like, okay, because it's so broad and it's bullshit, like you could take it one of two directions. You could be like, okay, here is like a quick 10 to 15 minute (laughs) explanation on how we know for certain that climate change is legit, followed by Mm -hmm. now let's dissect the rest of the abhorrence going on here and the scriptural inconsistency and the, the, the insane politicking that's going it, it, there's so much so many avenues that you can take it and it's also it's what's his name i forget his name right now one of the aig dudes he's like a total loser he's not very charismatic he's not one of their charismatic guys who's doing the speaking and he looks like he's just like he's he looks like he's got a nine inch grip on a 10 inch turd while he is like giving this presentation i mean you are like barely able to stay tuned in he's a very what awkward man what expression was that that is a fantastic expression i can't handle that fucking well if i also am working on a video similar to that that i just there's so much that i want to dig into and it's insane and it's a very short video i have a lot going on it's and i want it all right? to myself right and i want it all to myself i want to make sure i'm exploring everything so i understand if you want to if you would like to add more let me know but if you want the whole fucking thing, take the whole fuck. I love. I want to no, watch it anyway. So I'm everybody watch sees anyway. what happens here. The super chatter said, "Hey, Jimmy, Erica, and Forrest, you should do that video together." And Forrest went, "Yes, Erica and I should do that video together." What a fucking. <laughs> that's my. That's one of my best friends over there, guys. Uh, <laughs> that's true. For, you said immediately that you didn't want to do it. I you immediately said, said you didn't want to do it. About the, I just said the 40 hour edit. And then I said, but maybe at the end. <laughs> I did say that. I said, but maybe. <laughs> 400 rupees from Leo Brico Cola. Brico Cola. I don't know how to say it. Hello, you two, along with Matt and Aaron, are some of my fave hosts. Forrest, your gender vid was really informative. But. Will you revisit the topic anytime soon, given its age? Many TERFs, et cetera, have, quote unquote, debunked it. Cheers. Yeah. No, I, I want to. I've said several times that I want to remake that video. It's just a matter of mm. when I have time to do it. Um, fortunately, um, like you said at the very beginning, I'm starting at another master's and I have a couple hours of research credit. So maybe I'll de- dedicate those to just diving into that a little bit more. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really want to. Uh, and uh yeah stay stay tuned for it someday um because it, i think it could be put together a lot better and i won't be banging on the goddamn table the whole time that'll be great silent <laughs> Terrapod says possum question is the play dead thing terapod. they do learned instinctual or involuntary sorry what did i say you said terapod it's tetrapod. oh tetrapod yeah bam yeah. uh it's the pt threw you off you did the same thing for me last time i'm barely still here back. Uh, or is it instinctual, involuntary, like the fainting goats? You both are awesome. I'm pretty sure my it's understand- instinctual and involuntary. Yeah, my, it would be like that's what I was going to say. Yeah, well, and it's also ubiquitous in in possums, whereas in fainting goats, it's it's a inherited thing. It's a genetic issue. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's definitely instinctual, and I'm pretty sure it's involuntary. I think it falls under tonic mobility, but I don't think they actually lose control of their body. It's just a thing that well, they do, and then they either. can get up. Yeah, so I don't know if it falls under a... tonic mobility or not. Yeah, it's not like a um. There's not like a a, re- a cool down for it, right? Like like they can yeah. act, they, you know, they, yeah. they play dead, and then sometimes they get up quickly, and sometimes they don't. So exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, they, oh, sorry, can continue on with the, the things that you're reading. Uh, Daniel Aurelia says hashtag excommunicate Jimmy Snow hashtag LOL. I don't know if that's a joke on fire Jimmy Snow or if it's a joke on uh how I've been saying recently that. Basically, I don't know if I'm actually gay or if I'm just sucking dick to try and get excommunicated from the Mormon church, but I can't seem to get them to excommunicate me. <laughs> Suck more dick. See what happens. I'm you trying. Go yeah, you got to try harder. Um, try harder. I try just the right amount. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nilly Wilson says, for 20 Canadian, keep on, keep it on. Hashtag nerds unite. Michael Garst. So Michael Garcia says, is it wrong that I fell for watching the Netflix cave bones as an average consumer and took it as accepted science? What should we know briefly before we watch it? No, I mean, no, it is not wrong. It is not wrong that that happened to you. This is a flaw in the system. And I, I, there's a lot of hubbub going on about the, the ethics of that entire situation. If you're planning on watching cave of bones, here's the only thing you need to know. All of the findings, the the primary findings about the burial, the fire, the engravings, and um, they're really just those three. Um, There's a thing about a potential tool, but they don't really talk about it that much. All of those things were released in preprint form through uh, Bio uh, RxIV, right? And everybody ate them up and was like, wow, that's really interesting. And then the peer reviews came out after the Netflix documentary, which was timed at the same time as the book and those preprints. And all 11 of them, well, I guess I should say 10 of the 11 were scathing and one of them was uh, neutral. So what that means isn't that Homo Naledi didn't bury its dead. It doesn't mean it didn't use fire. It doesn't mean it didn't make those engravings. What it means is that we haven't done enough tests to know for sure. And that case is not the case that you are going to be pitched in Cave of Bones. In Cave of Bones, there is no ambiguity. Lee is all in on it. And what you should know is that is, and this is what I've, I've been trying to remind people is that it's like, this is what it actually looks like when there's a huge clash in science, right? Like this is what real contested bones looks like. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what you should know going in. It's, it's a, it's a great deal of drama actually. Tight. Right on, right on. But there's someone in the live chat who doesn't know that I know that I happen to have been lurking in a YouTube video where they were in the live chat and in that live chat, they talked about how much they hated me and they didn't know I was there because the, the, the live show was not about me at all, but there's someone in this live chat who I know talks mad shit about me on another channel. Anyway, uh, smart. By, by the by, while we're talking about this, uh, uh, documentary stuff, what are your thoughts on ancient apocalypse, Erica? I hate it. I hate it with every fiber of my being. I hate it so much. It's just, it's, it's difficult for me to keep myself from vibrating with rage. Um, is that the I, one, is that the one with the hypothesis that like there was an, a civilization as advanced as ours, but like they went through their own yeah. apocalypse and now we just wouldn't yeah. be able to detect them at all. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, I, it's by crazy. the same, by the same breath, there were intelligent, you know, uh, I guess early tetrapods live like super, super, super early tetrapods or, or arthropods or something like that living in the Silurian, like as if things, as if something that brazen would occur and leave no evidence of itself or, or this scant of evidence for itself. I mean, every archeologist I know almost had a, an embolism upon the ancient apocalypse, but Cave Bones isn't that I, bad, not by a long shot, but it's still irritating. I'm working on a project. I'm not going to say what it is exactly, but it involves needing to do some market research on what documentaries are popular on Netflix. And that's like one of the most popular documentaries on Netflix at this time. It's like in like the top 10. And uh, the guy that I was, that I'm working with on this, he was like, you need to go look at these popular documentaries on Netflix, learn what's popular and why. Uh, also realize that if this fucking thing can get out there, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, that's a good vote of confidence. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, yep. I don't think yeah, getting on Netflix is particularly hard. Is that what you're I don't saying? No, man. I hear they only have like a a set list of like studios that they work with. 
You're talking about for like what they'll call Netflix original content, but just have being in the catalog. It used to be super easy. Like I had friends who had independent films in that shit years ago, but no, no. Uh, I don't know if it's uh Hey, Erica, what are you doing tomorrow? Mm. Tomorrow evening. Do you know what do you know what Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock is? I do know what I yeah, Dave is awesome. If uh if you were free, we might have to fill that but we don't know for sure our guest appears to have hey. uh to be sick i should just say i shouldn't just say what but they're gonna give me final answer tomorrow if they do say no can i hit you up it, it'll be a much shorter show because dave can't do much more than 90 minutes yes hit hit me up it'll depend on the time because my mom is still in town like i said at the beginning she's she's yeah. here right now so it's gonna depend on how that goes but let me same know what time. the time would be the exact same time okay. as today yeah. uh I'll, um, I'll talk to you after the show maybe. I, I yeah. just told I just I just told Dave I'll do it if if it ends up getting uh but also um and then <laughs> he called that oh that would be fine but if you can think of someone else <laughs> 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 I just did the show with him two weeks ago in fairness but uh yeah they you just take calls about purpose and life after all yeah. that stuff and people love you so if let, we'll figure that out if you can uh, I just did it recently know. otherwise I'm sure he would have asked me as well. I'm sure he'd still ask you over me. Yeah. <laughs> Smart Alec Atheist five hours ago said, I hope that rather than going extinct, humans evolve. I mean, the two are the same. So like, if we evolve into something else, then this species would go extinct and the next species would be there. So like, yeah, we get what he what means want, with man. colloquialisms that we won't have an apocalyptic right. event and that instead will become, will merge with the AI and become a start of, Mostly artificial species. Also, I'm, I say, I'm hoping... anybody who's watching the show. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. Mine was irrelevant. You go first. God damn you. Oh, I will not okay. Let this well, slide what I was going to say is I hope that there's, I, I hope for a large enough scale apocalypse that we are forced to return to monkey um, in like the funny <laughs> meme sense. Because obviously we're still monkey, but you know, like, right. like return. I I hate oh. that like we now can't even afford certain local apocalypses because the the fall the nuclear fallouts that will happen after will destroy the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, it's a bad time. We've yeah we've gotten this. ourselves. I was just gonna say, people. everybody watching this, there's like a thousand something people still watching. Um, every single fucking one of you needs to go over when uh, when dying out loud with table Warnock is on and go put in the chat. That you love Dave because you should. You should go mm -hmm. and check him out. Like he deserves it. You can't do guy. it forever. You won't be able to do it for relative to even our lifetimes much longer. Take advantage of that right. awesome show while you still fucking can. Dude's he's he's great at, at at thinking. He's great at speaking. He's real good at dying. He's doing it better than anybody. Yeah. So like go go make sure to get in there quick. I was gonna make a joke like that. Bad at dodgeball at these <laughs> days, but other than that, he just sits the whole time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. lazy <laughs> asshole. He's dude. I th the jokes he and I make before the show. I always like I double check to make sure we're not accidentally streaming. <laughs> I'd be so fucking canceled. Uh, <laughs> Cubone. I, I, think I, I skipped, meant to say Cubone. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Cubone. this will be like a six hour stream with two of my yeah. favorite creators and Jimmy that is also here. Love. Uh, I can't wait to listen back at work tomorrow. Thank you for the compliments that said. I can't wait to hear two of my favorite creators and Jimmy. Uh, Not just Jimmy, a Jimmy, a, a singular here. Jimmy. Who even knows which Jimmy? He's one of them. Who even knows? I'm actually trying to work on the compliment thing because somebody, uh, my therapist recently told me like, if somebody gives you a compliment and you shy it away. It's like somebody giving you a present and you throwing it at them. Like, they're yeah. like, that's, they're trying to give you a gift and you're, you're fucking, and I hadn't thought of it that way. And now I feel tremendously guilty. So everybody tell me how fucking awesome I am all the time. Keep doing it. You blew it again. Go back and skip that one. one too. Maybe it was for, uh, smart Alec Atheist <laughs> says the people who make fun of nerds are just jealous that nerds have so much more fun. True. Statistically speaking. <laughs> Smart. It, well, I, it wasn't there that that one. I know we've probably talked about this before, but there was that one study that showed that like uh, people with high IQs tend to stay up later, uh, do more drugs, have more sex, and use more curse words. 
because we're good at like kind of thinking outside the box and shirking societal norms and setting our own boundaries and shit. Yeah. It's, it's not just like a, a strong of, correlation. Like It's just a little bit of friendly neighborhood giga chattery going on around here. We can't help it. You know, it is what it is. Mm. Okay, ten dollars from too young to feel this hole. As soon as I, well, I start watching, the, like I'm it. just giving voices. As soon as I start watching the stream, I hear Forrest and Erica nerding out about anatomy. I love it. I am a PTA, so musculoskeletal Aww. anatomy is one of my favorite things. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I don't have to read all these yeah. now that you're all done eating. Y'all want to read them? No, no dude. We're just my a, favorite. We're just a big creature made up of simple machines, right? Like all of our muscles and like ligaments and tendons just pulling us around. We're we're so weird. Levers and pulleys, levers and pulleys all it's day long. So, it's Fuck so. Yeah. The abducens muscle up in the eye, fucking, it can't, your eye can't rotate that way, so it has to, like, be pulled all weird around this fucking, like, flesh pulley system. Um, and then I fucking love uh, the the muscles that that actually move your finger, the flexor yes. digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. They're down here by your elbow. The muscles in your yep. hands do this. The muscles that actually move your fingers are down here. And if you skin this whole part, remove all the fat and fascia, and just have those muscles, you can literally sit here and like pull these strings down here and make mm -hmm. the fucking fingers move. It's it's crazy, dude. It's so much fun. And then you have this one called uh, um, Pronator Terrace right here that rotates this guy. And you can literally, like a fucking puppet, just weave your fingers in here and make the hand move about and do all sorts of things. It's crazy how fucking marionette-like that particular part of the body is. I love it so We're much. Just we're we're big meaty puppets and we like self lubricate with slime and digest things that we mash up in our faces with acid we're just so like spooky yeah. i i mean I, this is what i think isn't a concept that's explored enough right like humans everything on earth really but like we're talking about people here right like we are scary if there's like alien life out there i would love to see a, a, a story address like humans as the the horrific creature right like we're we're kind of gross i think i stuck out there for reading. a bit what what is happening what my brain just shut off for like two minutes where where am i uh we're, we're talking uh, came... about meat and humans yeah we're fucking uh we that's also i the thought person so the but it that felt that I, impossible I, <laughs> no, the you're person in the comment who said that you, right to the person in the comments who said that they bet that i've done that by puppeteering a hand you're goddamn right i have that's how i taught it um but like um <laughs> the that and then also um fucking there was i forgot what scientist it was i think it was Feynman. i don't know but they were talking about like teaching a kid about reality by like describing various things in like crazy weird details and so like they talked about mm. like walking through these towers these spiraling towers of like the, these trees that were like bristling and fuzzy and like interwoven vines creating even bigger vines towered together in like the rough and he was describing the carpet he was describing if you were very small walking yeah. through the carpet what it would look like and like I, I want to do something like that. If I could just describe human anatomy and physiology without using the word human, without using the word mouth, without using you know, anything like it, just, just if like really break down what it is, people would be disgusted. People would be horrified. It would be fucking like Lovecraftian nightmare of to describe just what we are all the time. It's, we're, we're, we're spooky. A bit Lovecraftian. Very creepy. We'll definitely yeah. do six hours. And because I start pre-production uh, around a half hour out, actually earlier than that today, I've already been here six hours. Uh, Sanity has left me, wrote, my two favorite people. Oh, my glob. Forrest, get this reference. Doing a live stream on my birthday. This day just got so much better. Glad to be here. Hey, happy That's birthday. Radical. Iceclaw526 says, I constantly want to work in science, paleontology, or zoology. The college costs scare me and the wages are upsettingly low. Do you have path advice what I could do part-time college while I work? Die poor is the advice. <laughs> yes. no, if you're, you're in America, country. Jesus. Dude, 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 no way. It's if, if you love it, if you love it, and I really, I mean this, you have to love it. 
But if you love it, it's mm-hmm. doable. And and the way you do it is you take everything you can at a community college or, or a college that's going to pay you to go there. You know, if you can get that undergraduate education out of the way for cheap and not go into debt, that is so clutch because most places, or at least at my university, they'll pay you, they'll pay your tuition and give you a stipend. It's a shitty stipend, but it is a stipend yeah. to, to teach your way through your education. So you'll just teach and then they pay yep. for your tuition, right? That's what you want to do. Never, ever, 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 ever pay for graduate school, right? Don't do it. Make sure that you are not going into debt for this because you're right. The wages aren't ideal. You can get paid pretty well, depending if you manage to land a great gig. But the nice thing about, you know, bio, and I'm sure Forrest knows this, right, is we always got that fallback of teaching osteology. <laughs> you can always yeah. teach osteology. The medical field. <laughs> always, always, always. So that is a field that is never going away is teaching, teaching osteology to med, to med students. That's, that's going to always keep you afloat. Yeah, get those Pell Grants for your undergrad and then get, get a stipend, a research stipend for grads. That's, that's what's all. Pell Grants are where it's at, dude. Oh. Do it. Dubovsky says, hey, Forrest, thanks for the food recommendations the other day. Memories of Japan and fat guys. Uh, Hell yeah. Any other places you'd recommend? The sooner you answer, the sooner I can go eat something. I'm starving here. They wrote that five hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those those were the places I recommended um, over on uh, the hangout uh, that to eat here in Tulsa. Remember Japan and fat guys. Uh, if you like Mexican food, um, there is in Broken Arrow, which is just outside of Tulsa, um, at I think eighty first and Aspen. They're not, I think you, they're gonna put it. There's in a their taco phone. truck. Just say there's the a name. taco truck. Called, well, I don't know if it's on Google Maps because it's just a truck. It's a food truck. It's a taco truck called Tacos Rosie. Um, it's yellow. It's bright yellow. And it's on the corner right next to Ace Hardware. Um, and I will go like, like fucking a long way out of my way because uh, they make some fucking awesome barbacoa and they make some awesome uh, uh, pastor. Um, so like go there and get a million fucking tacos. They are so goddamn good. And right across the street is the Supermercados Morelos and you can go in there. And right by the produce section, they have um, like all sorts of candies that are repackaged in little uh, Tupperware containers covered in fucking tahine. And you get like chamoy to squeeze on them. They have little packets in there. Get some spicy patch kids. They're sour patch kids covered in chili lime salt tahine. Time and then you squeeze, you squeeze chamoy over them and then you eat them bitches. And they're salty, sour, sweet savory Forrest, spicy eaten. What, is, what is wrong with you we haven't eaten i've been eating these stupid wasabi almonds for six hours stop talking about food i'm so goddamn hungry too dude. luckily y'all took so long i was able to make a whole fucking meal and eat it i'm good I'm quite wow good. i can't imagine what that's like and by the way i had a banana the tortellini would have rocked your world PBJ to oh, I, yeah, I, I saw, I noticed. Dylan Fillin says, Forest, can you make a video on the evolution of plants? I can, but it would take me a long time because I'm like, that was the only class I didn't do super duper well in a say, I, would, I, just fucking, I don't think you'd enjoy it. Just plants. Plants piss me off sometimes, but I, I'd be into it. I like but people. I don't know if I'd be good at They're, it. I have a friend cool who's a PhD botanist who's probably working me on it. Yeah. yeah, do that because when when someone who's into plants is talking about plants, they're interesting. Otherwise, it's they awesome. suck. We're, like we're, I don't like reading about plants myself. I want to be taught about plants by a plant person. Yeah, we're up to four pages. Yep. PBJ Time says this chat is for my two favorite hosts and to help pay for those six people on hold. It was really expensive today. This is the most we've spent on a because other people called and hold, held and then like dropped and stuff. Today was a, a mm-hmm. I, I would just watch the meter. And then we also had to open another line for, for that's why I hung up on you after some amount of time. I was like, I think I've spent like seven bucks just keeping you here, buddy. Um, PBJ time. Take this it out is, of Erica's pay. Yeah. 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 Sure. You can take it out of my pay. I don't mind. <laughs> Has that, I like I'm that you're saying that right. Pay. As we've agreed to start paying her. Has anyone seen <laughs> money come from nothing? No, God exists. Keep being a smile list and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Well, I pay Forrest through direct deposit, and he's never seen me actually physically pay him. So 
I love that smile list is still a thing that people are remembering. That's great. We are somebody called in for, for just for Erica knows uh, on the last, I think it was on Matt's show that I was on. Somebody called in and uh, said that they don't want to become an atheist because then they'll just fall into nihilism and they'll never be happy again and all this stuff. And there will be no joy and no everything and no love. And I was like, Hey, by the way, I am a nihilist. I, and, and like, just, you know, that's a huge part of my philosophy and here I am smiling. And so we came up with a new school of philosophy called smileism. Oh, uh, you're a, a oh. nihilist who smiles. Join the smile. But there's so much, yeah, right there's, there's so much to be happy about. There's so much epic shit going on around us. Yeah. I don't know. Like it's and you, great. You can oh still, God. right. You can you're still know that this is all bullshit <laughs> and be happy to be a part of it. Like it's, Dude, we just talked I think about that's existentialism. We're, we're, talking, we're like talking flesh machines. It's <coughs> it's sick. Being alive is dope. I just choked. Democracy, on justice, love, compa- all these things, they're just bullshit that we make up to deal with reality, but they're nice yeah. things to do because there is objective suffering and joy, and joy and happiness and shit and like you can sure. still have a balance and a scale that you understand. Dude, being warm when you're cold, cooling off when you're hot, having something to eat when you're hungry, drinking when you're thirsty, being intimate with somebody you love, right? Like there's so many different amazing things to be happy about and to find joy in an everyday life. I just love it. Let's start capping it at three three seconds per dollar. The replies, (laughs) (laughs) the replies, let's start start making it three cents a buck. Three, just sorry, try three, and control up, Jimmy. Try it. Just try it. Oh, I've I've given up. We have not made it through the first page, just so you know. War boss. Okay, okay. Well, I'm says, gonna make this concentrated effort. Did you just skip another one, you son of a bitch? I swear Super to God. Fall. Smart Alec Atheist says one thing. I don't know why it doesn't. No, they didn't say that. One thing that Reddit has that is a good thing is the April Fool's Day event r slash place. I actually love Reddit. If you use it for hobby places. Uh, like r slash woodworking is awesome. Uh, yeah, there's the, there are very wholesome things on Reddit. It's just, there's also like Nazis and stuff sometimes. Yeah. Mostly covert Nazis. They don't put up with Nazism there anymore. Uh, war boss 20 Canadian says I work with creationists. I lack biology knowledge. They use bombardier beetle as proof of creation, <laughs> citing its complex features saying would just explode unless it is all there. How can I counter this argument effectively? You forgot to scroll this time. You've been skipping so many and now you didn't put the new one on the screen. You know, Forrest, <laughs> do you want to produce? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, bombardier beetles are a fucking marvel of evolution, and what you're doing right now is that dumb thing called irreducible complex. Not this person commenting, but the people that are saying this. That's that's the dumb irreducible complexity thing where you're looking at what it is right now and saying, well, unless it's exactly this automatically, then it doesn't work, and not thinking about any possible steps between then and now that would be less effective than now, but still functional. Those exist, y'all. Like all the time those exist. So I'm I'm sure there's literature behind like the, the intermediate steps for the bombardier beetle, but I can just think off the top of my head, like you don't need fuming chemicals. Chemicals that sting a little bit are better than no chemicals at all. And chemicals that yep. shoot imprecisely are better than chemicals that shoot precisely. Like this this is simple. So every single step must be beneficial in and of itself. And the coolest part about evolution is it always is because that's how it works. Yup. Crazy dude. Uh, $10 from a pink and blue shark. Love the line in Jimmy. I am just bad with YouTube. Screw capitalism and hierarchy with the kisses from Seattle. They said something. Cute. A pink and blue shark said something mean about me in the chat earlier. I just don't remember what I, I think they were joking though. But it hurt my feelings. Jared, because it's so easy to hurt my feelings. Did I, I hope everyone knows that. Jared Holman says, my two favorite Skeptalk hosts, enjoy both of your channels. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Uh, Allison, the animal says, the first person to write about cataract surgeries was in 600 BC. Sush, oh. Sush Ruda, who wrote about many surgeries, cataracts, the side effects wouldn't have been unknown. Well, snap. I didn't know that. That's really cool. That's fucking awesome. I'm okay, well, up later. So let's just say yeah. new rule. Google your arguments before you make them. 
Nah. Lest you look like a stupid person. 666 from uh, Maria. Uh, I hope the A is short for Ave. Have either of you watched The Expanse or Farscape? What is your favorite piece of sci-fi media? Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Uh, I have not, Man. but I made a whole, like, fit. Uh, I made this bit about, like, free Mars and the War of Martian Independence and shit that went viral on TikTok, and everybody was like, this is The Expanse, what you're describing. And so, like, apparently I, I would like it, but I've never seen it. I've, the Expanse has been on my list for a really long time, but I also haven't seen it. However, as far as uh, science fiction media goes, obviously Planet of the Apes, love it. Any any kind of ape-related media is going to be a win for me, but also anything spec evo, right? Any speculative evolution project, you got Alien Planet, you got The Future is Wild, you got anything by Dougal Dixon that Dougal Dixon has ever even breathed near is fantastic. So, and Wayne Barlow stuff, well, I guess that's that's uh, Alien Planet, but still, I, I like speculative evolution. I think it's fun and it gives people a chance to flex their creative muscles. Also, 2001 A Space Odyssey. So those are my faves. Watch those shows media. while you play Baldur's Gate. My wife brought me Jiggly Cakes. Ooh, Jimmy oh, Cakes? Uh, are they called oh, Jimmy Cakes? <laughs> Jiggly. Not oh, jiggy. Jiggy <laughs> they, are not, they are not called Jimmy Cakes. I don't know what a Jiggy Cake is. Jimmy Cakes. I'm a <laughs> jiggle. Like, jiggle he Cakes. Heard, he oh, heard yeah. something that started with a J and ended with a Y, and he was like, did he just say Jimmy? Did he just this say my name? My moment. <laughs> okay, just so you know, I just Googled it, and Jimmy Cakes are a thing. So screw you guys. Gross. Gross. Whatever they are, gross. Well, let me see if I would eat them. Uh, let's look at Great Grandma's famous Jimmy Cake recipe. Uh, that makes it worse. Oh, great Grandma's I just Jimmy checked... Cakes. No, hold on. Someone said, someone in chat says, I've never seen X-Files. I love X-Files. I love oh, X-Files. But it's not the same as Spec Evo for me. I, Spec Evo is like another level of Nirvana as far as enjoyment goes. Also, I didn't watch all of the X-Files. I watched it up until like they started leaving the Monster of the Week stuff because that's mostly what I watched it for. But my favorite episode of the X-Files is the one where they go to Antarctica. I think it's called The Ice. That's my favorite one. It's Can like a, a The Thing ripoff. I, so I think everybody here way, thinks that the criminal justice system is way overused and we put people in prison for too much, right? Is that is that probably fair to say? That it, yeah. Oh, everybody here feels that way. Well, but can we yeah. can we also yeah. agree though that the people who make when you want to look up a recipe, but before the recipe you're looking for, they put like a ten page article so they can fit as many ads as possible for you to scroll past. That yeah. those people do belong yeah. in prison. Can we agree on that they at least? Go longer than Trump. Longer than Trump. Like I don't I'm need to know. Penalty. I don't. Need I don't need to know the reason why you started uh, uh, becoming a, a, a small train aficionado to understand yeah. how to make like a basic chicken noodle soup. Like it, yeah. you don't need a life story for that. Uh, yeah, and, and especially Yo. now, I don't need to know chat GPT's version of your story either. The first time I right. had Jimmy cake was when I would. Anyway, this cake looks fucking awesome. It looks yeah. incredible it looks like kind of like a combination of a coffee cake maybe and a chocolate chip cake or something um delicious it just looks there's there's cough cold coffee in the cake itself so when i say coffee cake i mean a coffee flavored cake and then the jimmies are apparently the chocolate sprinkles that that's why because you oh, put chocolate oh, sprinkles. british british oh go on and have the jimmies i'm british it works british, british. Fucking British fucking I'm, shit, dude. I'm, I'm gonna British fucking fuck. in, I'm I'm gonna take over the whole world and colonize a bunch of people to get all the spices and then use none of them. Fuck off. Uh, by the way, British. if if uh, anybody is still looking for food places in Tulsa, go to a place called Pancho Anaya. Pancho Anaya's is a Mexican bakery. They have all these locations. I go to the one over on Garnett or no, on don't Admiral tell them which one like you that. go to, dude. You're just asking the stalkers to find you. You're fucking yeah, I mean, crazy. You're like every goddamn day. I'm Bro, just saying to go to different ones because I different had people stuff. posting um, out at my P.O. box, sending me pictures to my email address. By the way, let's go play to a game. Pancho and Ayas. Go ahead. And, and get these. These are, you're I don't remember what they're called, but the Pancho and Ayo makes all sorts of good fucking churros, all sorts of good fucking like uh, uh, estrellas, the little cookies and things. Um, I don't remember what these are called, but they're little like angel food cups covered in uh, like coconut and then they're filled with jam and they're 
fucking awesome. Get some of them. What was the name of the uh what was the name of the caller with the whole fucking psycho telekinesis shit? Oh, uh James. James? Okay, well, I'm not gonna dox him here, but that's not his name. And do you wanna know why I know that's not his name? Let's play how many emails do you think he sent me since that call? And they're oh all my God. they're all the length of several paragraphs, but written as one run on paragraph. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who's got a guess for me? Is it six? That's close. Is it five? It's five. It's five. Erica went the Damn. safer direction. Yeah, yeah. It's five. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm not going to read them. I'm literally not going to read them. So I um, <laughs> keep sending. I, I got a crazy. I got a crazy fucking email from a guy who um, told me that I really do believe in God because I want to expand human lifespan and provide medicine for people and shit. And they took my whole thing about how I want to destroy mercury and accused me of being like a slaver that I would enslave people to go do that shit. Um, they wrote me a fucking book of an email and it was hilarious. And I read it on AXP and then they wrote me another book of an email about like, do you feel good about yourself trying to humiliate me? Do you feel good about yourself? It was fucking hilarious, dude. We got to move faster though. I'm starting to feel the med, the meds that I'm putting off taking to finish this. Um, it's catching up to me. We got to move a little faster. All right. And I okay, recognize well, this has been my fault too. Yeah. I'll actually shut up. Uh, uh, let's just have you two read them back to back. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right. All right, I put the jiggle kicks down. All right, $5 from Smart Alec Atheist. The biggest troll that has ever been on the line is Jimmy himself. Go fuck yourself. Go Jimmy yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you, you can't even look at me and tell me I'm wrong for it. You know that's what everybody was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said. 10 euros from Alpine. I bought my friend Abacus beads for their birthday. Things that oh, good joke, Alpine. He's still going. It was not that funny. <laughs> Fucking stupid. That's what it said. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. That was too fucking good. <laughs> you have to read right, some of continue. these for us. Read continue. some of them. Ten dollars from Wesley Commons. Thank all three of you for the time and for the fun conversation. I really appreciate it. Wes, not the band one. Thank you, Wesley Commons. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> how fucking sh how shocked you were! Like, that was so great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I found from Ian Aspie. Um, it's a hypothesize that autism has been present in hominids for two hundred eighty thousand years, including Denisovans and, and Neanderthals, um, and presently chimps. Thoughts. I don't know any shit about that. <laughs> I mean, is it, it proposes an idea for Neanderthals? I don't know if it's been touched for Denisovans or chimps. Um, I don't know. I think they're still doing work on isolating like some of the genes. <laughs> I don't Jimmy get it. It's because it's, it's, it said GJY, and she just came up with that and <laughs> seemed appalled by it. It was so fucking good, dude. <laughs> All right, come um, on, Forrest. This is a competition one. Ten, oh, fuck. $10 might be best science factoid wins. Um, fuck. Uh, you go first. Let me, best, let me think. <laughs> best science factoid. Oh, the best science factoid. Um, okay. Um, many marsupials, including echidnas, have both labyrinthine vaginas and um, bifurcating penises. Okay. They um, look like so we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Don't the kidneys have four penis tips? Yeah, I think it's four. So there are yeah, four. Yeah, it's crazy. 
labyrinthine vagina and they're all outlets. Fucking, they're wild. I yeah um, you, yeah. Mammal reproduction uh, in fours. Um, uh, armadillos, nine banded armadillos uh, always have identical quadruplets whenever they reproduce. They always have four identical babies every single time. How weird is that? I'd like That's to compete. Cute. Sorry, I have to jump this one in because it's relevant and Erica brought up the yeah. general topic. Tapirs. Does anyone already know where this is going? Tapirs mm. have a very long, up to twice the length of their legs penis that is prehensile. It, they can grip things with it and it looks like an elephant trunk. And if the biologists are okay with it, well, I don't have... Uh, Erica, I need to have your number at some point because I never, I, I have to talk to you through forest. Just go ahead and read it out yeah, on, on air right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, wait, are you sending uh, the fucking... Can I send you a are gif? You send... Can I send both of you a gif of a tapir with an erection? Yeah, you can send that to me. Okay. You know, twice I've been on safaris where uh, there have been large bull elephants with erections, and, and from a yet, distance, you genuinely do misconstrue them for a fifth leg, which is why they, they call it a fifth leg sighting. They, they're yet, very, very impressive. And yet, if you see this gif, you are going to go, what? Yeah, um, I believe that. Well, we're, <clears throat> we're on the topic. Um, pigs um, have the uh, longest uh, orgasm in the, uh, I believe, in the in the whole animal kingdom, probably just maybe just mammals. Um, pig orgasms can last like they, I think the average is like half an hour. Um, and they can go up yeah. to like 90 minutes. I sent this to Aaron live on a show and he was still looking at it for like 20 minutes talking about this thing. Wait, send it. Where did you, how did you send it? Uh, I sent it to him over Facebook Messenger, but I'm going to send it, I'm going to send it right now to I don't Forest. Messenger. And Forest can. Oh, fuck. I'm going to send you the link and then you can forward it to Erica. And then after the show, since okay, you're so going to work I'll, here, we'll work on can, making sure we're connected better. Okay, I was going to say, then I'll be the one who's guilty of sexual harassment because I'm sending it to her. That's great. Your biologist. Yeah, just, this can't be sexual <laughs> harassment. It's, first of all, it's both of all, you consented. I have you, to be employed before it's sexual harassment. It's. Ex I believe it was explicitly requested. And I'm treating it like my own dick pics. Only when explicitly requested okay, well, and I'm not sending always. this to Erica now <laughs> okay but now have a look okay I've sent you the link and now I'm looking at this dick all right I have it too all right hold on also somebody in the chat said that echidnas are monotremes and not marsupials they're right um I misspoke mm-hmm but many marsupials, oh, the wow. reason I misspoke is because many marsupials also do have really weird um, pieces and, oh, it's on hardcore nature. Okay. I love this little, nature. oh, wow. I loved that. I, I loved that so much. I felt that was you holding back your reaction. I mean, like. It's a mixture of interested, impressed, and jealous, I would say, is what I'm feeling. Right I'm now. not jealous at all. You want something like that proportion to your body, you'll never have sex again in your life. Who would well, be with that? Well, if my hands are full and I need to open a door. <laughs> do the two of you know Utility. what the tapir's closest relatives are? What do you think it is most closely uh, related to in the animal kingdom? Horses. Isn't it horses? It's horses and rhinoceroses. Yeah. They are perissodactyls. Yeah, um, yeah. This is um We said the same fucking thing. Great. Insane, right? Honestly, the weirdest part to me isn't even the 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 stature of the thing. It's it's whatever's going on at the distal end of it. Like yes, the hand. Mm -hmm. The hand. Yeah. It because it, yeah. it looks like it's like not, a turtle. It, it looks like but a turtle it's bean. split like a human hand. Like prehensile stuff I'm used to. You see, like uh, you know, like an elephant trunk. It looks more like it wraps the whole end around something. This appears yeah. to have an area for finger, more fingers on one side, and then like an opposable thumb, just like maybe in a glove. There's then, like yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. It, it yeah, it's really weird. It looks, but everything is quite yeah. stubby. The fingers would, are quite stubby. Sure. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe in some sort of plastic yeah. glove that's been that's blown the, up or something. It's the only thing that you could say that is stubby yeah. about it. Right. And are we going to address the elbow yeah. in the room? 
the elbow in the room doing the other crooks of the word bends. It, yeah. it, it, it has a part of it that bends more than the rest, like an elbow. It's, it's a wild, wild penis. Anyway. It's, it's really weird. It's really weird. Can't, did I, was I correct that it will outperform whatever uh, elephant penis story you had? It's, it's definitely, shock. it's, it's definitely got the length. It's definitely got the length. Oh, I didn't mean I performed sure. that way. I meant the shock factor. <laughs> oh. Oh, <wow. laughs> Yeah, that's what I meant too. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, totally, yeah. Okay, I'm I would say it's, it's probably, it's, it's definitely like the third most shocking penis I've seen for sure. Is that true? Third most? Oh, what are number a- one and two? Oh, I can't tell their names on air. That's oh, <laughs> okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, for me, it was... Uh, uh, Set up. Set up, Forrest. <laughs> I had this friend who I had this huge crush on in church. Uh, and then one day as a church activity, we went to a public pool. And I didn't know how to tell her that I had seen her father naked. And oh. it... This is also when some queer feelings were emerging because her father was a babe. So the whole thing was odd. The whole thing was a strange experience. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right, I'm back to quiet on that note. Just when I bite. Okay, we, we saw this one already. Jimmy? Yeah, you're right. I, I'm, I'm figuring out where we left off because I switched between downstairs and upstairs again. So I think, nope, that was that. We did best factoid last, right? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Yes. Okay. Give this to Erica, who made the idea with that asshole, James. I was also wondering how you argued this to Theus, who believe Adam and Eve exist. Thank you for arguing. Thank you so much, Rogue Show 296. Very, very cool of you. Yes, this is more than very enough nice. um, compensation. Very kind words. But we're going to use the normal distribution system because, Jesus Christ, if you're going to do not super chat trying to make more work for me. If you knew how the accounting on this channel goes, it takes me a whole day. I'm talking 10 hours to do the accounting each month. If they say to give the money to a specific group, I don't know. Maybe it should go to (laughs) How's that? How's Super that chat's over hundred dollars. You can pick who it goes to. That's the new rule on the line, as we no, have decided. Uh, I'll just keep the so whole just... thing. You don't know. <laughs> the lump sum. All right. Uh, thank you, David Borsky. From... Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Uh, Thirty three okay. radical dollars from Kathleen Moncleef. Um, what I would move? Uh, what? What I would move with my mind, scissors and a magazine, I would telekinetically cut out letters and use them to spell floating swear words in the air and to tell Jimmy to go fuck himself. Love that. Nice. See, I would believe that. If you did that, I would believe that. Oh, yeah. Get it on camera. But only get it on photo. Yeah. Don't get it on video. Yeah. Get photographic yeah, evidence on only. Okay. $20 from Prosky. Fave Beatles. Mine would be Dynasties, Hercules, Hercules. I'm super into entomology and would love to dive into the field. As two individuals from adjacent fields, any advice on starting on that path? Thank you so much. And go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Favorite Beatles. Oh, man. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to be able to give you any... I'm not going to be able to give you any nomenclature, for sure. But I've always really liked those, like, green, shiny, scarab-looking beetles. They they mm. used to be all over the place in my house when I was growing up, and I used to love to, like, watch them have, say, caught the light. Like, they, they're really pretty beetles, so probably those guys. I love those and, long and giraffe neck dudes. You know what I mean? The little those guys are cool, beetles. and they're dimorphic. Those are awesome. They're dimorphic. Are they really? Males are the only ones with long neck. Yeah, it's really cool. That's love so those cool. guys. The top uh, ten goobie goobie, for sure. Beetles are responsible for 80% of the pollination that happens on the planet. So, uh, it will insect driven pollination. So like as much as like people are like, save the bees, save the beetles, which is beetles. Do Did the you world. answer what your favorite one was by the way for us? Cause I, there's a correct answer. Yeah, Erica got it wrong. I wanted to know what yours was. Oh, Long necked, uh, uh, giraffe weevils. Oh, yours is wrong too. Oh, Why, the correct answer beetle? is weevils are the best beetle. Uh, period. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Go look up r slash weevils and or or see the reaction every time someone posts a weevil in r slash what is this bug? They're the greatest beetle. So I do good. love weevils because of their noses. Yeah, they're like, so cute. 
They're fucking adorable. I'm pretty adorable. sure the giraffe one is what I'm talking about. Is it, is you know how like spiders are cool and you can have spiders that you're like, this is coolest, but nothing's going to be cuter than a jumping spider. They are the best jumping spider. spiders. Right? No, that's cute. Yeah, genus weevils, Very cute. weevils are the, are the jumping spider of the beetle world. Dude, okay, I, I don't know of them. They have little but trunks. I really do like jumping spiders. I think they're very cute. I like when jumping spiders, when you get close to them, they go like that. They kind of oh, yeah, regard yeah. you. Look at these. Yeah, and we anthropomorphize them into thinking that's a curiosity yeah. thing. Yeah, I love that too. I know. These I still really weird. like it. I do it too. I'm not I'm not criticizing. I fucking love it. Some people yeah, those weird, guys are that's some that yeah those are some weevils these aren't the cutest photos I've ever seen but they're pretty good. They got a little trunks. Those are pretty cute. Weevils. I like those guys. Oh look at that first one yeah, with like the big guys. nerdy. That's the one that big nerd those big nerdy eyes. Oh no you know you were the one with the long the long. Stuff. What's the? <laughs> we're only seeing a piece He's of like, it. This guy's great. Wait wait you got to move the screen over because we've got the the sides cut off remember. What? Because we only have He's half like of your a... screen. How do you only have half of my screen? I'm because seeing you're only whole... on half of the uh, of the thing. Here, I'll I'll make you full screen. There, now you're full screen. Now we can see it. Oh now my we... god! It looks the same. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, it does. God. I forgot which screen you were in. <laughs> but it, now it's big, like... now it's little. Okay, I'm sorry. You're good. you're right. This is a giraffe weave. That little guy was like, "I'll have her home by ten, sir." He's so cute. I was still looking at the preview <laughs> screen that you do calls on. I thought you were on this screen what still. Oh yeah. Oh, no, I no. will. Look at this guy. I I would say to um to uh Prosky that your your best advice for getting into the field is kind of similar to what I said earlier, right? You want to start getting experience as early as possible, though. Get a job working at your local zoo get a job working you know aiding at your local labs whatever just get experience 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 and um and start thinking about what you want to what you want to research early on that that's very appealing when you're applying to things like graduate school and you're like this is the project that i want to do assuming you're doing it in the west because um i mean in the west like in the united states the west because in europe you have to usually sign up to like phds that are already in progress a lot of the time so but best of luck on your entomology journey and if you ever see uh, a ray miller uh, tell him that I really uh, entomology is I still enjoy it because I think he's still in entomology. He said he's mites. Dylan, you don't have to ask me if you can DM me. Also, how is me shutting up going so far? Also, uh, because I do believe way. Jesse Jerdak still watches all of these shows. I'm just going to put this on the screen for a second. I just love that man. Just, just <laughs> nice. So good. That's so mean. Give us the Jerdak's good photo. Great, dude. Yeah, I'm surprised, <laughs> you, man. We gotta, we gotta put a party. That was a together. photo someone, me, you, and him. Someone took Baldur's of game. him. The, the, a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, like met him at Gen Con and, and took a photo, like hugging him, and he was making that face. And I just zoomed in super hard on that and just sent that to him. Have and you he met was him like, yet? "This is what peak." Have I met him in person? In person? No, but we, oh, we've man. worked together several times. You're gonna feel so tiny next to him, and you know I'm a big guy. I know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a small boy, but he makes me feel so, but kind of in a nice way, like a. Like I, I'm ready to jump into his arms and be protected, kind of way. Mm. <laughs> Ko this says, "Okay, Forrest, take my money." St we're still, gonna uh, yeah, use, hell yeah, we're still going to use the normal distribution system. <laughs> but okay, thanks. he'll get a piece. Bullshit uh, that she got fifty and I got five, but whatever, that's totally fine. <laughs> it no, makes you no, feel no. any better that but hadn't first, been yeah. said yet. When they've sent this, okay. we're still three hours uh -huh. back. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, ten dollars from Nezzy B. Forest and Erica, twenty twenty four. Question: Do knockout mice have higher mutation rates? I.e., does junk DNA protect coding sections? And MTG is right about the space laser. I'm on board of directions. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Uh, all of us, I'm assuming. Um, I don't think knockout mice necessarily have higher mutation rates. Um, I think really what they're mostly doing is trying to figure out what regions of the genome regulate what with knockout mice. Um, but the the purpose of junk DNA, as it were, um, the reduction, the reduction, the re, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, redundancy. redundancy, the redundant nature of DNA is to protect coding sections. And if, and when I say the purpose, I mean, that's the purpose that we understand it to be now. That obviously wasn't the intent, but that is the function that it, that it performs now. There's also like, so, sometimes people call junk DNA, 
um, whenever you are uh, making some mature mRNA that actually is going to do a thing, you have your DNA and you transcribe some RNA and then you, you make a protein, right? There's actually a middle section in there where that RNA isn't mature yet. You have to cut out these things called introns, which are these little chunks of DNA that are, are RNA that aren't supposed to be in the full thing. And then you splice all the leftover bits called exons back together. And then that's what goes off and does the full protein coding. And for a long time, we called that junk DNA too, because we were like, oh, this is just extra fluff. Your body has to go through a lot of work to cut out. Um, and so one of the things they did with these kinds of things, they would start knocking out those and they would take all the intro. Uh, yeah, they would take all the introns out of there um, and they would seconds. just leave the exons and they would think that would work. Uh, and they would make the whole thing work better. And sure enough, it did make protein synthesis faster, but other shit down the line and other parts of the body that were completely unrelated, those things started fucking up because there's this whole thing called pleiotropy. And so, yeah, just did. We don't know what everything does yet, and we're trying to figure that out. And so, like, yeah. Neither of them are old enough to run in 2024, by the way. Yeah, it's true. You're going to have to vote for another 80 plus year old. Yeah, fucking right. God damn it. $10 from Candace Planet. Y'all are amazing. Love this entire channel and everyone that has anything to do with it, including the caller, Cassie. Uh, I needed that therapeutic break. Thanks and love y'all. Well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Sweet. $10 from Dylan Fuller, who is also a mod on my channel sometimes. So cool that they're there. Um, mm. The American sound effects reminded me of the fact that the eagle sound is actually a red-tailed hawk. That's true. Um, but seriously, there needs to be more reprimanding uh, for uh, cor uh, corporations killing our planet. Fuck them. For show. True. For show. Hmm? True. Okay. <laughs> Through. Uh, twenty dollars from Reinku. Uh, can't watch live tonight. Just popping in to say love all three of you. Happy to live in the same world as the at the same time. Thank you so much for being here when you could be, and we hope you. The watch feeling back. is mutual. The feeling is mutual. Thank you, Reinku. Final. Pay more attention. Jimmy, you're Jesus. holding us back now. I thought you guys would say more words. You guys don't ever shut up at the time I'm trying to return a nope. text. God damn. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sorry. Ooh. It was my fault. <clears throat> yeah, $10 from oh. Slackback, new 300,000-year-old hominin found in Hua Long Dong, insert joke here, China, discussed. Yeah, I saw some things about this. I haven't had a good chance to look at it just yet. Um, it's 300,000 years old, but from my very brief look, it's got some decently archaic features. It's not been assigned to Homo sapiens. There's always the chance it's Denisovans or it could be late surviving Homo erectus as well. Uh, but there's also always the possibility it's a brand new hominin. So, but I think until we can get some DNA out of it, um, it's Denisovans is always an option. So we'll see. Yeah. That's I, I, I've only very briefly heard a very tiny bit about it. I've been focused on other stuff, but like, I was just like, oh yeah, cool. Old <laughs> Denise events. But like, you know what I mean? That was pretty much where my brain stopped. Um, what? $20, from Empress... <laughs> 20 <laughs> from Empress Lizard. Uh, this is so the show doesn't go hungry. Thank you so much. Uh, great show and congrats on the official host gig, Erica. Yay. <laughs> That's <laughs> me. The, the still in negotiations and being worked out. Okay. Mostly we just didn't have time to talk about it before the show. It's not like yeah, they some... can still they can still take it away. They can still take it away for now. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that was the worry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you would come to your senses. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I don't know $5. if we're going back and forth or not. I've just been reading. Green. Thank you for a great show. Do you know any fun facts about camels? Forrest said this earlier, so I'm going to steal it now. They actually evolved in North America. Ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka cool fact about camels. Check. And also, there's two big groups. You have the Bactrian and the dromedary camels. Got a bag of camel fossils here from right here in the great state of Oklahoma. Those are big fossils. What? What? Um, well, they're large they? chunks. A lot of them, they, these are all useless fossils. So that's why I have them in a fucking bag in a closet. Um, so like, this is just like a bone shaft here. Um, and so like, Drag. it's the shaft of a long bone. I can tell you that this was a mammal that lived here. That's about all the diagnostic yep. utility that this is going to give me. You know what I mean? So like, that's or like this one, if, if you look at this, it's got some bone, it's a rock and it's got some bone mush in it. Like you can see there, it's just got some stuff. And if you look real careful, right about there, there's some piece of an inner ear. 
and like that's about it and so like that's what this whole bag is it's just chunks that look like chunks uh this you can see that's the the rounded end of a long bone there the little you know probably this this you know, where a tibia connects or something like that just some little piece oh, yeah. things like that i can tell you facts but about uh, camel toes <laughs> <laughs> they are soft on the bottom, so you can't walk them on on stone. True. Yeah, you thought I was. You thought it was gonna be the other thing. I, I, that's a misdirect, is what that's called. Because I'm a master well, camel performer. That, was, was that an astragalus, the the last one, or a distal metaphor? Probably not. It was kind of flat. Oh my god, yeah. you guys are fucking nerds. Yeah. Charlie okay, Carrot. Okay, five one. Charlie Carrot. Austin Knight. But always we did find an Astragalus out there. American coaches from Force was unexpected and great, great job with Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Charlie Carrot. And the, I, I hope Thank everybody you. appreciated how I powered through despite the distractions from the two knuckleheads over here. So. <laughs> uh, we did find an Astragalus out there. I didn't get to take that home because that one actually would be semi diagnostic and yeah, useful. Yeah, that's, so, like, that's why, are, I, that's why I asked. I was like, Oh my god! Uh, like, oh, right. like oh fuck! Head. But it was really green, so I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> it was it okay, was cool because we we went on this trip with most the, a lot of the medical students were with us, and so like the the main paleontologist guy is like held that out. He's like, "Who can tell me what this is?" And all of us with bio experience are seeing that from across the room, like, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> Immediately, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. I think this is something." I don't break it down what does it look like it looks like pulleys yeah. where do you find those an ankle yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> get excited uh five dollars of smart allegatheus i learned something interesting to about tapirs today uh do you have any fun facts about tapirs that you'd like to share go fuck yourself jimmy i was sharing a few the presidactyls oh nice yeah the presidactyls which means they're more closely related to horses and rhinoceroses than pigs uh or deer or whales um or anything or you know elephants they are the basis for the yeah. Pokemon Drowsy. They are the basis it, for the it, Pokemon drowsy. drowsy. And I feel like people don't say that enough, and even though it's true. Mm -hmm. Drowsy is a yellow tapir standing on two legs that is waist deep in shit, and it looks crazy. He's cute. Go easy on Drowsy, but not on Hypno, because mm -hmm. Hypno's freaky. Um, Hypno cool fact about strange. tapirs. I mean, honestly, the, the main thing I've been thinking about tapirs is there used to be rodents the size of tapirs in West Kenya in the middle Miocene. They were very big rodents. Uh, did you know oh, that yes. they're, did you know that they're, uh, uh, what, oh, fuck. What is, would it be called a calf? Cause it is a, yeah, they'd be calves, right? Yeah. The babies, the babies are called calves. The they calves are do. camouflaged, they but they, their actual coat, as they get older, they become no longer camouflaged. Aww. They also have a weird Fleming response because of their um, their trunk. So when they do their little that thing where they like show their upper gums, they, you can see like a massive portion of their their maxilla. It's really weird. Uh, if you had to guess, yeah. how old would you guess fundamentally the species is? As in, the species hasn't changed much and is fundamentally the same thing as X million years ago. How many? How many? Quite a while. They're very they're very yeah. basal. Yeah. I mean, Wide yeah, I would say they're pretty diesel as well for perissodactyls. Yeah. I mean, Throw they're they're down. a little bit specialized, but mm. I had to guess and say like it, I'm gonna to I'm you. gonna say twenty million years. Nailed it I was gonna go on the far head. Oh, fuck it. Twenty really? is yeah. exactly right. Yep, yep, and that's why they're called living fossils. Uh, Beast crazy, mode. Because I've read so many tapir facts this this week. Uh, and then one of the ones that I've I've always known is, uh, uh, well, this isn't a tapir fact. It's just a fact that involves tapirs. Mo so there's a Mormon apologist out there who had posited when in response to the revelation that despite the Book of Mormon's claims, which the Book of Mormon takes place in 600 BC to around 100 AD, the Book of Mormon claims that there were tons of horses on the American continent and that they were drawing ca uh, chariots and, and they were being ridden and stuff for that entire time period, that 600 to, uh, actually maybe even more than that, if you go brother of Jared, I don't remember if there's horses there, but I think there were. Anyway, at least that time period. And there weren't. We know that horses weren't on the continent at that time. And there is a Mormon apologist who posited that perhaps the chariots were being drawn and the Lamanites were in, and Nephites were in fact riding tapirs that were mistaken for horses in translation. Dude. Yeah. I gotta you say, know how much you can mistake the, tapirs or horses. 
in translation. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes creationists and Mormons and many sort of branches, right, it, along those lines, they come up with the greatest fucking world building, right? Yeah. Like, come on, ten years yeah. pulling chariots? That is so cool. Like, yeah. Why are they wasting it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Five dollars from Kim. Okay. The creation myth is like making a Sims character with lazy, messy, and rude traits, and then killing them because you don't like how lazy, mess excuse me, lazy, messy, and rude they are. True. True. Truth. Who wants five dollars from RC Distachine? Um, did I seriously see Forrest go from the best president to God in one show? Damn, what a guy. <laughs> I'm just that good, y'all. I'm just that good. Yeah, man. I mean, Joseph Smith already did it, but whatever. It's fine. It's did fine. you know Joseph Smith ran for president of the United States? A no. Don't know that. Yeah. That's hilarious. He tried. He really wanted to turn the... And it's funny because they pretend they're super constitutionalists and totally ignore that Joseph Smith's plan was to... That he thought he'd be able to win and turn the... Uh, United States into a Mormon theocracy. Hmm. Yep. Thanks for the ten dollars, Holmes Gun Covers. I appreciate it. I wonder, Thank you, Holmes Gun uh, Covers. Wonder if his covers are homespun. Nah. Five dollars from Robin Webster. I am so happy about the indictments in Georgia and how awesome all you are. Here is a high. Here is a five spot. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I don't know Thanks how so to much. be happy Very about kind. these things. I'm like, I, I, I'm glad. I guess I feel vindicated and it's like good justice might be happening but every day feels like a step closer to these people showing their gun cult devotion and just i don't know mm -hmm. the civil war feels ever looming not a like not like a real civil war but a sort of cold civil war mm. i don't know cold war a decentralized uh, 20, civil war 20 australian dollars from philip leitch um this one is specifically because there were two science communicators who immediately want to know how you are controlling your variables. Science is about trying to prove your ideas wrong, not blowing over sticks on paper. Yes. Bingo. I want to make sure I'm Bingo. That right now. Yeah, exactly. You never prove a hypothesis. You fail to reject it. And so like, if that person was serious about what he was doing, he would doing, be doing everything he can to prove that, that what he'd done was wrong going out of his way to control for everything. Not, well, I can set this up in such a way that nobody can say I was wrong. Nobody can disprove it if I do this. Like, no, yeah. you should be disproving it. I was waiting for you to say, how did you eliminate X, Y, Z? But then I probably cut you off beforehand because that guy pissed me off. Fucking charlatan. <laughs> oh, okay. $5 from me. First, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Insert nice. Eric coin, preferably something you learned from your recent field work. Insert Force coin. When's your book coming out? Okay, okay, I get to go first. You don't get something two coins for five dollars, though. Eric, a coin only. You got one coin per five dollars. I just want to be clear. Oh Erica, man, bummer. Okay, um, my something I learned in my recent field work. I learned that the most common fossil to find at any Miocene field site in West Kenya is from a large ancient rodent called Diamantemes. And also that there were false flying squirrels there, which were really cool. There you go. Uh, I don't have a book coming out, but one of the most recent things I learned in my recent work is uh, that the fucking least occipital nerve it starts way lower on the neck than you'd think it would and like right in the middle and you'll shred that fucking thing up if you're not paying attention because it's protected by a little fat pad back there right up along your uh, fucking uh, uh, the, the nuchal membrane. And so you have to be really careful because it's tucked away in there real gentle style and you have to pick it apart with scissors real carefully. That's what I learned. Hmm. Jamie Gallier, but you, wait, you just rewarded a, a forest coin that was unpaid for after I said all that thing. Yeah, but I didn't give him what he wanted. I, I didn't tell him when I have a book coming out because I don't have one coming out. That doesn't matter. So if you talk <laughs> a, if you ask four, three questions and I can't answer one, we'll just make this shit free. Jamie Gallier says, always enjoy seeing Erica here. Love you guys. Awesome show. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. We also enjoy just seeing Erica. Just dabbed here. for you. I dabbed for you. Just so you know how much I appreciate I missed that. It. Can you dab again? No, there. it's like a one per show thing. Sorry. Oh, I just wanted to see your dab-ficiency. 
And it's really good too. You should rewind it and check again. <laughs> really coordinated. All right, tight. Okay. Ten dollars from Charlie Carrot. Uh, what's your wild, off the wall guess for how many examples of life exist in our galaxy? What about number of in examples of intelligent life? Period. What What were you thinking? Okay, I think life. Here's my my prediction. Life is really common, but it's oftentimes micro micro uh, microbial, and one of the biggest leaps that's difficult for life to make is single to multicellular. I bet we're gonna find life on Mars. I bet it's gonna be very very small, and it's gonna be extremophilic in those water flows on the side of the planet. Um, probably a little bit. I down. do like that's yeah. I, I was thinking about those salty salty fucking little flows there. Yeah, and like that's mm -hmm. the thing. The 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 leap from unicellular to multicellular almost always correlates with predation, right? So like there would have yep. to be significant pressure for that to happen. Yeah, it's crazy shit, also, dude. Life, um, you know, also life was just here for like 3.3 billion years before it actually went the next step to multicellular. So it seems like, like literally the planet forms less than a billion years past life is here, right? Like life is so fast to form, but it's really small and it's it's single cellular. So that's my guess for intelligent life. No idea, absolutely no idea. Yeah, Sample I don't size of one. That, but I would say I'm all about Europa because uh, you've got this icy moon with a warm moving ocean beneath it, probably a rocky core. So you have an area where land meets water, which is where life happens, um, and you also have like fucking like thermal cycling going on because the the surface of the planet is being fucked up all the time with tidal forces ripping up the ice, but there's also geysers. So there's heat going on under there because of all those forces. So you have warm water and rocks that I think there's going to be life up in there as well. That's my jam anyway. I think if we ever get to study that possibility, it'll be like, we'll be pretty surprised at how simple where it's like, actually, if you just have like these nine things, you're now pretty much guaranteed some kind of life. Maybe not nine, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be rather simple. It, it's probably yeah. not super complicated, but I, I bet it's one of those things where it's like you have to have a lot of all of your ingredients, which is presumably how it happened on Earth, right? So it's like, yeah, it's, it's you just have to have a zillion trials going on at once and it'll happen. It's, I would even say that with the right conditions, it's inevitable. That's my that's my hot take. Knee just that's, played, that, I paid. feel the same way. He just paid for his, we, for his for his coin. I wasn't mad at you, Knee. I was mad I at saw that. Forest. Aww, Thank you, Nee, for the five dollars. If you said if someone sends a hundred American dollars or the equivalent oh, of no, it, no. I'll show already, ankle. We've already got um, something like, but that. like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, that was a uh, uh, that's. I feel the same way. Where it's, it's like looking at just how quickly life started after the end of the late heavy bombardment. Like it was, it's it was close to a, like a billion ish years or like half a billion years or whatever like that in the grand scheme of things. But like. The second the Earth wasn't a fucking molten hellscape. Right. The it just, second. It happened. It's Life. pretty conspicuous. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Though we've re we've reexamined some of our presumptions about that when some of the basis upon which we say this was the second it could appear has been undermined by some of the extreme conditions we have found life in the in the uh, deep ocean. So, mm -hmm. you know, Forrest, yeah. maybe maybe take a look at yourself and make a change. <laughs> yeah, dude. Change. <laughs> make a Change. Na, 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 na. Someone could read this. I'm just going to keep singing my uh, ten dollars from me, Lucifer <laughs> and Yahweh, attorney at law. Um, I uh, uh, hurt in a car accident, suffering from starving to death, suffering from a deadly parasite. Good. It's all according to plan. <laughs> Insert snow coin. What have you learned recently? Uh, the limitations of my own mental health. They're not great. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, not that kind of learn. Man, the fun kind of learn. I feel like this week I really blew a lot on the uh, tapir penis phrasing, uh, and mm. I gotta tell you, I'm I am learning more about Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition by playing Baldur's Gate than I have ever learned before. That game is incredible. I've heard Baldur's Gate is great. I've heard so it's, it's awesome. I, it's, if, I want to play it so bad, except for not being truly open world. Like it definitely has, it's like a D and D campaign where they actually have a campaign book and you, you like, you kind of have to do the campaign. Um, other yeah. than that, it's the perfect game for me. It's like, it's, it's almost like they built a game for me a, nice. and it's Real been nice. not since Skyrim. Have I felt that way, but now Starfield's also coming out next month and I feel like that's got huge potential. So 
Mm-hmm. Fucking killer games back to back. I want to play it so bad, dude. It looks amazing. Which one? Baldur's Gate or Scar- Starfield? Yeah, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's yeah. Gate. I don't know what Starfield is, but I'll look it up. Starfield is described I'll as Skyrim in space. Just oh, give me yeah. the time, that man. Tight. I just want some time. I need some time yeah. to spend to play Baldur's yeah. Gate. And that Baldur's is Gate the takes... reason I don't have. Yeah, and it's like it that's takes a lot like. of time. I'm still trying to fucking play Diablo Four. Like I just got it. Like, I'm just trying to do something. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Uh. I'd bail on that for Baldur's Gate, honestly. And if you want, we can. If you do get some time, we can bring you in even temporarily to some of the ones like I'm playing with Doctor Ben and Eric from Skeptics and Scoundrels. Sometime, sometimes. Oh maybe. shit. Maybe do a little something. something. Maybe, Erica, maybe. you're also invited. Just keep your mouth Ooh, shut if yeah. you're going to be in there as a girl. We're all boys. As a as a as a duplicitous femoid. Yes, That's I know. Right. <laughs> and don't and don't un- <laughs> don't try to undermine the way I try to play my character who is a woman. I don't think oh, he shit. knows what women are like. Has he met a woman before this? <laughs> Did I put a new one God. out? Does anybody want this? No, you haven't. Oh. No, you yeah, no. We already did that one. That's sixteen dollars and sixty-six cents from Smart Alec Atheist. You two had a game where you had three words and a topic to talk in thirty seconds. Could I have permission to attempt to make a that a game to sell? If you don't, well, it's just like to actually no, produce the oh. thing. No, okay. no, you don't have my permission because we're definitely going to use that game in the future as an actual thing we do. But it'll probably be competitive. Uh, so no, you don't have permission. But I can't stop you <laughs> either. All right. There's it's no intellectual whoever gets right. first. Yeah. Yeah. No, th- we're 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 actually working on game show stuff in the future and that's a part of it for sure. But I you know, I'm not going to sue you if that's what you mean by permission. And I don't really believe in th- on that level. That's not a type of intellectual property I think should be protected. <laughs> China's you just can't stealing play anyway. Game. That game is my game. <laughs> it's just a very simple game. Oh shit! I gotta oh, hit the button again. Especially as you were as you were yeah. saying that, Erica. Especially as you were holding your hands, just as very, very rodent slide. That's my game. You can't play yes. that game. There's definitely no reason as to why I hope that rodents are the ones that take over the world. I have no skin in that game yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's half past midnight. I just realized, which means it's too late for me to get chicken nuggets. Damn. Okay, twenty dollars from Godfrey and good. Well done tonight. You have amazing patience. If either of you watched the YouTuber Casual Geographics, he's an animal enthusiast. Is so. What have you? What do you think? I've seen his suggested videos, but I've never watched them. Yeah, uh, Mama Dude's a really nice guy. Um, I was uh, I with him at VidCon. We did a panel together. He's super nice. Um, very quiet in person. Very very quiet person. But uh, he's he's very smart. Very nice. Um, he <laughs> he cranks videos out like fucking crazy, dude. I want to hear Good you guy. on the news describing someone you knew that was revealed to be a serial killer. Like, you know, he was a really nice guy, uh, you know, really fun, you know, happy, uh, weird dietary choices. But I guess now we know why. Uh, but, yeah, really nice. Super nice guy. <laughs> He's a cat. I've person. never. I don't know, man. I just don't think there's anyone you don't think is a really nice guy. Not many. I, not many. Not many. But he, that dude was nice. He was very, very kind. Uh, $10 from Dylan Fuller. When studying anatomy, a common phrase I muttered was, oh, that's what hurts. Uh, lol. Was there a system uh, that awed you to dissect? Have you dissected a teratoma? Uh, do you pl- uh, get a sympathetic pain when dissecting? Uh, so in this order, a system that really blows me the fuck away. Um, I loved doing craniotomy um, because I think brains are fucking awesome. And especially seeing just like the shape of the basal cranium and like how everything fits so perfectly. It's wild. Um, I have got a skull up here and I have got a brain over here. Uh, there it is. And what's crazy is these are two (sighs) anatomical study models that I teach with and whatnot. And these are from different companies that I bought it years apart, completely different, and yet, because the human body is so fucking awesome, they fit together absolutely perfectly. Look at how perfectly that fits in that basal cranium there, and how perfectly this skull cap fits on. And I could actually store these together if I wanted to. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, just that's that's my favorite thing is seeing how that works. 
Um, and then uh, how about like, Dr. Toma? No, and I forgot what the other question was, and, and that's all. Word. The Raven Jimmy, 200. this one's you. Raven 200 says, Jimmy, go take a vacuum blast barrage and a tailed beast bomb. And while you're at it, take a thousand years of death. Have a good one, y'all. Uh, those are all Naruto references. Nice. I don't know what that is. Uh, 10 Canadian dollars. I've heard Christians uh, from Sherry uh, 44411. I've heard Christians say that when God first created everything, it was perfect. But sin came into the world and tarnished nature. That's why we have so many anatomical flaws. Thoughts? What a dumbass system is my thought. Yeah, I think we touched on this one a little bit. It's like if humans sinned, then why is everything screwy? Like, why isn't it just humans that carry that burden, but all of the organisms all the time? So, if it's weird. God's creation it's and flaws came up, who put the flaw there? That's my main thing. Like, it became this imperfect. Then he created it that way. If I go and I create, it's not, not in this house. It isn't. <sighs> it's like. <sighs> Yes. Uh, Ten dollars from Sammy De Morte. So what you're saying is we're made of meat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know why I am. Meat. I'm fat. Meat. My we'll, meat would we'll be pretty do the marbled. Same board. This one's a. I'm a Mrs. Plez. Yeah. Who are you calling? Okay. Bone? 10 pounds for, I'm going to ignore that, from Amelia Pierce. Got to your awesome last week. Forrest, you had a big speech about how anyone can learn anything. It made me feel more confident in my learning than anyone's ever made me feel. So thank you so much. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Uh, just make sure to, you know, <laughs> eat something while you're studying. Otherwise... You'll just be skin and bones. Y'all got to I was going to say, are you not going to fill the dead air between here, We're just brains piloting bone mechs with meat armor. True. And hair armor. And we have weird pipes full of goo running through us. Not crazy. $20 no, for either. Speed. We as humans are definitely weird biology wise. When we talk about metamorphosis, no matter how much we study it, it melts our mind. Me too. Metamorphosis is super weird. And the fact that some things have multiple instars is even weirder. Like the, the metamorphosis is different for different critters. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. Imaginal discs Durham fuck my shit up there. Yeah, dude. Same. Erica, there's a subgenre of stories that show how weird humans are. Check out Humans or Space Orcs. Most are from Tumblr. It's usually from the POV of aliens. It's very funny and I highly recommend it. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That sounds dope. Thank you, Dylan. I'm waiting up there. Okay. 10 euros from Sigil. Good morning from Slovenia. I just woke up, so I'm rewinding and watching from the start. Love you all. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Do you realize it is morning in Slovenia right now? Yeah, we're approaching seven hours. We're re it's, you know, we're approaching where s everybody on the planet was probably awake for a piece of this episode. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If we if we keep going, we're gonna piss a lot of people off, and they're gonna have a bone to pick with us. No, we're not. We're Twenty dollars from Bozeman Forty Two. <laughs> I hadn't seen It's Always Sunny in New Philadelphia when you did your Charlie Day impression one time. It, his Charlie Day impression is actually very good. When I finally saw Always Thank Sunny, I learned your impression is indeed very good. Forrest and GG, Erica, you guys are great. So is Lauren and Jimmy. Well, Thank you so much. It's very kind of you to say. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thanks. Oh, well, that maybe not that one. Fighter of the Night. 120. Oh, sorry. That, Czechoslovakian yeah, yeah, yeah. uh uh the okay, yeah, yeah. Zacks. Kronos. I don't know. Uh from Pedro Glauser. Uh the show started 1 a.m. my time, and I said you guys will still be on when I wake up. Seriously, prophecies are so easy. Good mornings, XOs, and go fuck yourselves all around. Thank you so much. This is true. This is true. We work Ooh. real hard, it gets real lonely. You could say, uh, we ain't got nobody to understand. <laughs> You're both married. Ten dollars. You. You're just being alone. Is like <laughs> fuck you both. Tonight's show is definitely worth price admission. A few minutes later, Jimmy, we gotta hurry up. My meta are kicking in. Also, Jimmy, hey, check out this fabulous tape. Your schlong. This is a this is yep. a true recounting of what happened. Yes. So yep. it was it was actually not that my meds were kicking in. It was that I usually take my meds on the same routine, but I was worried if I took them, I would be too sleepy to finish the show. 
So I did end up taking them, and I don't know if you've all noticed, but I've yawned like 30 times in the last four minutes. Yeah. Oh, my plan after this, it, oh wait, $10 from Smart Alec Atheist. I just learned Drowsy is extremely well hung. Go mingle with the tapir, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy couldn't handle a tapir. <laughs> I can handle whatever. You, know, you don't know what team. he could handle. It's I don't want to handle. Anything. <laughs> Anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. <laughs> Ten dollars from Monkey a typewriter. Oh fuck! Uh, you go. You do it. All right, fine. No, Two no. things. One, I no. left him play a D and D game, and y'all are still here. Love that. We love that too. Two, Drowsy is based on the Baku, a, na- a Japanese mythical creature. The similarity to Tapirs is a coincidence. How cool is that? That I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, so we we assumed we assumed that it was based on that. I guess that makes me a real numbskull. I don't on. know if Eric okay. is going to love this Thanks, one. Everybody. <laughs> I don't think you're going to love this this specific chat. Okay. Uh, 139. What? Go, Three just go. No, no. Three seconds per dollar is six minutes of bio nerding out, please. Forrest said over $100 counts, and Jimmy said he'll keep it for himself. Uh, now this is for Jimmy. Now you have to do it. Go fuck your... Go Jimmy yourself wow. for us. <laughs> Go Jimmy yourself for us. All right, well, I'll be back at 12.48 to move this along. Y'all talk about nerd shit. I don't like any part of that. Wow. <laughs> Fucking, are we, are we just talking? Is that, is that what we're doing? I we're just like chatting we for the next to. six they minutes? They just gave us 140 Canadian dollars. Don't I mean, that's like a lot must? of money. Yeah, I, I yeah. feel that's like that's a significant that's amount of Canadian cool. money. Yeah. Um, okay, you can have three minutes, and then I'll have three minutes for us. Or you could back and forth, okay. just exchange facts. Okay, or do you want to talk yeah, yeah. about so, what, what, what? I want to talk about the fact that um, uh, why uh, um, why can't skeletons um, drink a lot of things? Why why are they bad drinkers? Is this a pun? What is what pun is this? It goes right through them. Okay. Yeah. Someone get this <laughs> someone get this man out of here. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong, Erica? Uh, Am I getting under your skin? <laughs> I'm about to beat him to death with a femur. And you know what? I've got one around here what? somewhere. I what? need to reach Are you telling through. me? Are you telling me you don't find my jokes humorous? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one was funny. That one was funny. Maybe. My wife not. <laughs> my that wife came and took but my only skull. Because, <laughs> only because of the build-up, that one was funny. Thank God she came. Thank God. Amber she just knocked on the door and just stuck her hand and said, "Give me that," and just took the skull. She was like, You're done. She knew she was ready to confidence because you've had the. She probably been putting up with those jokes for weeks. Oh. <laughs> she has. She absolutely has. Yeah. It's oh my knows. god. She knows the struggle. Okay. Um. Okay. Six minutes of bio nerding out, please. I'll talk about something cool. I'm going to talk about something yeah. cool. The coolest thing happened lately. It. They discovered a brand new cetacean, Perusitis colossus. It is gigantic and it has the weirdest vertebra vertebrae that you've ever seen. They're they're blocky and they they're funky. They look like if you took a vertebra and blew air into it and popped out all of the different processes all along the it's a funky looking thing and the reason is because these guys were shallow water grazers not unlike a giant version of modern ceridians like dugongs and manatees and so what's super weird about this is this thing is actually so big it is heavier than a blue whale like that's their projections that would make it the heaviest animal end of sentence put a period there it is the heaviest animal ever that we know of if those projections are correct. Now, the range for this thing's weight is pretty extreme. So like, I don't know if it's going to end up that way, but the projections right now are pretty intense. And it's all based off of the fact that it's got these weirdly heavy bones to facilitate this shallow water feeding lifestyle. And it's it's huge. Why is it so big? Like this is a niche that to my understanding, doesn't exist for something that large, which, which implies that the shallow seas were were growing enough seagrass and things of that nature, like uh, shallow water plants to, to 
allow these giant guys to subsist. It would have been insane. And imagine seeing one. You know, you're in the Miocene. I actually, I don't think it's the Miocene. I think it's the Oligocene. You're in the Oligocene. You're on the coast. You're minding your own business. You're like waist deep in water. And this thing that's like the size of a blue whale, but also like they're pretty chunky, like they're very round. They've got like a, a Serenian shape to them, just kind of bobs to the surface and like ejects out of its blowhole and then just continues to putter along feeding on the bottom. And like you could have just like wa- swum up to this thing and, and hung out by it. It probably wouldn't have even like, gave a shit because it's like a big manatee. It's so cool mm-hmm. and so fascinating that there are still niches, still niches that we don't fully understand or haven't fully accounted for because they don't exist in modern ecology or they do but by some by multiple some things that are are a lot smaller instead of one big something it's fascinating stuff and i really like it so that's i just want to talk about perucetus i think it's cool it doesn't surprise me that you could have something with a sirenian body plan that's that fucking crazy considering like you know you look at like seagrass today you know you look at like uh, sea turtles and whatnot that munch on seagrass it's very low in protein so they need a fuckload of it right but like Mm -hmm. Back then, who knows what the like the 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 flora of the area looked like? Maybe that seagrass actually had a like more dominant you know uh, 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 presence in that ecosystem, yeah. and therefore was able to handle that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, well, and the these when they were doing the searching, when they were doing the paleontology for this, they were like doing their surface collection or whatever. The vertebra just fell out of the wall like they saw it and they were like Mm -hmm. this is crazy like this thing is is huge it's such a weird Mm -hmm. weird looking creature um i would have loved to see one but that also means that it's great to take stock and consider like what animals we do share the planet with like the the blue whale it's still the longest animal and it's we get to share the world with it which is crazy that is pretty nice that is pretty nice uh really quick though do you know, but before we wrap up, because I know we're about at that time, um, do you know why skulls can't win an argument? Dude, why? Because they don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> what would you do if I just left the call? Like, what would you do if I was just... <laughs> I was just like, that's enough. I've had it. I've absolutely had, you know, it, had it. It's cool because like it's 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 still a science thing because you know we could teach people there actually are animals out there that like mainly eat bones, like hyenas, for example. You look at a hyena's yeah. dentition, big, crazy, long cusps, big, sharp sagittal crest, and that's why every time they eat, they say bone appetite. Where's Amber? Why is it Amber? She brought me the skull back. She brought me the skull back. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Forrest, you got it. It's cool, though. Hey, uh, Nee sent me a Forrest coin payment, and I think that was for the last one, but just really quick. um, What does a a skeleton do to, to, to signify a contract? They just spine on the dotted line. No, that one was a stretch. That's that a was stretch. a good one. That was Forrest, a good one. You, you really need to learn to quit while you're ahead. Nice. Nice. I love that. That was a good one. I like that yeah. very much. I feel, I, I feel dirty. <laughs> I feel dirty. Okay, $10 from Courtney Lord. Thank you, Forrest and Erica, for tonight. Huge fan of Erica's channel. In-depth, accessible videos. And impeccable vibes, of course, wonderful. Especially if you're home in the Letty Deep. But thank you. I'm so glad to hear that because that took me a long time to do. And I've, I had a lot of thoughts yeah. about it. Have a lovely day. Thank you so much. 10 Canadian dollars from George so. Mothopolis. Yes, fake money. James created the Blair Witch Project Canada edition. Love you for Sarah. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Let's make this a seven hour stream. We're quite close to that, actually. So we're, we're, we're almost there. Yeah. 10 minutes. Uh, ten dollars okay. from me. Speaking of D anD D, yesterday we finished the Spelljammer adventure of Light of Zarius, uh, Zarius, um, Zarius, uh, Balliste and Mangolnels plus Sharpshooter plus a class feature that grants two rounds of advantage equals utter destruction. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I'm gonna show that to my DMD friends because I play. But I don't like play, and like I'm gonna show it yeah. to people who like play play, and they'll they'll know what's going on. I'm in 
I'm, I'm working on a D&D thing campaign, right now. And I play a null, can- a null tank. So that's, I'm a barbarian. So I, I do the walk up bonk strategy and that's about as much as mm. I enjoy that. And I enjoy the role playing aspect because I think it's fun. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm doing a D&D charity thing right now. I'm working on a big D&D charity thing right now. So I'm fucking super excited oh, about it. Yeah. And we're sick of hearing about it. I'll tell you about my cool ideas after the calls over or the show's over so people don't get the spoilers. Uh, 10 euros uh, from the sl- South Geek. I thought I said Slap Geek. No, it's South Geek. A little tunicates. Um, uh, South Geek 2, uh, Pelagic Boogaloo, um, official. You're st- wow, you're still going. Oh, that's all the name. Jesus Christ. The South Geek yeah, 2, yeah. Pelagic Boogaloo, official. I gotcha. Okay, cool. Wow, you're still going. I just got up. Great to see Erica. Shout out to Dapper Dino. Um, how about having him as a co-host for Skep Talk? Maybe someday. I've never spoken to him. But he's nice. that is. Yeah, no, Dapper's, Dapper's a cool dude. He does. He's what you want for sure if you if you get anything dinosaur related. He's a dino guy. Well, when you're hosting dino Erica, Mike. maybe that's who you want. But do I get to pick Dang. my co-hosts if I host? That, yes, hosts host generally mm-hmm. book their own co-hosts. That's how you got on here. Because I was like, I need a co-host. I know the perfect person. Oh my god, yeah. Forrest, super cool. Yeah. I picked your shit. Hold yeah. on. Sweet. Yeah, I didn't give a fuck That's about you. you. Yeah, that, that, that much is abundantly clear to me. I just didn't really know who you were. But I do now. $20, $20 from Josh. Josh. Oh my god. I work till 1230. I can't believe I will. Jimmy, go get hit by a blood force trauma by L- La Night. Anyways, thank you, Forrest and Erica, for all you do. Yeah, Jimmy, I go think it's get LA hit Knight. by a blood force trauma by LA Night. I will. I think the, the LA Night is the counterpart. You got to like the LA Beast on YouTube, and then you got the LA Night. Whereas the LA Beast eats crazy things and vomits, the LA Night is like chivalrous and opens doors and then vomits. <laughs> Um, I think it's late. Twenty dollars too. <laughs> yeah, uh, twenty dollars from Minute Rice. Uh, Listen through most of my shift, and now I'm home taking a load off. And you're still going. Erica and Forrest can always be relied on for a long show. Lol. Uh, I wonder how long would Forrest, Erica, and Aaron go? Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I don't know. I don't that would wonder. be three long-winded people on the same show. Um, I'll never be find really out. Long. Yeah, I, I think we've set, a, we've set a record almost every time. Like, I don't think we've ever come yeah. on and gone shorter than a previous episode. I think the charity no, event, no, though, no. has beaten any records that you two have done. Yeah, no, I was sad that I didn't get to be a part of it. Yeah, we were all yeah, sad and frankly disappointed in you. <laughs> so I was well, a well, VidCon. <laughs> I know, I'm just fucking with you. Go on. $10 to Emery King. Forrest and Erica, please do a collab Reacteria on the Futurama Evolution episode, please. What? I don't know if that would fit the theme of Reacteria, but if, I, do, I don't know. Uh, Jimmy, the oldest known species with a penis, is a hard shell creature called uh, Colimbosathan uh, Expel. That's, that's, that's too far away from me in my old man eyes to read all that. Uh, ec- Colimbosathan Eclecticos. That's a great name. Eclecticos? That's sick. Eclecticos. Yeah. I just hope no one was ever too hard if he couldn't keep his shell, too mean if he couldn't keep his shell hard all the time. What? I bet they were very mean. They were probably like, oh, yeah. (laughs) What, you don't think I'm pretty? (laughs) 20 Australian dollars. dollars. (laughs) That's too much (laughs) silence. (laughs) <laughs> pedantic correction from another biologist the longest animal in the world is not a blue whale it's the lion's mane jellyfish its tentacles can reach lengths of over 36.5 meters or 120 feet wow i didn't we'll know that i didn't know they got that long that's crazy she meant mammal okay jerk <sighs> thank you jimmy thank you for coming for, to my defense you're welcome in all fairness, if you just type longest animal in the world into Google, blue whale comes up as the answer. But I'm sure there's Wait, a, man, you know, Google know. isn't the only thing. Are jellyfish no, no, even animals? That. I mean. I'll just say, we'll just various, say the longest like, core date from now on. Core date. The longest core date ever. They're, they're basically fungus. Oh, Nidarius. <laughs> yeah. No, jellyfish. I just made little, it up. Little, blob, little blobbies. They're cute. Yeah. According to this guy, uh, that there's some siphonophore 
that surpasses the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale and the giant squid. It's just a long fucking siphonophore. And like, I would believe it. I I don't know for sure, but I would believe with a siphonophore, I would believe it because they get fucking nutty. The biggest organism in the world is a fungus. I think. 14 the, Canadian dollars from Matthew Phillips. I love you guys all worth every penny and so much more. It was supposed to be Jimmy, go Jimmy yourself effort. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, 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 the heaviest one is Pando, isn't it? It's that stand of Aspen trees that all share a root system. So they're all the same tree. All right. Um, Someone's when, gotta do ten, it. I'm doing it. 10 New you Zealandish do dollars. From uh, Citizen Gold, what the fuck? I left out work hours ago. How are you still going? Actually, how are you still going again? I recall your first shared stream. I have a lot to go back and watch. Love you both. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Okay, $10. Nine ninety nine from, from oh, fuck. <laughs> no, this one's me. We're trying it's to the fill the space, and now we're talking over each other. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. If the most genetically different humans are 99.9% similar and Europeans can have 5% Neanderthal DNA and South Asians can have 10% Denisovan DNA, so how does the ma- Denisovan DNA, how does the math work? Because Denisovan DNA and Neanderthal DNA, while it can be clockable by specific like um, genes and base pairs and stuff like that, by and large, they're, they are still ridiculously similar to human DNA. Um, so there's actually just like quite a bit of overlap going on there. That's how the math, the math hatches out. It's not 5% completely disparate Neanderthal mm-hmm. DNA because humans and Neanderthals aren't mm-hmm. that different. Same with Denise Higgins. And just remember anything with the genus, nope. ho- anything in the genus Homo is a human. So like strictly speaking, it's still human DNA. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. $10 from okay. me. Uh, and I think this is the last one. My spell jammer character is plasmoid humanoid amoeba. That sounds cool as fuck. Silver Silver Quill Strixhaven Student Wendy's Feet of Legends. Fuck. Uh, uh, student Wendy's Feast of Legends, Order of the Frosty Five, Order of the Baked Potato <laughs> Three. That future is hearty fulfillment. Love it. You're nice. breaking my immersion. <laughs> I think that's the last one. One more. Nope. We did it, boys. Literally, just as I said, that's the last one. Nine ninety nine from Vanessa Beasley, and another nine ninety nine from Homespun Covers. Please let me call in when my wife is watching, because I want to let her know it's not me trying to act like I know more. It's more like I know less. Thank you very much. I hope you do call in sometime. I, I think that I is now. Fully, it. I can't fully decode that sentence. If I'm being honest. <laughs> But close them, close them, <laughs> close super chats, close the ability to make close. money. Because now we will only send be like reading super chats. We will only be reading super chats that are $50 or more now yeah. from this moment. Yes. And that's it. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> to Erica, where can people find you? Can't hear you. Just say where you, they can <laughs> find you. Where can people find you? That's the pivot. That's the pivot. That's my channel. That's the pivot. Channel. And I'm also on the inside. I said the pivot. Thanks for the $20 super chat that the person, somebody just sent in. We appreciate it. I'm not putting it on screen because I don't have the ability to do so. I don't even know what currency that is. Put me, uh, put you, put, 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 put my name into your YouTube machine and go watch my YouTubes and subscribe uh, and give me the views and the money, please, by watching the things that I produce. It's really cool and you'll learn a lot. And then go watch Erica's content as well. And you'll learn even more things about other stuff too. Um, and uh, make sure to exit through the gift shop. Go to ValkyLabs.com, pick up a sweet t-shirt. Um, I get like $7 every time somebody buys one of those. Um, and uh, uh, to make sure to don't... I just fully cut you off. It was going too long. Patreon.com slash call the line. Also, Donald Trump eats his steaks well done with ketchup. That's 